Morning everyone and welcome back to Gosford. Race day two, we've got women's up first and we are inside the 15 minute already. Just got the live stream up and going, thanks to Mercury Marine.
we will uh, we'll just run through the grids and poles. Grid one, pole one, showdown with Brent Wiseman or Daniel Cotton and Madison Boyer. Grid one, pole two, strike F1 with David McMillan, Brett Armstrong and Nelly McMillan. Grid one, pole three, Coldies F1 with Jason Wormsley, Kevin Boylan and Rachel Stapleton. Grid one, pole four, Supernova with uh, Scott Cleaver, Brad Robertson and Emma Williams. Grid two, pole one, Filthy F1 with Jared Jarvis, Aaron Jamison and Riley Jarvis. Grid two, pole two, uh, with 1350, Brandon Cropper, Bailey Cropper, and Samara Ross. Uh, grid 2, pole 3, Mojo 40 with Dan Steely, Noel Bishop, and Cheryl Rustin. That is F1 women's. What can I say, Mitch? What a hot, hot class. Morning everyone, welcome to the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships brought to you from Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Welcome, the weather is not great today but we're going to get wet anyway. So we're looking for a very, very good day of events today. On our first day of events on Saturday, we had a good day of events. Our first racing taken away by the Australians, the second racing junior boys taken by the Americans junior girls taken by the Australians, and in men's Formula One, Formula Two, both taken by the Australians as well. Let's hope the races change up today. Welcome to everyone from around the world, Europe, America, everywhere else that's streaming in. Thank you very much. Hope we have a good day of racing and we'll catch, with, catch up with you soon. Good luck to everybody competing at the 2023 IWWF World Championships brought to you by Mercury Marine Australia. Good morning guys, this is Connor Linzel. We've got Formula 2, I'm going to read out the grids for that now. So, pole, uh, grid 3, pole 1, hijacked. Jacob Hinnerhossel is driving, observing Sam Perry and skiing is Emma Barnes from Australia. Grid 3, pole 2, speed lab. Darren Hitchcock, Russell Hitchcock and Molly Paiser from Australia. Snappy 377 is in grid 3, pole 3. Carl Johnson doing the driving. Ken Kramer doing the observing. And Sophia Riviera from USA is doing the skiing out the back. Grid 3, pole 4, blackjack. My Michael Foblitz, Benny Vardam and Demi Foblitz from Belgium. We're in grid 3, pole 5, meltdown F2, Anthony Savona, Jack Batty and Grace Savona from Australia is doing the skiing. Grid three, pole six, belligerent. Colin Hockley doing the driving. Benjamin Gully is doing the observing. And Amy Hockley, wildcard from Australia, is doing the skiing. Grid four, pole one, snappy 177. Carl Acton doing the driving. Mark King doing the observing. And Julie Williams from USA is doing the skiing. Grid four, pole two, 1648. F2, Cameron Mahogan is doing the driving. Doug Perry doing the observing. And Emma Tuddenham is the wildcard doing the skiing. The Prodigy is in Grid 4, Pole 3. Brad Canning doing the observ uh, doing the driving, sorry. Sim Sim Simon Smith is the observer. Emily Canning from Great Britain is doing the skiing. Grid 4, Pole 4, 373. Steve, Steve Davis is doing the driving. Daryl Weatherford is doing the observing. And Amy 34 from USA is doing the skiing. Last boat here, grid four, pole five, trim lab. Aaron Sheath doing the driving, Troy Hood doing the observing, and Danny Hood 
doing this game from Australia. What can I say, Mitch? What an action-packed race we've got today. Formula 1 is looking hot, and just as hot is Formula 2. This, this race is going to be a good one. The fields are packed, Connor. This race was actually the, the race with the least amount of falls yesterday, and we can't thank enough to Mercury Marine for providing our live stream with us. Um, in conjunction with Bay City Marine, Water Sports Marine, TR Marine, Race Marine, and uh, Brisbane Marine, all the Marines. <coughs> unreal, Mitch, unreal. So, look, I'm looking at the Women's Open um, thing here. We're about two minutes from start, so I'll dive quickly. First, second, and third. What a race we've got going on there. Showdowns, Strike F1 and Coldies F1. The skis for that is Madison Boyer, Nellie McMillan, and Rachel Stapleton. These, these girls have had an absolute cracker of a selections campaign. And now they're looking to showcase what they can really do out in the water here for the Worlds. Really, it is a toss-up on the day who can win. So I'm really excited to see how they go today. Is there any, any particular boats out there you're looking forward to seeing, Mitch? Well, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the first three because yesterday their grids were a bit split up, but now we've got the top three right next to each other. Um, so we get to see them battle it out over the whole 45 minutes, which is going to be great. Oh, I'm waiting for this first lap. This first lap is going to be something to watch. Speed, precision, and awesome skiing we're going to see today. But look, we're not going to give all the love to F1. We're going to give some love to F2. Emma Barnes and Molly Polzer, what, these two are inseparable. We can't separate themselves. It, it, who, who's going to win? I don't know. Speed lap with, with the faster boat, but Jake Hinderhosel can drive that velocity pretty hard, so it'll be interesting to see how they go. But... What I want, do want to mention, Sophia Riviera from the US of A. What fantastic skiing we had from them on Saturday. I'm keen to see what she can pull out today. Maybe even chip up a place or two there. But I just want to let you guys know we're about 45 seconds from the start. That means 15 seconds from the skiers going in the water. Um, Mitch, you want to run us through our start procedure real quick? Start procedure. Uh, in about 10 seconds, you'll see the skiers jump in the water, five seconds actually, and then they'll run out the ropes, and then we get to see these guys fight up to the top 10. Unfortunately, it is a bit of rain, so the drones are down for the moment, but we've got every other camera everywhere, and we've got Race Live in front of us, so we'll be able to watch as much as we can. And stay in, folks, because remember, when the rain stops, everything's back on, and we'll have all those images for you later. But as we see some people walking towards that edge of that pier there, that means there's a start going on. Look at all the umbrellas there, Connor. They're committed. <laughs> They're well and truly committed. When you have world-class racing like you see today, people are going to come out from, from everywhere, all around the country, all around the world, really. I believe that would be a start That's there. The start. Here comes Showdown, absolutely fine out of the gate, slowly followed by Strike F1. That's Madison Boyer behind Showdown and Nelly McMillan f closely followed. Supernova, real close too. Slow start from Coldies F1. Rachel Stapleton, you need to put it on the pace. We will see when they come back a, a couple around. But we do have the second grid of F1 coming along. Will Showdown be able to remain out in front? Will she do what she did yesterday or will Nelly McMillan be able to ring her in? We will only see, I'll tell you in 45 minutes, folks, do not leave. Stand up, get close to the water. This is going to be incredible. Connor, already we can see how much slower that start is than yesterday. The, the conditions are a lot more rougher. There's wind, there's rain, there's visibility. And, you know, that, that's going to just going to add to the, uh, the quality of racing we're going to get out today. You know, we had fast skiers yesterday. Can they survive in the rough? Today, we can see Showdown is probably going to get to the top turn first with Strike F1 sitting right next to them. I'd say uh, not far too far behind Coldies F1 and Supernova are going to battle it out. Do you know what? We just had our first grid start from F2. I, I can see um, currently on the screen we're watching um, Filthy, but we should be able to see in a second. We've got um, Hijack absolutely fanging down that first straight. He did say he knows how to drive the wheels off that thing. We can see that already. We're down now just watching the top turn here. Showdown and Strike F1 come around the top turn. Showdown looking slightly in front, um, but look, it's close. I don't know how you're going to be able to break these two. Showdown actually hammering. Brett Wiseman will just tipping the thing in, giving Maddie a little bit more of a carpet run, but when you're going that fast, it doesn't matter. Strike F1, you can see on our image right there, super close. Anyway, we're looking at some F2 boats right now. Um, as I can see there, that is Snappy177, as well as um, 1648. We're zooming in on here. What a machine. Velocity with a 300R Mercury on the back. We can see 1648 trying to make a charge already. They'll try and get to the top turn first so they can move to that inside line. The inside line is the fastest line. We've got to remember that, but it is the rougher point. So people need to pick out 
Do they want the longer distance or are they going to come in the middle for the rough stuff? Here is Maddie Boyer. This is mental. Look, slowly, cl uh, just she's gone around the top turn, uh, the bottom turn, sorry. Now here it gets a little bit dicey. We've got the start rollers coming into this top turn here. So it'll be interesting to see how they deal with that. Two minutes 22 for, for Maddie Boyer's first lap. She crossed the line first yesterday after the first lap. Um, she's done it again. Nelly, hold on her tail again. Rachel Stapleton's a bit closer than she was yesterday. Uh, sorry, on uh, Saturday. Can she maintain that? Look, it is, it is about three seconds uh, down. Uh, Strike F1 is currently from Showdown and then 12 seconds, Coldy's F1 is down from Strike but it will be interesting to see how this plays out. Will Maddie be able to stay in front the whole time or will Nelly be able to pip her around the corner? Maybe even Rachel come out from the back. Get... Currently now we're looking at a little bit of... We're looking at a cluster of boats here. It's hard to pick them. You can see the, the poor visibility already, Connor. That's something we're going to be dealing with the morning. All morning. Hopefully, it, uh, hopefully it'll die off soon. You guys at home got to remember, we've got poor visibility here. You got to think about the skiers too. They've got the same They've They can't see very well either. That's a real testament to see how good they can ski through this sort of rough stuff here. Will they be? Will the rain affect them? What's what's the wind going to do? Just already here, Connor. We can see two boats. They're all moving to the outside already, already to chase that good water. We've we've actually got a. Um, Waiting for them. Okay, so we've got a cluster of F2 boats here coming along. Um, I believe that is... Sophia Rivera comes across the line in first place at the end of lap one. Absolutely mental. I've got a lot of faith in Sophia. We'll see how she goes along the 45 minutes. Remember, 45 minutes, it is a long race. It's all about playing this strategically, playing it to your strengths. Can you go faster? In where at the start, try hold that lead off to begin with, or are we going to come and charge hard at the end when some, when everyone's a little bit tired? I've got some vision now of um, Showdown F1 coming along the, the front straight here, absolutely hauling. Just closely followed is um, Strike F1 and Coldy's F1. It seems to be that Maddie is gonna is the one to go out real hard at the start. It is a question of her um, of her fitness. Yesterday, obviously. Showed her fitness is, is you know, exceptional. She's able to stay out in front and hold that position. But, you know, after a, a big day of racing, can she back it up? As we just seen there, Connor, we've seen the observer stick their hand out to the side. That's usually a communication between the, uh, the skier and the observer, either a down or an up. Out to the side is usually a down. Hand up is I've got whatever thing you're giving. We'll have an awesome vision of Nellie McMillan skiing here right now. Seeing how those, those legs work as, you know, just shock as always over those waves. Look, these are world-class skiers. You won't see any better skiers anywhere else in the world at any point in time. Do you think now would be a good time to mention that Nellie McMillan's actually your girlfriend? Ah, look, maybe there's a little bit of bias here, um, but I don't care. Look, I'm going to pump her up as much as I can. But look, I'll give all the, I'll give some love to everyone. That's okay. Showdown has now moved out to a 10-second gap on Nellie McMillan, 18-second gap on Coldy's F1. These three top boats are lapping around way in front. 46-second gap for Supernova. That, that's a lot of room for Th a That is lap. a lot of room. Look, these times sort of remain the same as they did, we'll say, on Saturday. Look, <laughs> Maddie comes out really hard. She's definitely by far, I'm going to say, the fastest skier. If we're talking smooth water, she holds so many records with um, a former ski partner, Chelsea Stevens, or formerly known as Chelsea Blight. Um, and look, I don't think I, I don't think the girls have the, the speed to catch up, up with them, but it really is a matter of how the, how the roughness of the water makes it a little bit different. Look, people have to play to their strengths. They have to race to what they can. Sometimes people, boats will jump in other washes to get smoother rides and then pick their time to push. Another thing we're trying to watch out here for today, Connor, is uh, uh, Demi Foblets. She was hard in second place for, I think, 40 minutes yesterday. The whole race, unfortunately, had a fall uh, towards the 40-minute 40, 40 mark. Um, she's got a lot to prove today. Wow, okay. I, 
I didn't actually pay a lot of attention to Formula 2. What a good bloke I am yesterday. <laughs> but that's okay. I didn't know that. I'm actually really see, keen to see where Demi's going to go today. I, I wish her the best. I, I'm hoping to see someone else besides, you know, the Australians on the podium. Yeah, to still, to still finish in fourth place... Is, with a fall is huge. It's incredible, really. You know, most people with a fall, they end up to the back of the power, but it really shows you how quick Demi Foblitz is. We're just seeing how busy it is now. We've got one, two, three, four. There's a fifth boat on the outside. Cheryl Rustin, um, what a trooper, as we can see in front of us here. She's 46 years old, 53 years old with 47 years skiing experience. Wow, wow. And countless world's experience. You can just see the boats here. They, a lot of these boats, even the outboards, run a lot of ball ballast to try and push the water out of the way, give a better, smoother ride for the skiers. I, I, I know what I would like. Yeah, look, we're having a look at 1648 F2 currently. We come around the corner. Oh, we just saw um, a little snippet of Showdown 2. Having some good vision of that looks like Julia Williams from the USA. Come around this corner right now. Doing it tough. Out the back Just line, one of those little, F, uh, behind those little F2 boats, probably wishing she was by, behind someone of the likes of Mike Walpath. Sadly, he couldn't be here for us this week, but look, we looked forward to seeing him in Catalina or Worlds. Just look at that vision there, Connie. You can see how much it, the, the waves just go through your body. The toddy, uh, the, the toddy. <laughs> What's going on there? The toll on the body is absolutely f unreal. Look, y you don't know until you've been out there it, it, it's not fun. I can't say they're having a good time, but look, these are professional athletes out there. They're, they're, they're putting on a showcase for us. Just in front of us here, Connor, we can see Filthy. Unfortunately, this boat broke down before they even got to the start line, and Riley Jarvis from Australia unfortunately had, had to use an outboard. We were just talking about the disadvantages between outboards and inboards, but we can see today she, uh, she's got her inboard going, and she is currently 15 seconds behind the leader. That is, that's awesome. Look, it's, Riley Jarvis was uh, second place in our Junior Worlds in the 2019, and it's, it's good to see all, most of our ski racers here in our F1 division all are the previous Worlds winners, um, high-level competitors, you know. It's, um, it really shows when you're the best, you're at the best for, a, you're at the top for a long time, and it just shows how hard this competition is. Riley finishing six yesterday. Oh, and here comes, I uh, believe, is Molly it the leader? Palzer. No, Molly, no, no. Molly Palzer is uh, with Darren Hitchcock. Darren Hitchcock. Um, Molly finished in, I think, second yesterday. Yeah, second yesterday. Second yesterday. You know, so she's going to be chasing Emma um, to try and take that win. But also, um, just don't forget Demi Foblet. She's going to be coming up as fast as she can. I'm Team Belgium right now. Demi Foblet, go, you good thing. Now, just looking at snaps. 377, snappy 377, just coming around the bottom corner. They don't make it easy with the snappy, snappy this, snappy oh, that. Pretty, pretty confusing, but this is a boat that is immaculate. 1350, what a paint job, but more importantly, Samara Ross, what a, what a comeback. Three weeks notice, jumps on the ski, says, I'll give it a good, I'll give it a good crack. Um, Brandon Cropper and Bailey Cropper doing the driving and observing respectively. Um, out there having a good crack. We're also seeing some vision of showdown. That is our race leader here, Maddie Boyer, doing an exceptional job out in front. She's into it. She she's trying to make. She knows she needs to make a bigger gap to protect her win against Nelly McMillan. Uh, but you know, as we can see, Nelly McMillan, she's not giving up either. The gap is not. The gap's not too far. We're seeing some awesome footage from the drones here right now, just around the corner. Um, you can see, as you can see in the vintage, uh, the footage here, Strike F1 is following the wash of Showdown. This gives a little bit easier run for Nelly McMillan at the back, and they're hoping that at the end they can come out and make a push when Maddie's a little bit more tired. But Maddie's going to, what she's going to want to do is she's going to push out in front so they can't come in. But hold on, on the inside there, making a hard push, Coldy's F1, Rachel Stapleton, sorry. Doing she, it up the inside, doing it hard up the inside, but absolutely getting the advantage out of there. Can she pip Nellie McMillan and jump into second place? The here? advantage with this is Connor that if she chooses the inside run, yes, it is harder. But if she can get up in front, then it's, she can move back it's out. Worth, and she'll be in front. It's worth the pain. I tell you what, it is worth the pain. We currently have Showdown ahead by 11 seconds to Strike F1, and then 18 seconds ahead of Coldy's F1. <sighs> it's close. Rough water brings them all together. We'll see how they'll be able to. Deal with it as the slop gets a little bit bigger from those, all those boats circulating. 
as we can see, filthy tracking down again. The boat's still going. That's a plus. <laughs> they made it out of the start area today, and we're currently on lap four. We are just over 12 minutes into this one. There is still a long time to go. So many things can change. Observer on the inside, hand up. You can see they're copying it on the inside in pole one. I believe that is snappy. one of the snappy somethings. Some big pump ups up from... It's a blue... Down from the Observer. That's what we were talking about earlier. When the Observer sticks their hand out, that's usually... You need a down. That's for Grace Savona, I believe. We can see Molly Powell's out beating the water through there. Snappy 377. Sophie Rivera. Sophie Rivera. We are talking about her. She She's going to be trouble. One of my favourites today. See how she goes. At down awesome for third Grace place. Savona again. Look, she's copping it on the inside. Copping it. Trying to get the benefit of it there. We're having a look at Trim Lab now with... Uh, Danny Hood at the back. Got some awesome footage from the drone right now we're looking at. You know, what drones, you know what drones means, Connor? No more rain. Hoo -hoo. How good's that? I'm sure the skiers will be, will be feeling that. The, Look the at rain the conditions there. of the water there, Connor. It's rough. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And you can see just behind this outboard here, there's an obs they've just jumped outside their wash. This means they're going to make a charge. They're going to overtake the boat in front. Oh, what a view of showdown coming down the front straight here. Closely followed by Strike F1. That's the And charge. then also, right next to her, Rachel Stapleton. Not giving up. Absolutely not giving up. This is early days in this race here. Anything can happen. The whole thing can change up. But uh, what I'm telling you right now, Maddie Boyer is looking in an awesome position right now. Connor, these girls are lapping around at about 2 minutes and 40 seconds each lap. Yes, yesterday was about 2 minutes 30. Yeah, so that's about 10 seconds slower than... It's still um, moving. ...than we had yesterday. That's Strike F1 there with Nelly McMillan. We got Brett Armstrong giving her the... I've got you there, buddy. Don't stress. Don't stress. Looking comfy in that brand new boat. What a machine. Also the winner of the F1 men's in 2019 Worlds. So, look... Benjamin well, Gully. Benjamin Gully, they're hoping to bring some good luck with that too. Benjamin Gully's actually out there today observing for Amy Hockley in Belligerent. Yeah, so he's a man of many talents. He's able to stay, take his skiing knowledge and, and transfer a lot over to the Belligerent team. I've seen him talking to Amy, keeping her calm, telling her what to do. You know, you need a game plan over, over 45 minutes. Sometimes you have three game plans and split them into 15 minute intervals. Other people do it half. Some people don't even know what that means and they just get out there and ski. <laughs> Look, I think uh, uh, for, for those who don't know uh, us in ski racing, we know how important the observer is. But for those who don't know, they might think the observer is just the person who watches the ski. No, the person is the eyes, the ears, the, the controller of really everything. They tell, they tell the driver what the observer is doing, uh, what the ski is doing, sorry, if they're okay. You can't go anywhere without a skier and that's what the observer's most important job is. As we can see here this vision from Emma Williams, you can just see how much more a, a, you know, a cleaner run she's getting behind the big inboard. Uh, absolutely awesome to see her skiing so well lately. Uh, this last year has been, improvement's been out of, you know, it's been, it's been crazy. She's been skiing unreal in the selection races and she's doing a great job today. It's been a very big, tw uh, very big 12 months. Connor, we've just t ticked over the first third of the race. We are 16 minutes in, um, half an hour to go, 29 minutes to go. Look, I'm excited. 30 minutes is a long time. A lot can change. Look, I, I tell you folks, be here for the last 15 minutes. That's when the racing truly begins. People start pushing. Can, can people hang on? Do they have the legs anymore? Look, it, it, there's so many questions to be asked. And look, we're going to have the answers for you in 15 minutes. Right now, we're looking through some awesome drone footage. Right? I can't really pick the boat out there, but... We're currently watching Supernova with um, Emma Williams. Awesome scan right there. Following the wash of the boat in front, trying to get a better run. She's Looks got a bit of a gap. Which is good. She knows she's going to be on her own. Less boat washes, less to worry about, less traffic. Sometimes if there's boats in front of you, you have to go to the outside. And it's, a, it's a much longer run. The water might be better, but you might not want to take that line. Awesome. Look, Scotty Just, Cleaver's playing the statistic, is playing the, the stats the here. The front of that boat, Connor, is not moving. You can see that the front of that boat would be full of water, which is ballast. Um, and you can just see how much of a better run still. Look, she's, she's barely moving. Look, 
It depends who you ask, but some call that supernova boat the best rough water boat to ever be put together. Look, it's a machine. It plows through that rough stuff, and, you know, the water at the back can be completely different to what's outside the wash. Once upon a time, I believe that was uh, Scott Cleaver's social boat. <laughs> <laughs> Had the crazy idea to throw a 1350 in it. So that we could be looking at the leaders here <coughs> on on our drone footage right now. See, they're going right out wide, and trying to get away from that sloppy water uh, put in from the washing machine of all the boats. As we can see, Connor, pole one, it, they're a long way away from pole one. Pole one, sorry, right next to that boat. That's the furthest out you can get, obviously. So we've got. Uh, we got Samara Ross with a 1350, sort of the middle boat um, to the centre, the colourful one. Just can't really see the numbers. Oh, that snappy out the back. Oh, here we go. Prodigy 200 is coming down what I believe is the front straight. Emily Canning from Great Britain. Good to see the Brits out. Come enjoy some warm water, but w warm water. Bottle but I was going to say... Bottle of water. Bottle of water. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a bit of overcast water today, but that's okay. Oh, what was I going for there? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I will never do an accent again, but that's okay. We've got Prodigy 200 going around the corner there. Closely followed Samara Ross. There's um, the Bernico F2 boat. Snappy 177 with Julia Williams. Supernova as well. Look, some awesome racing here today. We're sort of in the midsection of our race. They're sort of... They've I got think we can see here, Connor, just over the back in the left, Rachel Stapleton has moved into second place. She's just behind uh, Maddie Boyer. She and made a push on Maddie Boyer. How close is she to Maddie Boyer? I think she definitely made some some time up there. As we were talking about before, their game plan must be sit there for you know sit there for fifteen. The last half an hour will chase. Yeah. And you know, pick your pick your time at the end. The last five ten minutes or so, jump out the wash and go for the win. Exactly. Like I said to begin with, anything can happen with these three girls out there. But look. Maddie Boyer, doing an exceptional job out front. I'm pretty pumped to see if she can hold that on. Looking at um, Strike F1 there, Nelly McMillan doing a great job out the back, out the back there. So currently sitting in third place, 20 minutes in. This is as they go past the sailing club. Good images of Strike F1 there. Big thumbs up from Brett. Thumbs up Armstrong. from the observer. And then a down. Go, Nelly. That's okay. Because she's a menace. Wow. She looks comfortable. 25 minutes left in this race, Connor. I, I, I don't see her burning out. I see these three, three girls playing a game with each other. I think so. I think there might be a bit of switching. But look, there could be a bit of pulling away. If someone's able to pull away from the bunch, hats off to them. That, like, if they can start lapping at the time they were lapping on Saturday... With the smooth water, look, hats off to them. That, that's, that's some determination. That's some will there. Look, we've got to remember too, only one day of recovery. So some of them might be feeling a little bit sore from that day. You know, legs a little bit not great, you know. But As now we we're looking see, at... you coming around the top turn. Look, we're having a look at seven boats here. We're seven boats wide. That's crazy. Look at the distance that we're running, we're running out wide here. We've got a cluster, F1 boats, F2 boats, some charging, but they're all going similar pace. I believe Mitch. this boat up front here may be our race leader. Would that, that be the, the likes of, that's definitely an F2 boat, would that be it? Maybe. Look, maybe hijacked. We got Supernova. I can pick super, Supernova. My eyes are good enough to pick Supernova on the inside of our telecast there. Um, that, I believe, is a snappy boat. Snappy 177 out of the back grid from F2. No, th 373 out the front there. That is um, Amy's freefall. 
But look, we're going to talk about the leaders now. Hijack is leading the race. Molly Palza in second. Two, only two seconds behind the race leader for F2. Look, Hijack is also still in front of Riley Jarvis. So, uh, Riley Jarvis being in the F1 category. Look, that, that shows you the quality of Emma Barnes skiing right now. Connor, just looking coming across the line from uh, our race leaders of F1, we can see there's only a four se- uh, eight, eight to six second gap between all of them. That is mental. Absolutely mental. This is what makes for good racing. We want close, exciting racing. We d- no one knows who's going to win, and that's what we love to see. That's what makes our sport so exciting. Um, but do you know what hydrates the athletes out there? East Coast spring water. Absolutely tastes fantastic. <laughs> Nothing like any of the other competitors. They must be a sponsor by the excitement in your voice, Connor. Of course. Of course. When they give me, fr- when they give me water, I'm a happy boy. Some image of the beautiful Nellie McMillan out there. Calm down. As we can see, <laughs> Nellie has, Nellie's dropped behind the pack a little bit. Rachel Stapen is ma- making a charge uh, for first place with Showdown. We are just shy of 25 minutes in, 20 minutes to go. Nelly does have more points on the board. There, there is a rope out in um, Strike F1. I don't know if that's like a spare dramas. rope. Nelly McMillan with dramas. I think her spare rope has come out of the hole shot. A lot of these boats run uh, spare hole shots and spare ropes Brett, of, to help them, but we don't often see Brett this. Armstrong frantically trying to get it back in the boat. They seem to slow down. What will this mean for Nelly's race today? Will It seems like it hasn't affected her. They've just got to get that rope back in the boat, but oh. dire seconds. Dire seconds are being lost here. I think he's got it under control now, though. You can't let... Oh, no. Who will be lost here, Connor? I believe that is belligerent Amy Hockley. That's, that spot right there is where we saw most of our falls yesterday. Carnage, uh, on Saturday. carnage on the bottom corner. I repeat, carnage on the bottom corner. But look, these are all experienced, world-class drivers. The, Everyone's safe here today. As you can see, this observer's pulling this rope in as fast as he can. That rope will stay out across the course unless you pull it in. Amy Hockley ski has come it's a off. Decent fall. She's but swimming. She looks okay. She's okay. Now you can see Ben Gully, uh, current Open Men World Champion, pulling in the rope there for her. She looks all right. Image of a strike F1. They seem to have got everything back, back together and sorted. It'll just be a matter of, are they still, you know, they haven't lost too many seconds sorting out that spare rope. Uh, back to what you're talking about, sorry, Mitch, um, about spare gear in the boats. Yeah, a lot. Almost, almost every boat uh, at this level carries a spare hole shot uh, with some spare handles for things like if their rope might be too long and it roughs up, or uh, for instance. If the rope snaps, you know, you have a backup. It's not often that we actually see the spare rope that being, <laughs> being, an, being an issue. As we can see here, Colin is uh, just getting out of the, the, the corner area and Amy's going to uh, smash that ski back on as quick as we can. What this setup that they've got here, you don't see on many other boats, this pad at the back of the boat is specifically for this reason, mm. to get this ski, the ski back on easily. And you can just see the advantages of being able to be, to the observer can hold you. You're in the boat, you're up the back. There's a lot more movement up the front of the boat where well, you're going to fall in, which it, I have done myself before. <laughs> Look, it, it, you, you see so many little things around, um, around on these boats to make things easier. Great decision from Colin here to move inside the course, get out of everyone's way, get you know, get get his life sorted out and get back in the water. Yeah, look, they have many different things like skis with um, easier bindings to get on. Look, it depends on the on the team, but lots of people um, like to run specific things just to make if the worst does happen, they've got Plan B sorted. So there goes Amy um, back into the water. There, she'll go for a good restart and hopefully. Um, improve her position. Back in the water, she'll wrap up and get going again. We run off a thousand point system, so time is literally money. I can see here on the inside, Colin's chosen to go inside the boy. I'm not sure if he's going to miss miss that boy on the exit of the corner there, Connor. Yeah, As look. we can see there on the inside, they may miss that boy. Ooh. Lucky. 
Did I dob them in just then, or maybe no, maybe? <laughs> bow, bow. We'll cut that out. <laughs> Amy Hockley up and going again. Got some vision down on the, I believe, the front straight. Um, that boat would be, I'm, I'm going to say Mojo. Yep. Uh, I'm going to call Mojo. Uh, that Mojo's with uh, Cheryl Rustin, absolute legend from the US of A. Vintage, some would say. Uh, look, young at heart is what I would say. That's what I am. Because I'm a better bloke than you are. <laughs> But just behind them, we have a race, ladies and gentlemen. We have a race. Showdown and Coldy's F1 are side by side. It doesn't get better than this. I told you, when it hits 30 minutes, stuff's going to happen. It's going to get crazy. And Rachel Stapleton has gone, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the crazy. Coldy's F1, Coldy's G1, depending on what you want to say, is making that race for the first place. Rachel Stapleton has said, to, said second place is not enough. She's making a charge. As you can see, they're also about to overtake Emma Williams, who is in their grid. They're going to make their first lapping of uh, fourth place from yesterday. Look how close they are. Look how tight this race is. The battle is. is on, Connor. Oh, can Matty Boyer hold on? She went out real hard at the start. Does she have the berries to keep going? They they put a lot of time on Rachel on um, Saturday, her coming in third. Rachel's obviously out for blood because of this. You can see Connor also, they're sticking to that outside line. There's going to be less traffic out there. The water's going to be better. This is mental. As they come around past the sailing club there, as you can see, Coldies has gone in to turn for a better pole there. Get it, get that slight edge. It, 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 look, Coldies is in front now. They've made the smart decision also because they took off on outside pole. But now we can see Coldies F1. They've moved into pole one. Shorter, uh, shorter course to cover. Jason Wormsley, not a not a stranger to world's racing, has realised the advantage of the inside line. He can hold showdown out if he wants to, but he can also run on the inside and cut that course. It, which is so important when it comes to cornering around some of these sausage dog corners. If you're so far out, you're, it's too far away. Look, as you can see in the, in the images there before, we had some hot dog um, setups, which is part of the handles there. Some run bars, some run hot dogs. As you've seen, a lot of world racing, there is a lot of hot dog use. Um, that's so they can adjust while skiing, where a bar is stationary. I think a point to make out here is that Maddie and Nelly both use a... A uh, hot dog setup. They don't use the bar. Is that an advantage? Am I doing the wrong thing? But look, it depends. Look, if you're if you're uh, look, most of the top guys use hot dogs, so there must be something about it, or maybe it's just a trend. Smart decision here from the outboard drivers. Here you can see him jump. Uh, the boat in front's jumped out the wash. They're going to maintain that wash because it's a much uh, better run. One of the boats in front's already pushed out some water, so they'll chase some um, hot up behind. Look, I just want to give all those at home an update on the placing so far. We've got Showdown in front with Coldies closely followed. Uh, look, really, it's it's either or. Coldies or Showdown, depending on where you're, gonna, where you're taking it from. You've got Supernova a lap Max behind. On the, it's on the screen. They've got them in um, fourth, which is right, but they're sort of a lap behind. We've got Filthy F1 in third. No, sorry, that's wrong. Um, we've got Strike F1 in third. Connor, there's a good battle going on in F2. We can see that Hijacked is uh, only slightly ahead um, of second place Speed Lab, but then third place, Grace Savona. She is making much better tracking than she did on Saturday. She's not too far behind second and first. I was talking to her yesterday. She didn't seem quite happy with her run on Saturday, so she's obviously out to prove a point here today. Closely in, in third place. It'll be interesting to see how she can go for the last 15 minutes. Update on placings for F1 women. We have Madison Boyer in first place. Rachel Stapleton in second place. Nellie McMillan in third place. Riley Jarvis in fourth, but she's not far behind. And uh, Emma Williams in fifth, I believe. Oh, wait. All right, we're just looking at Emma Williams there going around the bottom corner. 
Great job there from Emma. Keeping it safe through there. That's where we've had a lot of falls over this uh, this championship so far. Drivers and observers are going to want to push, but look, they've got to they've got to keep winners stay on top of the water. That's a big thing they've got to do. Sometimes they push a little bit too hard and find themselves in a mischief, but it's m super important to stay on top of the water. Currently looking at some vision of Strike F1 coming through. Nellie McMillan trying to catch up after that little mishap with a rope. Lost some, uh, lost a decent amount of time there. I'd say she lost a lot, Connor. That's going to cost. Her, luckily, I was not the one who put that spare rope on the boat. <laughs> Whoever did should run because they might get shot. Obviously, uh, guns are illegal in Australia, so no shooting over here. But <laughs> So, look. But, look, that person, whoever did it, is going to have to hide. No, we all love each other here, don't we, Mitch? Here we, here we do. <laughs> here we go. We have the battle for first and second in F2. Connor hijacked on the inside line with uh, Emma Barnes and in pole two. Down from Molly Palzer. Some skiers can throw their hand out and they'll say, hey, no more, help me out. Other, other skiers will shake the rope. A shake from the rope says, hey, help me more because I can't let go. <laughs> Look, the absolutely beautiful lab machine there. Labs have been dominating here in Australia um, recently. Look, speed, precision, absolutely awesome tracking in rough water. But wow. Look, I believe that's a... Snappy 377 is in the battle for... Go, so Sophia, go! Sophie Rivera from the US of A, absolutely hanging with the big girls. You picked her before the race. You picked You picked. What this. can I say? I've got all the knowledge. If I was a betting man, I'd be a rich man, but I'm a poor man, so I'm not a betting man. No win on the Melbourne Cup? Absolutely not. not Don't talk to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're just looking at um, Snappy. There's only 10 minutes left in this race, Connor. 10. This is where you need to decide, are you going to settle or are you going to take charge of this race? Remember, 1,000 points here. It's not all about placing, it's all about time. It doesn't, look, you can cop a second place. You can cop a third place. you just got to be close to that first position. We saw with some other races, um, even if we want to throw back the Saturday's F1 race, Nellie McMillan only being a couple seconds behind Madison Boyer, meaning that she had, with our close points versus 1,000 points versus 994. Here we're seeing Rachel Stapleton go around the bottom corner. Maddie Boyer's put the burners on. She's, she's got put a bit, the burners on. She's got a bit of mongrel in her, that one. I think she said, hey, you can follow me, but you've got to keep up. She's, she's laughed at her. She's gone, you can come up, you can play with me. Unfortunately, Connor, we can see just how much time it's cost Nelly McMillan with that rope mishap. But, look, world-class gear here. She'll come back hard. She's mentally strong. Ten. She's very, very small, but she's she's very mentally, you know, strong. Yeah, look, she's... Uh, this is her first run in women's F1. She's out there with some of the veteran skiers out there. Maddie, Maddie Boyer placed in second last Worlds in F1 and um, Rachel Sapin, I believe, fourth in Vichy. I believe so. Yeah, so look, Nellie Millen, Millen coming straight out of juniors um, with a win there, hoping to extend that to a second win, but currently sick, sitting in third. She's going to have to put a lot on the line on Wednesday and Saturday. As we look at the, um, it's a bit of drone footage here, we can see, we can look at the poles here. Someone's been at 45, I believe that's Speed Lab 45-ing or jumping in the wash of, is it Speed Lab? I believe so. Darren Hitchcock is a very, very experienced driver. There's not many race events we go to where he's not in every race. So he might be trying to protect Molly. Or he might be playing a little bit of, you know, bit of a game. Get up as close as he can, make a charge in the last couple well, of laps. Mitch, it shows when you've got three skiers. Also, look, wow, Molly Polza has jumped in the wash of Emma Barnes. Is it too late? An F2 boat? Is she going to have enough push to be able to come around her? Look at Emma there, Connor. She's cruising. She's fine. Look, she Emma Barnes 
look, a favourite for this F2 Worlds and... But as we can well. see here, Connor, Sofia Rivera is making a charge. She is not giving up. She has ta overtaken Speed Lab. Come on. She is going for Emma Barnes. Here we go. Come on, USA. Give Emma Barnes a run for her money. Look, that is, that's some superb skiing right there. We can see in the vision of our live stream right now. Sofia Rivera absolutely showing them up. Speed Lab running in that wash, trying to get some good water. Maybe they make a push at the end here. There's 10 minutes and plus a lap, so maybe, look, maybe 10 minutes all up. We've got 10 minutes all up. I'm going to say that as a good guess. Is there enough time, Mitch, to pull out and make that charge for first place? Look, F2 is going to be a cracker. As we can see also, Darren is trying to maintain that inside line to Sophia. That might be Darren's game plan. Sit in hijack's wash and settle for second if they can get close enough. Yeah, look... That, that's actually a very good point there, Mitch. They might be able to pip um, Sofia Rivera just by getting that good run in there. They don't have to win. They don't have to win. But it, a close second is good. As we saw yesterday in juniors, the two skiers in juniors boys, they, junior boys, they finished only seconds apart and they are 0 0.5 points. Another master class from the, the guys over in USA. The Americans. Americans. Bloody Americans. Bloody Americans. America. Oh. All right, uh, looking at some times here. So Showdown is currently in front of eight seconds in front of Coldy's F1. From our split, we've got in the in the house. We're looking at a good battle here right now. That that I believe is a snappy, but I, I'm going to say that's Julie Williams, pink wetsuit. You've been looking at. Do you think about getting a pink wetsuit? I look good in pink. Don't you worry about that. I look good in pink. This is our F2 battle right in front of us here, Connor. Wow. Wow, 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 what can I say? But wow. Pretty evenly split, first, second, third. No one's giving up. Look, Emma Barnes, Masterclass, has just jumped out in front, sort of stayed in front the whole time. There's only five minutes left, Connor, till we get our last lap flag. Five minutes. Five minutes, everybody. That We're waiting for that blue flag. For those who don't know, for those who aren't sort of up to date with ski racing knowledge, we've got... This race is a 45-minute race, so it's a time race. And then at that 45 minutes, the leaders of the respective classes get that final lap. And then everyone has to finish that last lap for a finish. So really, it, it's, not, it's not 45 minutes exactly. It's off the, um, the first, uh, the leader. So look, if the leader just misses it, the, it, it could become a 47 minutes plus a lap race. As we can see here, Sofia Rivera, she's going for it. She is not giving up. Around the outside, she's in line with in line with Emma Barnes now. Looking at some images of Molly, she looks really tired there. Look, this is a hard race. Five minutes left. Hold on, Molly. Come on. What have we got here, Connor? We've got only, I believe, three seconds between each of them. Wow. Nine, nine seconds between. Uh, oh, sorry, six seconds between first and third. <laughs> that is just mental. We've got some good images of um, 1350 there. All right, we're looking at Rachel Stapleton right now. Trying to make a charge on Matty Boyer, but Matty Boyer will not let up. No, nah, Matty Boyer's gone. I want whatever training she's doing, because it must be... Incredible. Look, what she's put on the last two days of racing has just been short of nothing but magnificent. Brent Wiseman, or absolute masterclass of a driver. 19 seconds from 10 minutes ago, we thought Rachel was going to come around her. But now Maddie has gone, no, not a chance. I'm going back out in front. 19 seconds in this type of racing isn't a lot, but it's a lot. Look, it's really cost Nelly McMillan out there with that spare rope mishap. She's out the back sitting in third. She might she might be resigning to a third position here. Come regroup, come for a better run. You know, not tomorrow, I was almost going to say tomorrow, but tune in back on Wednesday. I believe Supernova 
No, she's in fourth. Filthy's Filthy's in third, I'd say. Close? No? Strike. Filthy would be in fourth. Fourth, sorry, and uh, Supernova in fifth. Look, look, it's 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 good racing. It's good to see Riley Jarvis coming coming hard today. Giving Emma Williams a run for her money. Look, so we got some awesome vintage. Uh, vintage. As we can see here, Emma Emma Barnes, she's not giving her that. She wants the win. She's maintaining the win. Look, it would help, Mitch, if your commentator could actually speak English. I could throw a bit of Belgian in there. Dutch, isn't it? Dutch. Look. Who, where'd you find this guy? Look, some good image of... Um, Two minutes left, Connor. Two minutes. It's closed. Nail body. We had Julia Williams there with the snappy boat. 177. Bit of downs there. She might be looking. It's 45 minutes. It's a long time. Wow, we got some image of the leader. What can I say except for what a masterclass by Madison Boyer. If she can stay on top of the water, that's two wins in the bag. Look, this world championship is looking really good for Maddie Boyer. I don't want to give her the commentator curse, but look, she needs to hang on here. It's, it's, this is working out for awesome racing. Her f fitness level is through the roof. Absolutely class driving and observing there from Brent Wiseman and Daniel Cotton. We had 20 seconds on the last lap, Connor. I reckon we get a bit of reading on this one. See how just just how much room she's making and the, the amount of distance she's able to cover. Wow, wow, wow. All I can say, showdown is now 30 seconds in front of Coldy's F1. 30 seconds. That is mental. I don't know if Maddie's put the burners on. Rachel's got tired. Who? It doesn't matter. Madison Boyer, absolutely flooring it, showing up the rest of the, the um, you know, the division here. I can think of a lot of things that can be achieved in thirty seconds, Connor. <laughs> and a win is just one of them. <laughs> thirty seconds is a is a long time. All right, Mitchell threw me off there, but we've got some great image there of Matty Boyer. Oh, here comes Nelly McMillan. Absolutely reeling in. Rachel Stapleton, come on. I I'm a little bit biased here, but go Nelly McMillan. Awesome image of our leader there, Matty Boyer. Showdown, immaculate boat. We've hit the 45, we're waiting for Matty Boyer and for Emma Barnes to come past the finish boat. They come past the finish boat now, it's one lap to go, and we're going to be talking winners here soon. We've only been talking speculation, but we're going to be talking winners. That blue flag when you're skiing is the best flag. And oh, no, the finish flag's the best, the, the blue flag's uh, the second best. Look, I, I could actually say the, fin the blue flag is the best. You'd be like, you'd be three laps beforehand, you're like, all right, blue flag lap. Doesn't come. You've gone, <laughs> who stitched me up here? My mother's normally the one playing with the flags. I've gone, mum, do you hate me or something? <laughs> Pull the blue flag out. Now, Matty Boyer is going to be chuffed to see that blue flag with such a good lead here. But we're looking at two F2 boats absolutely battling it out. Maybe that's that Bernico. Um, They're leaving no room for each other. I'd hate to have a tape that's, measure out that's there. That's a 1648 F2 with... All right, we've cut to another view. We've got some snappy boats. Rachel Stapleton, we need to see that. We need to see that um, their battle for, for second there. We've got some Down hands from out. the observer, you can see their arm out. <laughs> Rachel Stapleton, they're giving a pump up. Look, we're just, Kev Boylan has just gone, come on, Rach, come on, Rach. There is this awesome race there. here by Sofia Riviera, USA. Oh, last lap flag second. for F2. We're racing for a second here. We're racing for a second. Strike F1, Goldie's F1. Who's going to get second? Maddie Boy is off. She's gone. She's got the first place. But second place is, is, is where the racing's at, Mitch. Where there's Nelly McMillan, Rachel Stapleton. Oh, my God. You can call her babe if you want.
if you're that excited? No, she's, she doesn't like that. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say strike F1. Beautiful, David McMillan in the front seat. What about that? Suck up a little bit. Let's get it. Matty Boyer out in front. She's gone. It's it, We're talking second place here. Blue flag lap. I'm telling you, the blue flag is out. The split flag is out. That is a, the flag for the, the secondary class of F2. Split flag's out. Blue flag's out. We've got a race on our hands. Down from Brett Armstrong. But that's okay. Here we go. Ke stay on top of the water. Race for second. Nelly McMillan has taken second place. Even with the mishap of the spare rope, Rachel Stapleton has resigned herself As to you can third see here, place. Rachel Stapleton is committing to third place. She's moved into Nelly McMillan's wash. Nelly McMillan, the young gun, 19 years old, comes out in front from the bit of the veterans here. But what can I say? Maddie Boyer is gone. I'd say... She's I'd, gone. I'd say Nelly McMillan's third. She snapped second, third. Second, second, second. second, sorry, second. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful boat we're looking at right now. Coldy's F1 right there. Uh, look, I love the sponsorship stickers all over boats. Some people don't. I love the look of Coldies right now. I love the money that comes with con the sponsorships. Coldies. Do you know where we do get money from? East Coast <laughs> Spring Water. Hydrating our skiers today. And our pretty good looking commentators. Or one good looking. Mitchell. Thank you. <laughs> Shortly we're going to see a battle between first, second and third for F2. Here, Connor. Are we looking at it right now? I believe that so. That is mental. Sophie Rivera, come on. Who have we got? I believe that 1648 F2, uh, that was... I'm trying to get some good footage up of the battles here. But, look, there's no boats out in front here. They're all coming for the finish line. Matty Boyer, out in front. Mania. Speed lap. Where are the leaders? Where's Emma Barnes? Matty Boyer is coming for a finish here. She's leading up. Brett Wisemantle has gone. I've seen the finish line. Give him the berries. Madison Boyer. She's very down, far down the straight. I've, 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 you know, pre got too early. That's no, okay. As we said, thirty seconds. Emma Barnes has just crossed the line in first place. Emma Barnes for a win in F2 provisionally. Emma Barnes to win. That is Jake Hindenhosel doing the driving. Um, Sam Perry doing the observing. A win for Emma Barnes. Second place all the way from America. Sophia Riviera snapping three seven seven. Third place, Molly Polza. Wow, great, great race there, but I can't get over. Second place from all the way from the US of A. But here we go. Here's our winner, F1 Women's. What can I say except Maddie Boyer, Maddie Boyer, Maddie Boyer coming for a win. Check it, flag. It's done. It's over. Win for Maddie Boyer. Second of this week. Wow, wow, wow. It's not over, Connor, because we've still got a, ban a battle coming. Second and third. Nelly, Nelly left the last lap way out in front. I just want to reiterate with people, when we say she's gone, she's just really far in front. Probably should have specified there. Uh, apologies to all those who sort of freaked out in, in the pits here. Um, here we go, Connor. Across the line, we've got Babe. Nelly McMillan taking second place in F1 Women's. Fine-tuned machine right there. Blonde hair, blue eyes. All of the above. Harry and race. Oh, who would say that? And that is a second place for Nelly McMillan right there. Awesome stuff. Come off a, a, a spare rope mishap. Absolute machine. We're looking at it right there. That is peak physical performance, we if, I would say so, if I would say so. We were just talking about how mentally strong she is. You know, for some people, that would, it would break your spirits. But look, Rachel Stapleton, we've got to give her props for that push. It was unbelievable. Made something to talk about Rachel Stapleton for a close third position. I'll tell you what, points is going to look pretty good. <coughs> She's had five years off. Five years off That's racing. That's mental. Her first year back and her first race back, she took selections. on selections. Yep. And absolutely dominated in the selections. We can't forget about her selection campaign. Was super impressive. Sat look. 
We've, we've got a few finishes here, I should probably say that. Filthy F1 coming for a fourth, possibly. Look, we will have all the results for you in a second, um, but our we're just going and, off what our, we're playing here. Our yelling and screaming is all provisional. Yelling but, and uh, screaming is all provisional. I get a little excited, but, you know, we love a little bit of excitement, don't we? Yeah, as we said before, a lot can be achieved in 30 seconds. <laughs> Look, Mitchell, you're too funny. Look, we've, we've, this has been spectacular racing today. We've got our last couple of finishes here. Um, I'm trying to look for some close-up. My eyes aren't as good as they once were. <laughs> Finish there, 16.48. Um, that beautiful Bernico of Blackjack, Demi Foblitz. I would love to see where she did, went today. I think that's a fourth position for her. That's... That's that's some awesome vintage there. We got some uh, we got strike getting picked up there. I'm looking for the winner. This is when you you look back at the abo the boat and think oh, I'm getting it's done. Finally, I can get back in. As you can see, Nelly McMillan down the bottom right hand corner. They'd be talking about it already. We did it. We come back. Second place. Don't worry about the rope. Second I, I place. know I know Nelly. She's a pretty scary woman. Uh, she'd be talking about that spare rope to begin with. Yeah. Well, I think there's going to be a lot to talk about. Who did it? How did it happen? <laughs> but the, do you know what the main thing is, Mitch? Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay there. I believe, is there any more boats on course or is that a finish? I think we're all one and done. One and done. That was a spectacular race that we had there today, Mitchell. What's these, your thoughts on it, man? Oh, well, these girls, they started off in the rain. Poor visibility. There's you know a what? fair bit of wind. Poor girls, they have to do it tough. The, the pretty old men don't have to deal with the rain. Uh, we've, we've got some radar provisional, you know. The rain's gone now. We're okay. So hopefully the wind picks up. We want some excitement in this joint. Um, they do it tough. Look, the three F1 boats, what a race they make for. Rachel Stapleton was winning at one point. Maddie Boyer comes back. Look, I think we can't brush past Maddie's Boyer absolutely magnificent run today. She had Rachel come up. That can mess with your head. That can go, oh, look, I'm not going fast enough. They come back for me. It can also wear you out a lot. You can wear you out. I need to grip my teeth here. Exactly. But she just, she waved up. Brett Wiseman said, yeah. Daniel Cotto, also known as Cotto, said, Maddie, I got you covered. There's a and lot they, of experience in that boat. Uh, oh, right, look, Brett Wiseman is currently three from three so far. I win with Carter Robertson on um, Saturday. A win with Maddie as well, Saturday morning. I, look, you, you can say what you want, but what a team. Madison Boyer is going to be hard to chase with only two two races left and 2,000 points on the board. It's going to be rough. Nelly McMillan closely followed. Had a mishap today. Could be a drop round, but that's okay. Still managed to really Rachel Stapleton. Rachel Stapleton, fantastic job. Look, to see that push, uh, maybe early... You don't know. Look, maybe she needed that little pump, uh, pump up. But look, to to jump in first, to give Maddie her run for her money like that, it was great to see. Awesome to see. I'm losing my voice here a little bit, but it, it you know, I get excited. But I'm excited for this next race too. I don't want to. I don't want to get too far ahead of me. But the U.S. of A. Sophia Riviera. We know, Connor. We've got Emma Barnes in first. Emma Barnes was, was so, our winner today. Can't brush over her. I sort of did just then. Jake Hinnehosel, Sam Perry doing the observing as well. Hijacked. What a boat. Velocity, Velocity boats. They seem to be doing pretty good today. Without a doubt. Without, Without a doubt, Connor. And then we've got uh, Sofia Rivera. Snap second. USA. 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 Molly, Molly Powell's are in third. I think there's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a battle between Grace Savoda and Demi Hobbelets from uh, from Belgium. Once our race live sort out um, the results, we're looking at image of um, showdown coming in right now. We should be crossing to get an interview with first here, so it'll be interesting to see what Maddie what Maddie's thoughts were. Another win. Well done. Well done. Now um, a lot of these a lot of these skiers they're going to run out of these boats. Um, and go to ice baths and start their recovery process, jump on an ex exercise bike and start doing some hot and cold processes to uh, get these bodies uh, flushed, get all get all the lactic acid out. And um, 45 minutes is a long time to, yeah. to stand on top of the water. Look, 
Look, we both we both did the selections. I can tell you, it is not fun. Anyone listening, it's not good. But look, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, we're going to well, hopefully we're going to cut to um, some interviews there. Yeah, we're going to we're going to stop talking smack for a little bit and uh, leave it with you guys, and we'll see you back for the juniors race. Bye bye. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. from long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view to the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways to secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. story on the New South Wales Central Coast. to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast juice. Dear Problems, Can't Be Dones, Impossibles, you're invited to our place, where makers make, doers do, and problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff, we make possible.
For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Hi guys, I'm just down at the bank with Molly Paulser. Third place, women's F2. Molly, a lot different conditions today than Saturday. How are you feeling? Oh, pretty spent. That was pretty hard out there. It was rough from the get-go. A lot different to Saturday. So I raced the three girls, I think Sophia and Emma, for about 40 minutes and yeah, just got pipped at the end. How the big lab sport GTA help you out there with all that ballast it can carry? It's amazing. Yeah, it helps me out a lot. It's yeah, really the perfect boat for those conditions out there. And a first world championships for you. you you've got two podium finishes now. Congratulations. Yeah. You'd have to be pretty stoked. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty stoked. Yeah, it's all a learning curve for me. But yeah, two days on the podium is awesome. It is. Congratulations. And obviously, we've got two more days and you're learning every day. That's it. Yep. And what have you learnt today that you might be able to put in place for coming Wednesday? Ah, uh, well, that water is not my water. But yeah, just keep going, keep having a dig. And yeah, you'll get there in the end, really. Yep. So it's good. All right, no worries. Thanks very much for your time. Good luck for the rest of the week, and we'll talk to you again, no doubt. Thank you so much. Cheers. Congratulations. I'm here with Aaron Sheath. It, he's a very familiar face, a very familiar name. If you, if you live in Australia, everybody knows him. Um, Aaron, you've been to a world title before um, as a skier. How, what, what year was that? 2013, Tenerife, yep. Spain. F2 men's skier. Yep. Okay. And you know you jumped in the in the big seat, in the hot seat, for as a driver. How how does you know coming from a skier, moving into the driver's seat? How does it help you understand what's going on? Mate, it just um, it definitely helps coming from a skier's background. Just um, being able to read the water myself as a driver as well. So I'm sort of onto the, coming off the pace when we have to, and being able to read where to put the boat when we have to in tight spots and whatnot. It's just yeah, yeah. It's always good having the skier's brain in the boat. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree. Couldn't agree more. And uh, how'd you guys go today? Race one's done and over. Yeah, mate, we had a busy, busy race, junior boys. There's some hot competition out there. The boys are skiing unreal. So we end up second overall. So we're happy with that, mate. We'll just keep building over the week. We can't wait. That's really good. Any moments out there? You know, where's the hard spots on course? You know, what, what, what's challenging you today? 
Uh, it's pretty, this is salt water, mate, coming up on the visors of the helmets. and that. it's getting pretty challenging. It's, he's got to go for the helmet to wipe it, the vision and whatnot. But, um, yeah, there's plenty of moments, mate. You're pushing to the limit. It's full trim, mate. <laughs> That's good. Well, race one's out of the way, mate. Second place, can't, can't ask for any more. Yeah. Um, good luck on Monday. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Hi, back down on the bank with Emma Barnes, winner of Women's Formula 2, race two. That's your second po win today, this, sorry, second win this weekend, Emma. Congratulations. One more to go. Race was a lot different today than it was the other day, I'm sure. Yeah, it was a lot more um, sloppy today. Um, coming in down to this bottom corner here, it was just so hard to see and it was just, yeah, so sloppy. <laughs> so today your driver and observer would have played a very big part. Yeah, they had a um, big job to do in the boat today. Yeah, it was hard work. <laughs> do you prefer conditions like Saturday or conditions like today or you're an all-rounder? Um, all-rounder, yeah, I don't mind. Okay, so congratulations. Anyone you'd like to thank? Oh, just my team and everyone else involved, yeah. No worries. All the way from Victoria, Australia, congratulations, Emma Barnes. Two gold medal wins so far, one more to go, and then she will be the 2023 Formula 2 World Champion. Good luck, Emma. Thank you. Thanks for your time, Emma. Back to you guys back in the studio. Back down on the bank here with Team Showdown, winner of the first two races. The race today was very, very different. First of all, we'll start with the skier, the rose between two thorns. Matty Boyer, two wins, 2,000 points, one more to go. You're having a great weekend so far. Yeah, so far, everything's just, um, yeah, been a dream run. Like we, the races have been good, but hard. I feel like we've worked together well as a team and um, yeah, looking forward to the next couple. And the conditions today, Fairly different to Saturday. How did the big Team 50 boat help you today? Oh, it's like a carpet ride. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, no, really good. A little bit like rough today, but yeah, pretty good still. And no doubt the guys beside you, Brent to your left, Cotto to your right, they did a lot, had a lot to do today in the rough water. It's a lot different than Saturday. Yeah, no, the boys, um, they had to work hard for it. There was, you know, times in the race where it was getting challenging and, like, even when Rachel come around and challenged us for a little bit in the middle there, they were really looking after me and, um, yeah, I couldn't ask for more. Okay, well, Maddie, we'll let you go. You step out and I'll just have a quick chat with the boys. Go and jump in the ice bath. Well, I'll start with you, mate. Big Team 50 machine. You're having a very good weekend. You uh, won men's and women's on Saturday. Congratulations. And uh, another good result in that race. Yeah, mate, it was fantastic. We uh, had a bit of a game plan and um, stuck stuck with it. And Maddie gave us what she, she had to give us and it was good. Rachel had a bit of a stab at us, but, um, yeah... Well, good enough just a breaker. So tell me, the um, I just mentioned Team 50, but it's actually showdown you're using out the back there today. Um, we've got team owner Daniel Cotton and Observer. Cotto, that beautiful boat, just tell us a little bit about that. Um, it's a, an atomic hull, mate. It's a, it's a one-off as far as inboards go. There's a few outboards running around, but as far as inboards go, it's a one-off. And um, it runs beautifully in those conditions. And, um, yeah, I was... It was, it was good to get it out on the water. I might make, make an excuse for myself there. Brent's got Team 50 shirt on. Cotto's got Showdown shirt, so I reckon I'm, uh, I'm okay there. Um, Wisey, I was going to touch on that too, you being team owner or team manager of this whole team. Do we want to talk a little bit about the preparation that's gone into this World Championships and obviously why it helps you guys come out on top? 
Yeah, mate, well, there's a hell of a lot of training that, that goes into it, mate. There's three, four days a week on the, on the water training and plus the skiers, of, they're always in, in the gym just about every single day. But, um, yeah, on the back of that too, we're non-stop working on the boats to, to get it right, right, right for race weekend. And you guys are a little bit of a different crew in the fact that you and Cotto both live in New South Wales. Cotto up the coast, you on the Hawkesbury, and Maddie lives in Victoria. Obviously, there'd be other people down in Victoria that are getting Maddie out on the water in the bay and what have you to give her some time on the water that probably need thanks as well. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Her family have been great. And uh, fiancé, I think he's been doing a hell of a lot of driving <laughs> to and from Melbourne. But, yeah, no, it's, there's been a hell of a lot going on beyond the scenes. And from so somebody that's married to an ex-ski racer, those blokes that have married or, or may get the benefits do get to run around in the water and get a bad back in the end. <laughs> Cotto, mate, um, thanks very much. Congratulations. You yourself have been to many world championships. So thanks for your time today. Congratulations on your two wins so far and good luck for the rest of the week. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, mate. Same to you, Big Brent. Mate, good luck and thanks for your time. Thanks very much, Troy. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Back to you in the studio, and thanks to Team Showdown from the women's second race, Women's Open. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland. Sparking creativity. And this is us. From long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view. To the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways. To secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. And building a new way of life. Create your story on the New South Wales Central Coast. There's more to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast Juice. Dear Problems. Can't be dones. Impossibles. You're invited to our place. Where makers make, doers do, and problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff, we make possible. families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
Good morning. I'm here at Drifters Wharf with Kelsey Ferros, now Burns, two-time world champion, 2011 junior girls world champion and 2015 Formula 2 women's world champion, daughter of Wendy Sundstrom, who was also in the Australian team in 1984. How do you think the race is panning out so far, Kels? Um, it looks really tough. It looks quite fast and choppy. It's definitely not my kind of water. I'd hate to be out there right now. <laughs> and you're here supporting some of the Australian teams. Uh, Nellie McMillan for one. How do you think Nellie's running around at the moment? She's going unreal. It's a huge step from juniors and um, she's giving it a real good crack. It's, it's fast water for her. Like She likes it quite rough. So hopefully now it'll start getting rougher and she'll make up some time. And so are you guys up here in the beautiful sunshine or central coast for the rest of the week or are you just here for today? No, we're here till Saturday, so we're going to watch all of them. I missed, yeah, I missed Saturday, yesterday's, Saturdays, but we're here for the rest of the week. And what's going on now? I noticed you two beautiful girls over there before. Yeah, life's busy, way busy, too busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, how do you think the rest of the races are going to pan out? As we said, you are Formula, previous Formula 2 world champion. It would be a lot different today skiing behind those little boats out there, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, this water does not look fun at all. Um, I wouldn't want to be out there, but they're doing a really good job and I'm very proud of all of them. Also, I must mention that Kelsey's husband's family is the beautiful supplier of our commentary box today, so thank you very much to the Burns family for that. Kelsey, thanks very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the week and give us a, your predictions for today's race. I'm hoping Nelly will get up once it starts getting a bit rougher, but Maddie's very fast, so we'll see. Thanks very much, Kels, and good luck for the rest of the week. Thank you. Hi, I'm standing here with Mike Avila from America. Welcome to Australia, Mike. Not your first time you've been here? No, this is about uh, the 50th time I've been here. Maybe even more, I don't know. But I've been coming here since 1981. So what brings you over to Australia this time? Um, multiple things, but one, to come see my family race. Um, my family, my ski racing family, both they're from Australia, from America, from England. So um, yeah, come see my family race. I was gonna check on a new boat I'm being built, being built right now, so check on that and watch my family. So uh, when did you first uh, go into the world scene of uh, world competition skiing? Um, in 83. 83. My first World Championships in 83. Then we did the World Cups in the 80s. I did all those and um, and uh, then kept doing World Championships. So how many have you completed as a skier? Um, five. Five as a skier. And what about as a driver? Four. That's pretty good. So uh, yeah, you've got a bit of experience. These conditions out here today, uh, what would you think, who are they going to favour? Anyone in particular? Well, I mean, it's you look at the water; it looks fairly good, but it's but it's not. Um, I pulled Peter Proctor here. We won a world selection race in 2009, and it looked smooth then, but it's not. It's very busy. It's a lot like our Pittsburgh. So, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of great talent out there. I'd hate to try to pick any one particular, but that right now in the women's, there's a lot of really good talent running around. Rachel's doing an amazing job. Um, so, yeah, it's. Sophia's doing a great job. So you said Sophia. So Sophia is one of the, your American skiers? Yeah, she's new to it. First first world championship for her. Um, but yeah, she's doing a great job. Young skier. She's going to be exceptional one day. Yeah, it's great to see. Uh, it's a good platform to be on too, uh, to come to a world championship. Yes, yeah. This is a, Look, they're great. I, me personally, I believe that we should be racing a lake and ocean and river. But four of them in one spot, I mean, I think the conditions will... Be good, whoever's in good in this kind of condition. Well, first race here on Saturday was a lot smoother. It looks like it's roughing up a bit out there now. Yeah, I would agree. But it it's deceivingly bumpy, even though it looks smooth. The first few laps, after say 15 minutes, it bumps up. Yeah, so there's a good field of boats out there as well. So uh, you said you're out here to purchase a boat. What are you going to get? Well, I'm building a boat. Building a 21, uh, a 23 force. Uh, Tim Rigg is doing it at Rigg Custom Marine. So, um, yeah, it was, we, were, we were hoping to have it done for this race, but it's not. So hoping it's going to happen here real soon. Thanks so much, Mike Avila. All right. Good morning. We're here with Darren Kirkland and Cody Kirkland from Great Britain. Had a really good race the other day. 
Firstly, we'll talk to Darren. He's an absolute legend of the sport. Second in 1999 to Stephen Robertson. There's that name again. It seems to be synonymous with the sport and also this week's racing. Darren, welcome to Australia. Thanks very much. Tell us a little bit about your career and what you achieved through the numerous world championships that you competed in yourself. Oh, well, we've been racing a long time now. We started in 85, our first world titles as a, as a, as a youngster, and we went through right, right through 2013. I think we've done about 12 world titles, which is, uh, you know, we're happy with that. Uh, it's been a hard slog, but we've enjoyed every minute with the people involved. It's been great. Yeah, and now, mate, it'll be absolutely mind-blowing to be able to do it with your son, Cody, who's having a great week so far and, and driving for him. Absolutely. I mean, we moved to Australia from London um, six years ago now, and just by chance, some of the um, there was a couple of spots free in juniors and F2 men's for Rory. So we filled those spots to um, make up the team for GB. Um, so we're skiing, even though we're Australian now, we're skiing for Great Britain, and it's you know it's a great feeling to tell your sons. Of course it is. And um, your whereabouts have you chose to reside here in Australia? Uh, we're in Windsor, just at the finish of the Bridge to Bridge. So we're not far from the ramp. So very, very similar to most of the people here. So Cody, mate, you got some pretty big sh shoes to fill in the legend Darren Kirkland shoes. How, how are you dealing with that? Oh, well, Dad's obviously been, um, he's had his time, he's doing well, but for a first world championship, I think we're gonna be doing all right. And hopefully there's um, a lot more to come. Yeah, and the water here's a lot different to your now new home, the Hawkesbury River, is it not? Yeah, definitely, the river's nothing like this. The river's always flat, um, like at home, to like being at home in England, very rough. How do you think you'll go today with the conditions being a bit different? Um, I think I prefer them a bit choppier, a bit rougher compared to the river, but um, yeah, there won't be as much speed as there was Saturday, 100%. And tell us about the boat you're skiing behind, the big atomic boat. It goes sensationally, has won some world championships in the past. How do you find skiing behind it? Oh, the atomic's great. It's a good boat. It's got a really good big wash, um, chopped straight through the waves and yeah, good river boat as well. Yeah, very good. Well, mate, good luck for today. Good luck for the rest of the week. Hope you enjoy it and um, enjoy. Thank you very much. Enjoy, Darren, and congratulations Thank to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Hey, guys, I'm here with Ryder Tovac from the US of A, winner in the Junior Boys on Saturday's event. The conditions are a little bit different today, mate. How do you think that's going to work for you? Um, I, it's a little bit rougher today. I think it's going to be better for us so we can stay back a little and charge at the end. So. And your tactics the other day, obviously, your driver and observer played a very, very big role. Um, tell us a little bit about your crew. So my driver is Carl Johnson. He's really experienced in them. My observer is Pat Frasca. He's new for me, and well, for the rest, for the, all of my career, he's been doing it, but he's pretty new, and he's really good. I like him. And how about your career? How long have you been doing it for? Um, I've been doing it for only like two years. So this is my second season doing it. So very, very, very big effort for you on Saturday to, to come out with a first place. Mate, what do you think of the venue? What do you think of Australia in general? I think it's really cool. I love seeing all the boats. It's way different than at home. Um, the course is really good. It's really small, so it gets pretty rough in the corners. I like it. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to thank that's, that's got you here this time? Uh, especially Carl Johnson. He's done everything for us, and then my parents for bringing me out here, Pat for observing, just the whole team. No worries, mate. Well, good luck for the rest of the event. First place at the moment, 1,000 points in the bank, and good luck for today. Thank you. Morning, I'm down on the banks of the beautiful Brisbane waters with four-time world champion woman's Anne Proctor. Hi. <laughs> um, firstly, who are you here supporting this week? I'm here to support anybody that's having um, a go out there today, um, in particular all the Australians and um, Nellie McMillan I was here to cheer on in the women's race. And to my knowledge, you've done a little bit of work with Nellie leading into this world and some other worlds, and um, she's probably a little protege. Yeah, she has a fantastic attitude and never give up, as you could see out there. So I'm really proud of her today. And whilst you weren't here on Saturday, I know you were watching on the live stream. How do you think the conditions differed today than they did on Saturday? Yeah, as everyone could see, it was a little bit bumpier this morning. I think it, it smoothed out as the race went on. But um, even a little bump um, can make a huge difference in the conditions. And we spoke with your compatriot Wayne Moore earlier today, also in the IWWF Water Ski Racing Hall of Fame. And we spoke a little bit about the difference of the machinery, the boats, all the stuff used when you guys first started, because you won your first Junior World Championship in 1997 when he won his Men's World Championship. Just touch on your thoughts about that as well. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for making me feel extremely old. Uh, 
but I won my first few world championships behind uh, 21 foot Connollys and there was definitely no such thing as a six drive and um, technology has brought everything to the sport, different skis, our ropes are different now, our helmets are different now, we've got more safety equipment. And you, you touched on the Connollys there, I don't think there is a Connolly racing this weekend. That's a shame, they're excellent boats and I think, um, I think that some more should come back out. And we mentioned 97 um, and then from there obviously you competed in lots of world championships, just run through exactly which ones they were. Okay, 1997, I uh, raced junior girls here in Australia. Uh, 1999, I raced in Spain, also in the junior girls. 2001, uh, we raced on Lake Mead in America. In, I was in Open Women's then. 2003, back in America at Long Beach. I was in Open Women's then as well. Um, 2005 was in England. And 2007 in New Zealand. And. Uh Overall, there four four first places. Yeah, four firsts and a second and and a third that I'm also proud of. <laughs> so very very accomplished. Good to see you here this week. Have a great week on the sunny Brisbane water and hope you enjoy the rest of the Central Coast. And thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Good luck to everyone out there. Over to you guys at the studio and thanks for your time, Anne. So we're just here with Amy Hockley. She competed in F2 Women's today. Um, quite a colourful character. She's had a, a very, a very long road to um, to to get to where she is today. Get to the World Championships. Um, she's got a, she's had a, a couple of injuries. I'll let her list those injuries and and how long ago. It, yeah. So, so what injuries have you had? Um, and how long ago were they? And you know, what's what's gotten you to here today? Okay. Uh, 18 months ago, I think, I had um, a fall at Wentworth and broke my right leg completely, tibia and fibula, uh, broken wrist and fractured left foot all in one go. <laughs> um, that which put me out until sort of August that year. I got back on the ski and then my son had an accident in September. So we sold everything. Um, that was it. No more ski racing. Even sold my ski. Uh, and then, then I had the burn for it again. So about June, I decided to get back on the ski, June this year. So, um, yeah. Well, well done, you're here today. And um, we seen you here at Selections a couple of months ago. There was another injury you didn't list that you actually, oh you raced with something um, at the Selection 1 and 2. Yes, I decided to fall down a step two days before selection race number one and broke three toes <laughs> and ligaments and all sorts of things in my foot. Uh, I had to ski on that as selections, but it's, yeah. been, a, it's been a problem since, since that day, the whole campaign. It's only been in the last week that I've been able to get my own ski off. <laughs> well, you, your feet aren't pink and purple anymore, no, which is good, as not, you can see. Not black and blue anymore. <laughs> yeah, and so race one, out of the way today, you got yep. some points on the board. Yep. How'd you feel? I felt really good, actually. Quite nervous at the start, but knew the job I had to do and just uh, dig, and I did. Um, but I'm glad to get that first one out of the way, the nerves. But yeah, I'm feeling really good. That's really good. Yep. A day break tomorrow. Yep. Race two, what are you going to do between now and then? Uh, in the On the rest time, um, just chill out. And, hang with my family and um, yeah just plenty of recovery and eating <laughs> and stretching and a little bit of riding a few carrots <laughs> carrots are my secret weapon right yes I've heard that before well well done uh, good luck on Monday thank you very much thank you G'day guys I'm here with Wayne Moore five-time world champion three water ski racing two wakeboarding world championships as well just recently inducted into the uh, World Water Ski Racing Hall of Fame. Congratulations, mate. Lovely to see you here at Gosford. Mate, what do you think of the racing so far? It's great, great venue, really good. Good um, viewing, it's been some good racing. Um, I got here, I watched the men's, uh, I got to see the men's on the first day and just watching the women's now, it's it's close, it's good. Whoever, whoever gets the win's gonna earn it. Mate, let's go back to the first World Championship you won back a long, long time ago, 1997, if I'm correct. Um, how have the boats changed since you started? Oh, um, 
Yeah, a lot. <laughs> you know, if I had to sort of pick one thing, it's the technology, the reliability, um, the horsepower. Like, we, we were running similar horsepowers, but the, just the reliability these days is, is just, uh, it's, yeah, that's the main thing I'm seeing, um, you know, and uh, the crews and the, and the intercoms they're using now, the, yeah, it's just, oh, there's everything involved in the sport, like when you're in the boat, like the intercoms to the engines to the, the visibilities and even to the, um, the way they handle, it's, yeah, it's all been, it's all improved uh, out of sight. And the advent of the Mercury Marine race engines, obviously that's, that's made a lot of difference. Back when you first started, they were twin turbo built in a, fa a factory workshop, not a Mercury Marine that's got millions of dollars to put, put into development. That's obviously got a fair bit to do with it. Oh, correct. You know, it, it's um, even just, they run on pump fuel. You know, I remember having to, you have to organise all your fuel and get your av gas and do all that kind of thing. And, and now you just pull up a service station, you fill her up and you go racing. It's, yeah, it's changed it a lot. It's changed it a lot. What are your predictions for the week, mate? Women's open, men's open, first of all? Um, oh, I think, geez, you, first of all, you've got to go and finish. You've got to be consistent. But from what I'm seeing over the first two races, Matty Boyer, she's, she's going to be hard to beat. You know, it, no one's unbeatable out there. But, um, you know, she's, you, you gotta, you got to go and put it out there for a start, you know. And, and for men, well, I saw that that was, a bit of a, that was a bit of a yucky first men's race there for the first first lap there and there's a few people that you know in the restart that doesn't make it good so I think today will show the true colours of, of the boys out there of the men um, Lockie Nix I think is a dark horse you know I think he's definitely he's definitely one to beat he's been performing all year um, you know but you know you got Carter Robinson Daniel Graziano good luck you know it's you gotta you gotta race for the hour put it up which is really good to see, and that's what we're here for, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, mate. Absolutely, it wouldn't be world titles if you weren't, you know, if you if you didn't have a few competitors out there pushing each other. And what about the other classes, juniors, boys, and girls, and also the Formula Two men's and women's? Are you familiar with any of the, any of those guys? Yeah, yeah. F two. Um, uh, look, the junior boys and girls. Not. Uh, I'm a little bit out of touch there, really. Um, I do know. I've. I've had the chance to meet um, Cody Cartwright, which Jace Cartwright's um, boy and, and his daughter. Um, I know they're skiing really well. I got to see him do a Catalina, and he's he's an incredible skier. Um, you know, uh, Cameron Nix, Camo Nix, he went over there and won Catalina, and I've got to spend a bit of time with Camo, and he's just a, he's an ab absolute talent. So, you know, once again, they got to they got to put it together. You know, there's, it's not just one race this time. There's four of them. Well, now now three one down three to go so uh, I you know then I think uh, once again F2 is really it I'm pretty sure you'll see uh, it should be some tight racing but you know if um, if the conditions are rough I think I think camo if he can put it together on the day should should shine and um, you mentioned the four races and the th we'll touch on the thousand point system I guess you can de definitely not l win a world championship in the first race, but you can lose one. Isn't that right? Oh, 100%. You know, even if you're having a, a crappy day, you, you need to still put in. You need to you need to finish as close as you can behind whoever's leading that day. And um, because I know, you know, they'll only include, I, I still believe it might only be three races out of the four. Um, but still, you just never know when you might be having a shit race, but you sh you <laughs> there could be more shit to come and you got to really work through it and you got to keep pushing and... No matter where you're coming, you got to push hard. Yeah, you're dead right. It is only three out of the four, but like you say, you don't know what shit's to come. No, no, and it's you know a lap at a time, and you don't know what the next boat in front of you is going to do. And yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of variables out there, so you just got to keep pushing. And I'll just touch on the talent of the man that I'm talking to. I remember going around the racetrack with him in 2009 in Belgium, and he actually let go of the rope. The rope was gone. And somehow he caught it as it was going past by the by the back handle. Is that true? Uh, it could be true. Um, and don't ask me to do it again. <laughs> but that's the talent of the man at the time. Absolutely fit, supreme athlete, and therefore that's the reason he's won three of our world championships. Thanks for your time, Wayne. Ha have a good week, and hopefully we might be able to catch up for a water or two. Absolutely, mate. Bit of lemon in there, it'll be fine. Cheers, mate. Thank you.
I'm Nellie McMillan and I ski behind Strack. Um, my dad David McMillan drives for me and Brett Armstrong is my observer. Um, yeah, today went really well. We really blended as a team. I ended up placing second overall and I had an amazing run. Felt really good. I got a bit tired towards the end, but I had so much fun throughout the whole race and really learned a lot, so that's good. So my whole family are ski racers. My grandparents, my great-grandparents, I've all been involved in it for years, so I was kind of born into it. Um, I've done it my whole life. I've been skiing since I was about five, racing since I was about six or seven, so it's really just in my blood. The IWWF World Championships are a lot different than our normal racing. Normally we just go, we travel for a weekend and we race Saturday, Sunday, but this is a real big event where we're racing four, four times over ten days and it involves so much more training, determination, grit, preparation. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a massive event. <laughs> We only just bought this boat, so it came from the Gullies, who they named it, they have Strike and Strike Force, so we've just been lucky enough to purchase it off them, so we thought we'd keep the name for the world titles. It's such an amazing boat, it goes so smoothly, it's so big, but yeah. So it's F1 women's, it's open women's, it's the top of the sport, it's really where you want to be racing. I'd really like to thank Pink Transport, Patterson Build, um, Elite Automotive Services, Revolution Racing, <laughs> the Ferris Group. Um, yeah, and obviously mum and dad, everyone that's helped us get you here, everyone who's trailer driving, filling up the boat, all the support's really appreciated. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. from long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view to the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways to secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. Create your story on the New South Wales Central Coast. There's more to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast Juice. Dear problems. Can't be dones. Impossibles. You're invited to our place. Where makers make, doers do. And problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff, we make possible. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
G'day guys, I'm down at the wharf with Rachel Stapleton from Australia. Third place the other day on Saturday. You had a very good run, Rachel, the other day. Good points in the board. How do you think the different conditions today might help you out? I know, I think we all know the bumpier the better for me. I do like it rough, so we'll hopefully, yep, wind's blowing today and I'm keen to get out there. Very close to the race. We thank you very much for your time. Are you running a different race plan today at all or are you just going to just get out there and see how it goes? I feel like you can make a plan, but it doesn't always go to plan. So it's just get out there, have a good go, and yeah, see what conditions are like when we get out there. And when you're out there in these conditions today, obviously it's going to help with your, your crew in the boat. Jason Wormsley, former world champion ski, skier, many world championships. Kevin Boylan, there's been nobody that's won any, well, any more world championships than him in the world. Obviously those guys are going to help you out today as well. Yeah, like, I'm super lucky, very fortunate. There's a lot of experience sitting in that boat, so... Yeah, super lucky to have that behind me. And also the boat, whilst under a different name, it's won many world championships as well. Yeah, this boat's magic. I'm really happy with it. Um, Jack Coldy, legend for letting me use it. And yeah, pretty stoked with it. All right, Rach, good luck. There's 15 minutes to go. Have a good race and all the best. Thanks, Trey. Cheers for your time.
Welcome back, ladies and gents. We are preparing for the juniors race. Uh, but whilst preparing, I've got young Dylan Osmond, who yesterday was behind Excalibur. Unfortunately, took a spill and uh, come up with some injuries. Dylan, what uh, what injuries have you come up with? Uh, unfortunately, broke my collarbone, which means I'm out for all the rest of this. Mate, mate, that's no good. And all the training and you know everything you've given to it, it's 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 obviously heartbreaking to um, come up with that result. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sad because we've spent so much time getting this preparing for this event. Um, but it is what it is. It's racing, and can't predict what goes down. So that's right, mate. It is what it is. And how how are you going in the race? Until you fell? Um, I, I thought we were going pretty good. Dad was struggling a bit because we blew a half a blade in the first 15 minutes, so it was harder. But um, I thought we were going pretty good. I think we're sitting in about third. And we're having a good battle with Trim Lab. Jesus, mate, you're right up there, hey? Yeah. Um, and at what stage of the race did you, did you fall off? Um, I think we fell off with two laps to go. Two laps to go, and you got up and finished? Uh, yeah, because I thought if it wasn't broken, I was able to get the points and got it checked out, but it wasn't the best outcome. Well, mate, you've got sp uh, some points on the board. Unfortunately, you are out of the race, but um, I know I probably would have still been in the water crying. <laughs> like a snap bone. You, what, can, you feel, can you feel your shoulder? Uh, yeah, it doesn't feel the best. When, if I move it wrong, I can feel the bones grinding together. But nah, don't tell me that. That's enough. That's, that's enough, thanks. Well, mate, we're glad you're all right. Um, very unfortunate, but at least you get to sit here and spend the rest of the week in glorious Gosford and, and watch the rest of the racing. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. Thanks, Dill. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. from long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view to the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways to secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation building a new way of life. Create your story on the New South Wales Central Coast. There's more to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast Juice. Dear Problems. 
can't be done's. Impossibles. You're invited to our place. Where makers make, doers do, and problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff, we make possible. families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Mercury power up with a portable sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, junior boys, junior girls. I'm just going to fly through the uh, grids and poles for everyone. Grid one, pole one, Snappy 377. Carl Johnson, Pat Frasca, and Ryder Travat from the USA, who snapped up first place yesterday. Up, Ryder Tovat, big dog. Grid one, pole two, Speed Lab, Darren Hitchcock, Jason Cartledge, observing for his son, Cody Cartledge from Australia. Grid one, pole three, Trim Lab, Aaron Sheath. Troy Hood and Charlie Walsh from Australia. Grid one, pole four, team 26, Brandon Cropper, Danny Cropper, and Patrick Valancourt, who's a wild card from Australia. Grid one, pole five, Epic, David McMillan, Daniel Graziano, and Zach Armstrong from Australia. Grid one, pole six, The Prodigy, Damian Hopkins, Simon Smith, and Sam Hopkins from Great Britain. Grid two, Grid 2, Pole 1, Meltdown F2, Frank Meersman, Nico Destoop and Elias Meersman from Belgium. Grid 2, Pole 2, Enough Said, Darren Kirkland, Jason Rockley and Cody Kirkland from Great Britain. Grid 2, Pole 3, The Dragon, Matthew Smith, Ben Casey, observing for his son, Jock Casey, who's a wild card from Australia. Grid 2, Pole 4, Predator, Greg Dutton, J Jordan Smith and Amos Ratuki from New Zealand. Grid 2, Pole 5, Excalibur is standing right behind me and unfortunately Dylan has had to retire due to uh, a broken collarbone. Snappy 177, Grid 2, Pole 6, Kyle Lankin, Mike King and Gage Small, Gold, Gate, come on, Gold, Gage Goldsmith from USA. <laughs> Whoa, down to junior girls. We've got in grid three, pole one, Grub F2, Alex Hanley doing the driving, Ryan Rigray doing the observing, and Leilani Cartledge from Australia doing the skiing. Grid three, pole two, Temper F2, Dave Coldrake doing the driving, Nathan Goodold observing, and Demi Simmons, a wild card for Australia. Grid three, pole three, Kid Stuff, Jason Washington observing, Ben Rogers doing the Jason Walsh, sorry, doing the driving, Ben Rogers doing the observing, and Keanu Walsh skiing for Australia. Grid 3, pole 4, Flamin F2, Alan Ross doing the driving, Josh Moxon doing the observing, and Charlotte Neal skiing for Australia. Grid 3, pole 5, Cosmos, Samarin, Cameron McKenzie doing the driving, Braden Jamison doing the observing, and Tiana Laylor from Australia. Grid 3, pole 6, to round out our division, Bernico Racing, 
Gene Hollands doing the driving, Jeff Weddick doing the observing, and Elison Hollands from New Zealand. Wow, Mitch, I'm excited. Big classes here. They're close to five, almost five minutes out. Five minutes, 45 about now. Mitch, who's your pick for today? All right, snap predictions. I'm going to take Cody Cartledge on this one to uh, retake the win. There was a matter of seconds in between first and second yesterday. Milliseconds, wasn't it? Yeah, milliseconds. And I'm going to throw a wild card in here myself and pick Patrick Valancourt oh. for second place and Ryder Tovat in third place for junior boys. Wow, I love Paddy in there. Paddy's an awesome skier that's been young too. I think he's got another run at juniors. However, now this is where it gets fun. I'm going to I'm gonna switch teams. Everyone knows that I'm Australian here, but I went to the uh, American 10 today and I, I picked up a flag and a hat, so I was born in the USA. Ryder Tobat for the win! Uh, Cody Cartledge in second. I got Zach Armstrong in third. Uh, for those who can't see, I'm currently waving my USA flag right now. A face for radio, they say. We'll keep it at that. <laughs> Junior girls. I'm, I'm going to take Lele. She's unbeatable for, for first place. Um, Kiana Walsh had some dramas yesterday, but still managed to maintain third place. I'm going to snap her up for second, and Demi Simmons in third. Yeah, yeah, good. Look, I don't think anyone can beat Leilani Cartledge. I think she's just too fast, too good. So we'll see how she goes out today. Alex Hanley doing some great driving out there. Um, so I put her in first place, solid first place. Um, I do have Demi in second, and I... I have Charlotte Neal in third. Charlotte Neal. Yeah, I think Charlotte comes back strong. I also want to say, I don't want to forget about um, Tiana Laylor. She was running second all of yesterday and then had a fall right at the end. The last 15 minutes of juniors yesterday was absolute mayhem. Carnage. As we can see, the, the lineup here today is sort of a little mixed from what we were all predicting yesterday. Um, there was uh, an incident on the bottom corner. There was a massive stack with Paul Dylan Osmond at the back. Uh, f actually, a few stacks. Um, so hopefully today we can, if service can rain it in a little bit, keep him on top of the water, um, and we'll see some good racing today. Yep, well, we should just let everyone know that they're three and a half minutes to start. You can just see on the vision there. Um, over the top, this is when uh, all the skiers are soaking in all the anxiety and thinking, you know, how's it going to go? Um, it, I think it may have flattened out a little bit. The winds died just very slightly compared to the women's race, but we've got better visibility this time. There's not as much rain at the start as it was. Yeah, look, we're looking right now on the live stream. Um, Team 26, driven by Brandon Cropper, observing Danny Cropper and Patrick Valancourt scheme for Wildcard Australia. Look, what a team. What a quick boat, too. Holds a fair few records. Or, yeah, holds a fair few records, Southern 80 being the biggest one. Um, the, both the Croppers, Brandon Cropper, Danny Cropper, Danny Cropper with an influx of um, experience and all sort of water ski racing, been in the sport for a, a long time. As we can see on that vision there, Patrick's actually skiing on one of the skis that Danny Cropper makes, a DC Elite. Um, Danny doesn't make the skis anymore, but if you're friendly enough with him, as you can see, Patrick Valancourt has been able to be gifted one. Also, we can see on this vintage, uh, footage here, the two hole shots that Melly McMillan had the mishap in the race before, where one of those hole shots came out. Um, but you can see there the spare hole shot doing its job. Yeah, look, um, we've got to make sure those are secure in there as Strike F1 found out. Um, but yeah, as we spoke before, they run a multitude of spare equipment in there. Some have multiple skis, not really the F2 boats because they need their speed. F1 boats, generally, a lot of them will have a spare ski in there, spare ropes and mast. Um, some run spare helmets, you never know, you might drop one on the way out to the wharf and you don't want to ski with a cracked helmet. So look, these guys, they... Um, they're elite athletes out here. We're not, these, this isn't the small leagues, this is the World Water Ski Racing Championships here. And we're about to find out who is the best under 17 junior. Have a look at the vision there, Connor. This is a packed field again. Look, we can just go through both the snappy boats. I don't want to forget about snappy 177. Gage Goldsmith was running side by side with Cody Cartledge for, I think it was about half the race before he had a, uh, had a step off. <laughs> look. Both the Americans here today are strong skiers. I think a, a lot of the Australians didn't didn't take the time to um, consider them, but they've really come out of the gate flying hard. But look, look no further than Cody Cartledge, a magnificent skier. It, it could, it was no one was near him in um, the selection races here today, and 
we're going to see some some masterful stuff. Zach Armstrong, also another really strong ski there today. Charlie Walsh, Patrick Valencourt, like we could continue, but we're in the minute for we're gonna, the start. We're going to let everyone sit with this. We've got the drones back for um, this one. The rain's gone away and we are 45 seconds away from a start. 15 seconds, the skis will drop in and then the boats will run out their ropes for the first grid here. Look, this is crucial to get a good start. You want the ropes out run, run out quickly. You want the, you want everyone needs to be ready for that flag drop. We're about three seconds out now. Now we're just waiting. All right, we've got we've got Cody Cartledge in the water, uh, Jolly Walsh in the water. Everyone's in the water now, running the ropes out. A uh, slow. There seems to be a problem with Snappy. 377. Hulk Raider has come loose, but I think they're sorting out. The Observer is holding the whole shot. I think they're still going to make they're it. They're okay. Start. Speed Lab, Trim Lab, 26, Epic all have good starts right now. Five seconds from a start. And it's go time. Boats are away. 26 fastest out of the gate. Epic closely followed. Holy moly. Snappy 377 absolutely put his foot down. Speed Lab a little, a little slower onto the money. Trim Lab not, also just a little bit behind. 26, epic. Snappy 377, Snappy 377 out in front so far. Now we're waiting for the second grid here as they go down the chute. Ryder Tovac, we got some images of him. Speed Lab closely followed, super fast boat lab. 300R in the back. Connor, Team 26 holds a lot of Australian records. That is a fast, a very fast boat, but Snappy 377 was, no, uh, Nuts. It's not crazy. Yeah. Some some of the Australians here will know similar to Second Showbiz. Grid. Second grid is away. Dragon gets the whole shot. Dragon up in front of I think Meltdown is it? Who's on yeah, the Yeah, Meltdown, there? Meltdown, Predator, and oh, I can't really see the outside there. Snappy 177. We talk about Gage Goldsmith being a. Uh, a, a He's going to be an underdog from the second grid there. USA. Now we're looking, the girls have got their tail gone away. Grow up F2, absolutely sensational start. Must have floored through those start rollers. Tempered F2, real close to the side. Kids stuff, Flame and F2, Cosmos. Look, it's going to be a great race. These girls race at some of our local cir circuits around here. Epic is out in front looking at Race Live currently. Epic Coming around the corner. corner. Coming around the corner now. I'm seeing a lot of movement from Speed Lab. Dreaming high. Snappy 377 on Trim. Also, Trim Lab 2. Trim, Trim, Trim. What can I say? Out of the corner hard here. We're coming. Snappy 377 has a slight lead. Speed Lab in second. That inside pole. That inside pole. Here comes Ryder. Absolutely flooring. Cody Cartledge followed in suit. Here we come, coming across the, in, in front straight in front of all the crowd here. Give them a round of applause. Get on your feet. Here we go. We're going to have 30 minutes of hardcore racing. As you can see, we just seen a couple of downs from Cody Cartledge there. Uh, the American, he's pulling away even further. That run in pole one will definitely help him. We're five wide coming into this corner, but you can see is that Epic on the outside? That is, yeah, Epic on the outside is making a charge, the hard run around the outside. Team 26, slightly on the inside, but... Ryder Tovat still going, man. Trim Lab in there, 26, Epic. You can see how much harder it is for these guys on the outside pole. So important to get a good finish. See the amount of ground they've just lost there, but they'll try and make it up on this on this straight. As we just said, Team 26 should have a little bit more speed than Trim Lab. We'll see how this goes up to the top turn. We're looking at splits now. Snappy in the lead. Speed Lab with the three seconds behind. Epic. Th th okay, Speed Lab, three seconds behind. Epic, three seconds behind. 26, four seconds behind. Trim Lab, five seconds behind. And the Prodigy, 25 seconds behind. Wow. This is going to be a mental race. Right now, we're looking at um, some of the boats leading into past the finish boat here, looking at Meltdown, looking for Flamen, looking at some of the girls here, Temper F2, kids stuff. Coming across the line here, we can see Grow Up F2 with a slight lead to who's on the inside there. That would be Temper F2 with Demi Simmons. One of our wild cards there, absolutely going strong. Kiana Walsh in third. Kid Yesterday stuff. she had some dramas, we said she'd be up there and there she is. Look, when we talk about competition, we talk about the three girls here. 
been talking about Keanu Walsh, Charlotte Neal, Tiana Laylor. Absolutely every Region 5 race, which is one of our local circuits here in Australia, is phenomenal. These girls, the, f the top, really the top girls here are going to have a nail-biting race. Look, we're looking upon... I believe that Charlotte Neal we've got vision of right now. The boys are coming across the top turn right now. Snappy 377 seems to have dropped back a bit. We've got St Speed Lab around the top turn, boy in first place. Snappy 377 has dropped back. We can see back. some vision down the front straight. Hand out there for uh, uh, There's Jason a big Cutledge. spray out the back of 377 there. Maybe some engine dramas. Maybe throwing a blade, something like that, trying to get the, the bad girl to go. Trim, uh, Speed Lab's a lot more trimmed in now. You can see the, the course is starting to wrap up a bit more. Boy, he's got to hang on. It's Snappy 377 thing. having some big problems there. All right, look, there's there's a lot of trim there. Observer standing up, trying to see him. I hope that's nothing, nothing too, nothing they can't fix. Observer's looking like, looking around. Oh, uh, it's got to be bad, right? Tobat's playing with his goggles. He's not concentrating because they're not going very quick here. Fuck. Connor, in my experience, a lot of think times when this happens, it could be a thrown blade. The propellers do come up, the blades do come off. They're very trimmed in. The engine might have dropped. It, I'd say engine dramas. Disaster for Snappy 377. Rider's okay, but the boat does not look okay. As we can see here, Team 26 is moving into Trim Labs wash. They'll get a bit smoother of a run. It's got a the boat is the boat is fast, so this is might be the game plan. The same thing that Ryder Turbat did yesterday: sit behind them and then wait for the late charge across the finish. Yeah, okay. Look, it's all about playing the strategic game here. Look, 26. Pat, they might be giving Patty a run, uh, a little bit of a rest here. We got some, we got some splits here. Epic, actually, in the lead from our split um, from Race Live here. Trim Lab is that you can't split them on the splits here. We've got a zero second plus. Same with Speed Lab, actually. We've got a complete tie for Epic, Trim Lab, and Speed Lab across our split line here. Team 26, six seconds behind. Dragon, 12 seconds behind. Snappy, 177. 14 seconds behind. Snappy, 14 seconds behind. They were in the second grid. I, I, I'm hoping our splits are okay, but we've got Snappy 177, 14 seconds behind Gage Goldsmith in the second grid. He's flying. We, we said he'd be an underdog, and here we go. 14 seconds behind, for those who don't know, means 15, 16 seconds in front. Yeah, because they were in the grid behind. 30 seconds, quick maths, they call it, I believe. I'm good at quick maths. I'm not. Uh, I'll let you do the maths. So we've got some vision here of a lot of boats. I can see 26, the big orange machine. We're still battling for, for uh, the top three with Speed Lab, Trim Lab, and Team 26. Oh, sorry, no, Speed Lab, Trim, and Epic, Epic. Epic making a charge on the pole four. That's a hard run out there, but obviously the boat's got, got some speed. From this vision, I actually think Epic may be slightly in front here. Epic's way out in front. They've gained 100 metres on, I think, that one. That would be enough said with Cody Kirkland? Yep, Cody Kirkland. They've gained 100 metres. That means they can move into pole three. Trim lap's still there. S speed lap's still there, but everything is riding on Zach Armstrong. In front, Epic Machine, 421S with a 300R. David McMillan doing the driving. Brett Armstrong, oh no, sorry. Daniel Graziano doing the Close improving. racing here. Looks like Trim Lab's going to get wedged on this corner. Speed lap moving out, Epic moving in. Speed lap halfway out the rope of Epic. Maybe a little bit rougher here. Maybe Zach's got the upper hand in this sort of rough water. Maybe it's something that they like. Remember, the skiers have preferences here. Some are going to be better in some different instances. I, I but it seems like Epic is just pulling away. We're definitely pulling away. They've definitely got more speed than Speed Lab. Speed than Speed Lab at the moment. Which seems bizarre because the labs have sort of been super dominant in the, these last couple of races in Australia here. But. Let's talk about Snappy for a bit. If I look at the splits here again, so, so far on the splits, I've got Epic in front, Speed Lab three seconds behind, Trim Lab five seconds behind, and Team 26 20 seconds behind. Snappy 177 is about to hit our split line. 
All right, here we go. Snappy 177 is actually 24 seconds behind. So they've lost a little bit of time there. They're still actually technically up. Six seconds up. 30 seconds behind, they started in grid two. Snappy 177 with Gage Goldsmith. 24 seconds behind the leaders. Cool. So we're gonna say Snappy 177 is the leader. Now we're gonna cover some of the junior girls here. We're looking for Grow Up F2. They're just coming in front of the bottom turn. Leilani Cartledge, absolutely sensational. I cannot fault her. Look at the way Epic's moving around the water here. They're chasing speed it's up and right up in the air. It is flying dry and that is what we like to see. That's what makes F2 racing so exciting. Trim Lab. Is that Trim Lab in there? Yeah, Look Trim at Trim Lab, lab and Epic. Where's Speed Lab? I think, Trim, I I think Speed that. Lab's moved out to the outside pole, trying to chase that better water. He'll let Epic go around the inside, and Speed Lab's going to take the... Wow, the vision we've got here is Zach Armstrong's legs moving. It's rough out there, guys. It is really rough. Zach Armstrong doing an exceptional job out there in the rough water. This is the game plan, for, plan from Speed Lab that we can see. He's sitting inside Epic's wash. He's going to fight Trim Lab for who's going to get the get to jump in the wash. We can see Trim Lab trying to make his Speed way into Lab. Now Speed Lab's jumped out in pole two in a dog nearly, of a spot there. Nearly a good move from Darren there, but it looks like Aaron Sheath has pushed his way in. Look, that that's a good spot there for Cody or Charlie, whoever's in the in the, the comfort of the um, Epic's wash. But remember, these are F2 boats. They don't have enough speed to come back. It's gonna have to be, will Zach tire out or will he go through, uh, keep going? I know he does a lot of fitness stuff, so we know he's fit. Will he be able to hang on? If he can, these boys might not have enough speed to get around him. Charlie Walsh on vision here. He looks very comfortable. I think he's set to go. We just hit the 11 minute mark. There is 19 minutes to go. That's some of the quick maths that I couldn't do before. All right, remember guys, this is a 30 minute race plus a lap. So a little bit shorter for the junior boys and girls here. Yep. All right, I'm looking at Predator now. We've got some girls in the back here. We want to cover some of them. Leilani Cartledge. I've said it before, I've said it again. Absolutely putting a dominant performance on here. Hand out there from the observer, Ryan Rigray. But Alex Hanley, superb driver. He's been here before. F2 um, men's champion um, last Worlds in 2019 at Vichy. Leilani definitely the favourite coming into this. I think what we can see here is Leilani's already catching the boys. She's about to overtake, I believe. The prodigy, I think. Leilani is flying. coming across for her fourth lap. She's way out in front. She's a, oh yep, she did, she caught the prodigy. She's overtaking the boys already, good on her. So currently, if we go through our splits here now, we've got Epic leading here, Trim Lab, eight seconds behind, Speed Lab, nine seconds behind, The Dragon, 29 seconds behind, and Snappy, 177, 29 seconds behind, but, between, but remember, they started 30 seconds after. Second grid. So we've got some image here of Zach Armstrong absolutely doing a superb job. Also there, Flamin' F2, Charlotte Neal, my pick for today. So we're going to go through some splits for the girls here. Grow Up F2 leading in front. We've got second place for um, the girls. Temper F2, 15 seconds behind. Kid stuff, 24 seconds behind. But hold on here. Who have we lost here? Drivers. Lost someone. That looks like a snappy boat. I'm looking for the number. Snappy 377. No, 377. And Ryder Tovat has, has had a fall. They've had, looks like they had boat drivers and now Ryder's come off. He looks okay though. Heads bobbing, skis up. They're not, they don't look too far, so those of the USA camp, don't stress. 
that he's okay. A lot of these dramas can, uh, that they've had earlier can add to these things and the pressure builds. However, we're looking at Gage Goldsmith here, doing a superb job here, coming around really hard, right next to Jock Casey behind um, Dragon. Gage Goldsmith and uh, Jock Casey having a great battle out here. USA versus Australia, we've seen that many times over the last, last couple of races. Snappy 177 out on the outside, the harder run. These two boats, I think Snappy 177 will have the speed on them in the end, but it's up to the skiers. All right, we'll, we'll go through those um, halfway, th I was halfway through those junior girls split. So, so far we had, we had Grab F2 um, currently leading, Temper F2. Snappy 377 has joined the race again. All right, uh, we had, we have Predator, Predator moving into the middle. I believe Predator. He's about to pull off with, unfortunately, Amos Rituki. They're retiring from the race, from what I can see. Hoping everything is okay and maybe just boat issues. We're looking at big pump-ups there from... Oh, we, we've crossed the Predator now. The Observer quickly pulling in the rope. We're not sure what's going on here, but it looks like they have retired from the spot that they've pulled into. All right, here we're looking at a great image here. Of I think first place has uh, taken off well and truly for Leila, Leilani Cartledge uh, in uh, junior girls, but we're having a battle here between Temper F2, Flamin F2, uh, and Kidstar. Look, it's it's awesome. These girls are super fast. We've got um, currently in in order of uh, placing. It's Temper F2, Kidstar, Cosmos and Flame and F2. Not far behind on the chase is Cosmos Tiana Lela. She unfortunately had some dramas very late in the race yesterday, um, but you can see that she's getting back into it. Epic F2 is ba ba bashing through the field. He's, he's got a good uh, good road of traffic in front of him. There's not much in front of him. Unfortunately, you can see Speed Lab is stuck. Speed Lab's got wow. three boats in front of him to get around. This is going to make a huge difference to the race. We're 16 minutes in, guys. We're over halfway. If Speed Lab gets stuck there and Zach gets some open water and, and everyone stays on top of the water, it's all over. He's not going to be able to catch him. You can see there just how hard it is for uh, this the skier there around that corner. That was a fast corner, probably one of the fastest we've seen from these juniors. All right, look, so far we've got Epic in the lead. Trim Lab is actually in front of Speed Lab, 13 seconds behind um, Epic. Speed Lab is 18 seconds behind Epic, though. If we want to catch up with the girls here, Grow Up F2 is currently leading with Leilani Cartledge. Temper F2 with Demi Simmons is coming second. She is 11 seconds behind Leilani. Kid Stuff is running in third there. She is quick math. 23 seconds behind Leilani, so that's a this, one, two, three. This battle is non-stop. Snappy 177 and Dragon. We can see, I just spoke before earlier, that Snappy, seven, Snappy 177 will have a bit more speed, and we can see that taking place now. Overtaking Dragon, gaining about a three-second lead um, from that lap before. Also, we have had a change. Snappy, remember, was 30 seconds back and was sort of up on the boys. He is now 31 seconds behind Epic, meaning Epic is the leader without a doubt. Without a doubt. Currently, uh, workout splits, we're using Race Life, some of the technology Australia has implemented in for our racing here. Um, we want to stress enough that this is all provisional and what we're sort of putting together, so please do not take anything as official. Just see in the middle here, Predator is up and going again. Predator joining the race. Not sure what dramas. They may have um, swap skis, ropes, handles, not sure, but they're glad to see them joining the race again. As you can see here, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boats wide. Wow, this is mental. Leilani Cartledge leading, leading the field of nine boats right there. We've got some, we'll have a look. Epic, absolutely hauling through this pack. Sna that looks like a snappy boat there too. Oh, uh, that's Temper F2, closely following Lele. Epic jumping outside to go around all the traffic. We've seen Speed Lab, as you can just see them back there, stuck. They're, they're stuck in the traffic. He's going to go around, pick pole two and go outside, grow up. Leilani's holding out the boys. She's not doing too bad. Yeah, look, <laughs> look, she'll give them a run for their money. We've got an awesome image of Zach coming straight right now. Zach behind Epic. Wow, what a, what a crew we've got here. We've got... um. 
David uh, McMillan and also Daniel Graziano. Daniel Graziano, one of our F1 men who will be skiing later. David McMillan skiing, uh, driving in all three races and our world champion driver. Speed Lab, you can just see them slightly behind here um, from Trim Lab. That, that, that traffic has definitely cost them. Kiana Walsh, not far behind second place. We spoke about her, she had some drama, she's still into it. Darren Hitchcock there, working the wheel. All right, guys, we're about to hit the 20 minute mark. I'm at 19.30 currently. That means there's 10 minutes to go. Now, this is where everyone's got to pull out anything, any power they've got inside of them. You've got, you've got to be able to hold it flat for the next last 10 minutes here. This is a 30 minute race. Yes, some would say it's a sprint, but even if there was a thought of resting between that 10 to 20 minute mark, it's got to go out of the window here if you want to win. We spoke about game plans. You've only got 10, 10 minutes left to unfold your game plan. And you know this is what we saw, uh, the charge from Ryder to that yesterday. His game plan was to sit behind Cody Carlidge and then make a charge, a, Look, light, a late charge, and he did exactly that. We, we need to give Ryder some, some props here. Actually, no, we need to give Carl Johnson and Pat Frasca uh, some props here. An absolute strategic masterpiece yesterday. Sat in behind Speed Lab the whole time, and then right at the end, five minutes, 10 minutes to go, pulled out the win. It was, it was something to watch here. Just in vision here, we can see Predator has joined the race again. Predator with uh, Greg Dutton, Jordan Smith, and Amos Rituki from New Zealand. Amos, I, I picked him last race. Um, maybe had some dramas in the last one, but no, very happy to see them joining the race again. Look, we're looking at great images here of all the boats coming in. Now, this is what ski racing is at the elite level. Look, it, you can see it's, it's hard to navigate, but these guys, professionals. As we can see here, Epic F2 took that outside run, and you can see just the bonus that it's, it's, it's managed to gain for them. They have no traffic inside uh, or in front of them now. Besides the windy water, clear water, they don't have to deal with a lot of the you know, the, the rubbish through the middle. See, that's where sort of Speed Lab or Trim Lab have sort of got caught out. We're actually, we can see Speed Lab. I think that's Speed Lab all the way out wide. Trim Lab all the way in. Look, two different approaches. We'll see what works for them if they can keep up. Observer singling, signaling for Temper F2 with Demi Simmons. There's obviously a lot of communication going on between the drivers. The same we've got here for, for Epic. Epic know they've got this one in the bag if they can hold it out. Speed Lab has been held back massively. We're gonna talk some splits here now. We've got we've got Grow Up F2 with Leilani Carl. Hold there, in hold the there. Uh, Connor, we've lost Tiana Layla. There's a fall further up the back. Hoping that they're okay, but there is a fall. We have a fall. Observer pulling in the road, they're going back to her now. We've got good image here in the live stream. Very unfortunate for Tiana Layla. Unfortunately, she fell on Saturday and then she's taken another fall today. Look, it just shows how important it is to stay on top of the water. We've got hands up for Jason Carlidge. Maybe there's something wrong with the boat. Maybe there's angry ups from um, Cody Cartledge out the back. We've, he's given them the two hands up, buddy, we've got no more. <laughs> Is that, have we, are we struggling to navigate the field? Is there a boat problem? Is what, there are so many things that could be going wrong here right now, but look, they don't look happy. Now, I'll just go back to cover some of the girls racing here. We've got Grow Up F2 with Leilani College in front, and then Temper F2 in second, Kid Stuff in third, Cosmos third, but Cosmos just had a step off there. We can see Cosmos in the vision here. She's in the boat. She seems to be okay. Observer pulling in the road. She's got her ski. We'll let you know, guys know if they get back to it. All right, we're just looking at Team 26 coming around the corner now, uh, uh, along with Charlotte Neal behind Flame and F2. Charlotte was my pick today. I think she's actually just moved. She's overtaken. She's currently sitting in fourth now. We've got Grow Up. The most recent um, splits we've got now is Grow Up in first, Temper F2 with Demi Simmons absolutely having a blinder. I'm, I'm Team Demi right now. She's um, 16 seconds behind Lele. Um, Kiana Walsh is also 27 seconds behind Leilani.
just in the bottom right hand corner so we can see Tiana is getting her ski back on she will join the race well done all right, we'll go. We'll give you some updates on the boys' splits. Epic in the lead, trim line 19 seconds behind, speed lap 26 seconds behind. They've just gone past uh, Snappy 377 here. Ryder Tovat having a, uh, it's not his best day. It's not like Saturday, but that's okay. We've got Gage to represent the Americans right now with Snappy 1177. On our six minutes left, we've just ticked over the 24 minute mark. We can see some of these game plans starting to come unstuck. We can see some of these game plans starting to really come to fruition, and there's definitely some movements happening. We can see in the background Cosmos are putting ski on, so they will return to the field, which is a good thing. Two hands up from Jason Carlin saying, We're going, we're going to chase down Smith's uh, trim lab and try and overtake second place. Look, there might be something wrong there. We'll have to chat with Daz after after the race. But Daz being Darren Hitchcock, the driver. He's no magician, but I've seen this cool bike guy pull a couple of rabbits out of a few hats. Absolutely awesome image of the lab sport machine there. Definitely not as fast as we saw him on the first couple of laps. No, definitely not. Maybe the trim up button's broken. <laughs> Cody. We've got good image on the live stream here of Cody Cartledge right now. Doing it tough out the back there. F2 boat, a little rough today. You know what, the rough, it's, it's good to see some rough water out there. Throws a little bit of... Rough water? <sighs> I was the looking at something far there. The advantage the juniors get to see is that there's no inboards lapping around with them. There's no big thousand kilo inboards with full of ballast so the, the waves that are created by the boats aren't as um, aren't as intense but it's certainly it's it's still hard it's still tough absolutely we're looking at Demi Simmons right now a wild card for Australia but absolutely putting it down I, I'm a fan I'm a massive fan Demi Simmons you you're you're a legend being a wild card means that she came fifth in selections and she's currently in second place from the points on Saturday. That's, that's just unreal stuff from Demi and the, um, the team of Temper F2 right there. Good images of their Flame and F2 and Meltdown F2 as well. Meltdown F2 has Elias Mersmans from Belgium. You gotta live, give some love to our Belgians out there. Got some got some observers pointing around, maybe the skis giving a bit of attitude back to the observers. Go you see there. Tiana Layla behind the boat there, she has joined the race again. It's not the easiest thing to take a fall for the second time and join the race, you know. But the points on the board do matter. seen this corner on the, the exit on this corner here has been a very a dog spot for so many people who's this is where we've seen many of the falls it's, it, especially yesterday in juniors but we're not seeing that much now maybe they've sorted it out changed the game plan um they a lot of them seem to have it sorted maybe decided to go hey it's pretty tough through here maybe we'll just chill out for There's a second three minutes remaining connor we are going to see the blue flag in, i'd say two or three laps We've got some good images here of Charlie Walsh behind Trin Lab, but then as we go through the list here, we've got Grub F2 with Leilani Cartledge. Um, we've also got Speed Lab with the brother duo, um, Cody Cartledge. Wow, he comes uh, right out wide. We've got enough set here, which was formerly known as Team 50 F2. Enough set driven by Darren Kirkland, Jason Rockley doing the observing, and Cody Kirkland from Great Britain doing the skiing out there. Darren Kirkland, an absolute legend of the sport, um, one, of, one of Britain's finest. Um, Cody, his son, uh, doing a bit of uh, jump back in, had a little bit of time off from skiing. Awesome to see him out there. Um, currently lives in Australia, but um, definitely from Great Britain. The Kirklands live in Australia, but is that cheating? Look, you have to ask <laughs> the IWIWF committee. Uh, we've also got um, Rory Kirkland, he's in our men's division, um, also skiing for England. I can see the gap uh, getting bigger and bigger between Speed Lab and Trim Lab. I think Charlie Walsh is going to snag second. That'll be awesome news for um, the Trim Lab's uh, crew there. Hoping to put that number up. I think there'll be a bit of frustration in the cartilage. Um, 
House. House. <laughs> but that's all right. If in doubt, Le Leilani Cartledge cannot be beaten. We are going to see a lot of points change around in the juniors race. This means that the th race three in two days' time will be even more important. Zach Armstrong currently in first place. He came fifth yesterday. Oh, that's going to throw every a spanner in the works. Ryder Tovat not having a good day today, but also Gage Goldsmith having a great day today too. So this, this could throw everything out of whack here. But that's what we like to see. We want to keep guessing here. We want to... We want, we want to be on the edge of our seats here, but we're at 29 minutes and 20 seconds. We're looking for Epic or Grow Up F2 to get the blue flag here. Looking down that, um, that front straight now. I'm pretty sure that's Epic. It looks like they're gonna get the blue flag on this lap. 20 seconds. I tell you what, Connor. Flamin F2, fourth place yesterday, not backing off today, not backing down. It's, it's good. Consistency wins, uh, wins race um, championships are like for this, so you've got to... We're looking for that. We're just seeing Ryder Tovac go past. Um, his epic. Here we go. Zach Armstrong's coming in for his blue flag lap. I believe they're going to throw one out. And the there it is. The blue flag is out. I repeat, guys. One lap to one go. One lap to go. Daniel Graziano giving Zach the one lap. Zach gives the big nod. He goes, give me the berries. Let's finish this. Let's get a good win here today. He, he's, I, I'm looking at the split here. He's 17 seconds in front of Trim Lab. Connor, it's crazy. Fifth place to first. What an achievement. It's not over yet, but I'm a commentator's curse, I know. But to even get to where he is, I'm, you know. He looks good. He looks, he doesn't look tired. He looks pretty good. We know how much training he does. So actually, sorry, I got the split wrong there. He's actually 21 seconds in front of Trim Lab. 21 seconds between first and second. Ooh. Busy day. Mental. Hard day in the office right there. All right, now looking at the image we've got here. Speed Lab coming in for their blue flag lap. Sadly, got stuck behind a couple of things. Looked like there's a little bit of frustration, but um, hopefully nothing is. Just goes to show, Connor, that the outside line is not always the best, but sometimes you have no choice. You have to be there. Lots of more boats coming through. Kid stuff um, with Ken Walsh. I believe that was a snappy boat we were just looking at. Uh, on the live stream, we've got awesome drone footage here. Blend Blendline TV doing an unreal job with all our angles and stuff like that. I believe that is um, 26 we're looking at currently, coming down the back straight. Could be Predator. Yeah, Team 26, right next to Dragon, and that would be Bernico Racing. Bernico Racing is Ellis Ellison Hollands from New Zealand. We're looking for a couple boats here to come for a finish. Only a two minute lap. All right, the girls are looking to get their split flag here. I believe. All right, we're looking at the bottom turn here. We got a couple boats coming in. Past a finish boat here, the Prodigy and us said and Snappy 377. Not not the best day for Ryder Tovat, but we'll, we'll, we'll look to his partner, Gage Goldsmith. Prodigy having a good day today. It is, Prodigy is Sam Hopkins from um, England. One lap to go for the Prodigy. All right, here we go. We're looking at it. Epic, clear view. Finish line is in sight. What? He's going to finish. He's going to take a win. Here comes Zach Armstrong. David McMillan doing the driving. Daniel Graziano doing the, doing the observing. And Zach Armstrong doing the skiing what for a win. Run. From fifth to fifth. Doesn't that put a smile on your face? Zach Armstrong is the winner of our Monday's Junior Boy race here. Connor, we've got the door closed in here, and I can hear the screaming going on from drifters in the booth. But don't forget, closely follow. Charlie Walsh might have picked a little bit of time back up there, cut, grabbed in a little bit of points. It's all about that 1,000-point system. Charlie Walsh skiing behind... 
trim lab, Aaron Sheet doing the driving, and Troy Hood is observing. Just looking at the finish line here, we've got a couple boats finishing. Meltdown F2. That Meltdown F2 has um, Ellis Mersman from Belgium on the back. Flamin F2, Cosmos. We may have some boat drama. Speed Lab will finish, but there's a big back off there. You can see Cody Cartlidge throwing some up, saying, Dad, give me the berries. That's the one. Good footage there from Speed Lab. Doesn't look as fast as what they, they'd want to be going at, but nevertheless, it's a thousand point system. There are four races. We do take the best three points. So uh, we'll be back to you on Wednesday with his game plan. Look, a few more boats come. Oh, 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 we've missed it. Leilani Cartledge has come for a massive finish. Massive, dominant finish. Two wins on the board. Can she be stopped? Leilani Cartledge from Australia. Alex Hanley doing the driving. Ryan Woodgray doing the observing. Grow Up F2 has grabbed an awesome finish. Can't forget here. Snappy 177. Gage Goldsmith having an awesome run today. We'll have to check the splits. Second grid. We've got to remember, second grid makes a difference here but from what we've got here is a minute down so he's possibly 30 seconds down i don't know if that puts him in front of of cody so it could be a third place here for snappy but we have to come remember we're we've, we're only using the tools we got here nothing is official leilani a cliff a clear first place uh i Oh, an off. We've got an off. Kid stuff is off. Kiana Walsh, she's put a ski back on. Sorry, we weren't quicker to that. As she's had enough time to put a ski on. She's back in the water. She will restart today. That's two falls in two days. It's not uh, not looking good. But that's unfortunate. We're, we can see she's okay. She's getting back up. She has a finish there for um, what looks like a rider Tovad from Snappy 377. Further down. Yesterday we saw Kiana Walsh come with a fall, still placed third. Tiana Layla had a fall, still placed fifth. Both of those girls have had a fall today, but Charlotte Neal, Charlotte Neal seems to have snapped second. Kid Stuff is going, Kid Stuff is back right on the last straight. That's where, you know, you give it as much as you can. Sometimes it doesn't always pull through. Just cutting back to the finish line here. We've got two boats finishing the Prodigy. The Prodigy has a Sam Hopkins from Great Britain skiing and another Great Britain skier. Um, enough said with Cody Kirkland. Must have been a decent fall here, Connor. We can see that Kiana Walsh is going to have to finish this last straight with no goggles. Only a couple boats left now. We're looking for Bernico Racing, Kid Stuff, Flamin F2, Cosmos and Temper F2. Looking at some boats coming across the finish here. Here comes, I believe that is Bernico Racing. Yes, Bernico Racing with um, Gene Hollands, Jeff Week, and Elson Hollands from New Zealand. Um, Kiana Walsh looks a little sore there, a little bashed up, no goggles. Um, so Great finish. As we said before, it is not, not an easy battle to have a fall and then get up and go again. Also, we've got another finish from uh, Charlotte Neal behind Flamin F2. Good to see her with a good finish. She was my pick for today. Tiana Walsh also had a fall. She's managed to finish as well. Also, Demi Simmons, big fan of Demi Simmons, Temper F2. Might have had some dramas there before. Connor, we're just going back over our notes. And if we have a look at Temper F2, we can see up on the top turn, last lap, they have had to loop around. Might have been a fall there for Temper F2. That's really sad to see as uh, she was going so good beforehand. And look, I think that, that that's going to wrap up our um, junior boys and girls for today. We had some awesome racing here today, Mitch, with the junior boys and girls. Um, exciting racing with the junior boys. Dominant performance from Leilani Cartledge. Um, with also a couple offs there from the girls with Demi Simmons possibly having a, a problem. Um, Keanu Walsh having an off. Charlotte Neal staying up and remaining consistent. Might have pipped a second there. Um, and Tiana Layla also having a fall. Um, Alison Hollands having a good run today, staying on top of the water. I think the only one we got right was Layla Cartledge. I think it was. I That's think it. we were completely all over the place. We got, um, so far from what we've got here, we've got Zach Armstrong winning here. Um, 
Jolly Walsh coming in second, and possibly, I think, if you're going off what I think, I think it's snappy, snappy 177 Gage Goldsmith with the third. I think so too. Once we work out the results, I think he'll be, as we said, a, uh, a wild card that's managed to sneak through, just like Ryder Tovat did yesterday. Look, I, I said at the start, look, can't cut, um, count out Gage. He was running side by side with Cody the whole time yesterday. It's only that he had a little off. Well done. All right, we're going to give it you over to Troy at the moment. He seems to have uh, the Americans over in, uh, in the pits. Hey guys, I'm just here with Jared Cooper, team captain for the US of A. Welcome to Boston Australia, Jared. Pretty good results so far for the US of A skiers. Firstly, we'll start with Sophia Rivera, who's had two podium finishes today, or yeah, Saturday and today. She's going quite well. Yeah, um, couldn't be happier with the whole team effort, um, especially, uh, you know, we had great results with Sophia in both races. Uh, we had a win uh, with Ryder. Um, but yeah, Sophia's skiing awesome. You know, it's really great to see just how well our whole team is getting together and just really uh, enjoying being around each other. It's just really neat to see. And it's a really big effort for you to go, you guys to come from the United States. You've got five boats here, I think. Uh, yeah, we got a total of seven, but uh, yeah, we have uh, four we shipped over. Uh, one team ended up buying a boat from here and then we're using two Australian boats as well. All right, cool. And um, tell us a bit, obviously, your junior skiers are going quite well. Tell us a bit about those boys. Yeah, like I said, uh, Ryder uh, Tovat came uh, came from behind, uh, skied a beautiful race last race, and uh, came up for the win right at the end. Gage Goldsmith was right there uh, battling all day, um, had a little bit of a step off and uh, got back going again today, but he's definitely uh, started second pole today and uh, came up, we're hoping we got a third out of that today with him coming from behind. And uh, looked like Ryder had a little boat trouble today, so it wasn't his, wasn't his race, but we'll be back. Certainly will be. And at the moment, great results. Tell me, Saturday's conditions to today's conditions, would your boys and girls prefer today's or Saturday's? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think uh, today's conditions suit us uh, a little better, you know. Uh, probably a little better rough water skiers than uh, the smooth and fast. Just train and they, most of these skiers train in, you know, the Catalina water all year long out in the ocean there and uh, that's their water, so a little rougher, a little better. Thanks very much, Jared. Congratulations to your team so far, and we'll catch you later in the week. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Over to you guys. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. From long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view. To the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways. To secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. And building a new way of life. Create your story on the New South Wales Central Coast.
more to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast Juice. Dear problems. Can't be dones. Impossibles. You're invited to our place. Where makers make, doers do. And problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff. We make possible. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Just down here at the waterside with Leilani Cartledge from Victoria, Australia. 
winner of race two and also race one. Congratula congratulations, Leilani. Very good race today. Yeah, thank you. It was pretty good. And the conditions today were a fair bit different to Saturday. Did they suit you better or not so? Um, I feel like I was a bit more prepared today, so I don't think the conditions were better. I think I was just mentally aware of what I needed to do. And I think that um, a bit of the chop was good, um, kind of kept everyone back a bit. Um, but yeah. Okay, team grow up, very, very accomplished team. Won a, a, lot, a couple of the times at the World Championships. They're obviously, obviously doing a great job for you. Yeah, my team's what makes it happen and I couldn't do any of it without him. And uh, what's the reason that your brother got your dad as an observer and not yourself? Um, dad and Alex fight a lot. <laughs> okay, f fair point. Okay, so 2,000 points so far, that's what we're here for. Three races out of four, you've got two races in the bag so far. Hopefully another one on Wednesday? Yes, hopefully. Okay, well, congratulations on your win today and your win on Saturday. Good luck for Wednesday, and hopefully we'll see you here again Wednesday. Thank you. Cheers, good luck. Hey guys, back down here on the waterside with Zach Armstrong, winner of the second race, Junior Boys. Well done, mate. Cheers, thank you. Tell us about your boat, Epic F2, 21 Force, Mercury 300R race marine package, or not race, marine racing package. A uh, little bit different to the other boats that are out there? Yeah, all these labs um, coming in, they're, um, the labs are amazing boats, but I'll stick with the Force any day. They're just, Rotto, the guy that makes them and their team down there, they're absolutely phenomenal. Sorting us out. Mate, it's your family boat, f actually family boat. You've got one of, it's about one of seven, is it not? <laughs> uh, one of two. We have uh, Epic, which is the one we just used. We have Epic 2, which is a Bernico. And then we have Epic F1, which is a 21 foot inboard force. What about the boat you learned to ski behind the grey net well? Oh yeah, that one's great too. That's our social boat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can't forget that one. Yes, yes, yes. Now uh, let's get back to the race, mate. Obviously today's race panned out a lot better for you. Really, really strong race today. Um, did the conditions suit you better today, or what was the difference? Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely a big fan of the rough. Um, absolutely love it, opposed to the smooth. It does slow our boats down a bit, which I like to. It becomes less of a, a boat race, more becomes of skill um, and fitness. But yeah, to, uh, after the mishap yesterday, stuff happens. That that's racing, but we came back strong today, which was great. It is great. Bagged the thousand points today. Let's hope you can drop that one the other day, get two more going, and uh, see how we go. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, congratulations. Good luck for the rest of the week, mate, and all the best. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Zach. Thank you. Okay, back to you guys in the studio.
down in the pits with Dr. Peter Gwazdecki. This is his 22nd World Water Ski Racing Championships. Congratulations, Pete. And you've also represented as a team doctor for Australia in other world championships around the water ski racing. Mate, you would have um, seen a heck of a lot of change. I, I have. It's been 44 years um, with the Australian team consecutively, and uh, I have seen a lot of changes. Um, but um, you know, yeah, yeah, it's it's been a wonderful experience, and um, and the change has been uh, in the equipment. I mean, the advancements in in um, in in the boats and and the skis. Um, but you know, the, the athletes are still the same. They're very dedicated, and um, and uh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful time. And whilst you say you're with Team Australia. We both know that you help out many, many competitors here in the pit lane. I just saw you having a big chat with the New Zealand guys. I know over the years that you've, you've helped out. Um, I don't think there's a country here that you may not have helped out. No, no, that's, that, that's, that's right. And, and it, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, m most countries over the years have asked, uh, have asked for, hel for help, and, th and that's not a problem. And, um, and I've got some wonderful... Um, wonderful contacts and, and lifelong friends in, in, in around the world because of it, particularly like in the old days in Italy and America and everywhere. So yeah, it's been a, a big family. It's become a big family. After 44 years, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's good to, to be able to help them all. And it's been rewarding. Well, even whilst I've been on the journey, I know you've been to America, New Zealand, England, Belgium, Spain, France, just to name a few. Yeah, well, we, well I'll, I'll rhyme them off for you. We had our 79 in, in England, then 81 in Lake Como, Italy, which was a beautiful part of the world. Then, then we had them in Australia in 84, Jan uh, January 84. And then um, in, uh, in 85, we went to Spain, Barcelona. And then in 87, we had them in Australia again. Then in 89, we were in, in uh, the northern lakes in Italy, which was a wonderful world, and all the beautiful glacial lakes, four races in Italy. And then in 91, we were back in Australia, up in Darwin, for the world titles. 93, we were in France, in Vichy, and with one race in the, in the, in the mountains outside of Vichy. Then in 95, we went to Belgium for the world. 97, 1997, we were back in Australia, Newcastle, and Sydney Harbour. We had a race on Sydney Harbour, which was a phenomenal event. And then in 99, we were back in Spain. This time we were down at the Costa Brava in southern Spain. And then 2001, we were in Long Beach, California, skiing next to the Queen Mary, which was a big hotel parked out in beautiful Long Beach Harbour. 2003, we were back in, um, um, I'm sorry, 2001, we were in Las Vegas in Lake Mead and, um, and Parker, Arizona. In 2003, we were at Long Beach with the with the um, the Queen Mary, which was parked, and we were racing out front of that, which was a beautiful venue. 2005, we were in England, a place called Hunstanton, and then um, 2007, we were in New Zealand in Rotorua, and Lake Taupo. We had a race uh, in Lake Taupo, and then uh, 2009, we were back in Belgium. We were skiing on the canals in Belgium in Genk, Ghent, and Viersel, and also in Antwerp. And then in uh, 2011, we were in um, Redcliffe up in uh, Brisbane, Morton Bay. 2013, we were in the Canary Islands, Tenerife, which was a wonderful world. 2015, back in New Zealand, in Wellington, which was great. And uh, then 2017, we were in Seattle, back in America. 2019, the world's before this, was we were in Vichy, France. So we were in Vichy in 1993 and again back in 2019. And of course, we had COVID in 2021 and 2023, we're back here in um, wonderful uh, Gosford after, after missing the 21, 2021 worlds because of COVID. There you go. There we go, a complete history book on the World Championships. Dr. Peter Gwazdecki from Australia, but as we said previously, has helped out many, many athletes at many, many World Championships from all over the world. Thanks very much for your time, Pete. Hopefully you don't have to do much work here this week and enjoy your time on the Central Coast in Gosford, Australia. Thanks, Troy. Over to you, back in the studio.
take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. From long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view. To the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways. To secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. And building a new way of life. Create your story on the New South Wales Central Coast. to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast juice. Dear problems, can't be dones, impossibles. You're invited to our place, where makers make, doers do, and problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff, we make possible. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on.
the Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, it's Connor here. We're with um, Epic F2, uh, one of our junior boys teams here. Uh, that is Zach Armstrong, who skis behind it. But we've got the better brother here, Will Armstrong. How are you doing today, Will? Very good. Thank you, Connor. Awesome. That's good, Will. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through everything a water skier needs, all right? So we've, what we've got here, we'll go into depth, but we've got ski, wetsuit, helmet, goggles, got some gloves and our rope here. Of course you need the boat, but we're not going to go through that right now. So what we've got here is a Cotto water ski. Um, Will, do you want to tell us a little bit about the Cotto water ski? Um, so these skis, this one's made out of carbon. On the tip of them you will see it is orange, which is for the drivers and people to see the skier when they're in the water. These beautiful DC boots made out of very soft rubber with little clips. And you also have the fin, which is underneath, that just makes the ski a little bit more stable. So we'll, we'll go through how to put these boots on. So these boots um, come apart quite easily here. So you, what, you, what people will normally do is they'll roll back the, the rubber here and they'll use, make, sometimes they use a bit of soap, sometimes they don't need to, but they'll slot their foot in here and we'll do it up, buckle everything up and then we're off to the races. Sit on the front of the deck and they'll jump in and go through the start procedure. So, um, cool thing about this ski, there's actually not that many made of them. You gotta be a select few to get one of these skis. Zach is obviously lucky enough to be on one of the cottos. Um, but from here, we'll go to the wetsuit. Brand new wizard wetsuit. Um, Darren Patterson um, just put this together over the last coming months. Uh, Will, do you wanna grab that for me? So, uh, as per new rules by IWWF, uh, they've got to be fully, fully fluoro to the, from the hips up, if you want to show it. Got the Wizard logo there, Wizard Wetsuits um, is our, the production of this wetsuit. We got, we got a rubber, a rubber backing here. This is so the, uh, the handles stick onto the back of the skier. Just some colours, you know. A lot of the skiers like to design their wetsuits, make them pretty. Um, Zach has taken a little bit of inspiration from what seems a uh, Daniel Cotto wetsuit. Um, but yeah, Australian crest there, just to, so you know he's an Australian skier. From here, we'll move to some, some helmets and some goggles. Um, Will, do you want to tell us a bit about this helmet? Um, so this helmet is orange, obviously, fluoro orange. So if you fall off or anything happens, you can 
be able to see the skier. Clips for the goggles just comes up. Have to have your name on the back. And very soft padding inside, so like head doesn't get sore. And yeah, you just put it on like this. Will's going to demonstrate how the helmets look for us. Doesn't he look good in this helmet here? And normally, the skis were ski with goggles right on top. See, the goggles help, because um, we ski at such fast speeds, the goggles helps deflect the wind out of the eye so then the skiers can actually see what they're looking at and the waves that are ahead. Because it's very important to know your surroundings and what's going to be coming up here. Just as important, is our, um, our handles and our ropes. Our ropes can range from a whole different, different sort of lengths. Um, here at the World Titles, we're restricted to 140 foot, which is about 65 meters, for those who don't understand. That's what I said. Uh, it's 240 foot. Um, here are our handles here. These ones are made by Zig Marine. Sigmarine Racing. So inside our handles is a bit of um, rubber here. Again, the rubber on rubber helps the skier hold on so it's not so tight on their hands. Um, Zach here runs a hot, what we call a hot dog. So a lot of skiers will run a bar in between the two handles. But um, here, Zach like, prefers a hot dog that will be held like this. Um, rope, I also believe, is by Z um, Zig Racing. But yeah, so this is all everything that is important to a skier, everything they need to run. So without this equipment here, the skier would not be able to compete. And obviously there's a, um, a vast range of different equipment and um, equipment and setups that people like to use. And it really does de um, depend, you know, skier to skier. Will, do you want to tell us a bit about your ski and maybe a bit about how you like how your handles are set up differently to Zach's? Um, well, my handles have a bar in them. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not as good as Zach is, so I just have the regular old bar. Um, obviously, because I'm smaller, it has to be a bit further back. Um, my wetsuit is a very old one, still wizard wetsuit. Um, it, mine wasn't, like mine is very darker like it's not as light as Zach's. And I don't have the privilege of having one of these very nice carbon Kotto skis. So I'm on the Maha. The Maha is a very nice ski, very nice to ride. Um, yeah. Well, that's good. Maybe we have to talk to Kotto about getting you one of the carbon ones. How he stitched you up with not a, with not a, a beautiful carbo, a carbon Kotto is beyond me. And you probably need to get onto that. But that's, from, uh, that's all from us, guys. This is equipment that all the skiers need. Back to you guys. So I'm in the pits with Nellie McMillan, second place getter in Women's Open. Congratulations, Nellie. That's two second places so far. Um, you're in the ice bath. You're obviously freezing. Yeah, I'm so cold. Sorry if I'm shivering. <laughs> all good, but we won't keep you long. Um, second place today, really good. Second place on Saturday. The conditions suited you a bit more today. Yeah, today was good. It started off really rough, but the wind did drop off about halfway, which uh, it's not what I was hoping for, but you deal with what you get. So. <laughs> and unfortunately today, there, there was a little mishap. Your, your spare rope decided it wanted to go for a ski as well. Yeah, my whole shot just launched out of the boat and I pretty much skied over it. And then um, old Brett had to get his hands going because my spare rope was completely fully out, standing alongside me basically. So we spent nearly three quarters of a lap trying to get the rope back in the boat. <laughs> And you lost about 30 or 40 seconds, which is no good. But anyway, that's racing. Um, you've had a good week so far. We've got two more to go. Obviously, you, you need a good result on Wednesday. Um, how do you think that's going to play out? Yeah, I'll just see what happens. I'm really happy with how our crew is blending and how I'm skiing. So I'll just go out there and have fun and try my best. And it's a big effort from you. I know people have been talking about it all week, but it is a massive effort stepping up from junior girls to women's open. You just turned 19. Um, a lot of these other girls have been doing these F1 races for a lot of time and you're not used to skiing behind a little outboard. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's all a learning experience. I'm having heaps of fun being able to do it in Australia and, you know, I'm get, getting to do it with my dad driving behind a brand new, amazing boat and with Brett observing, it's literally the perfect recipe. All right, Nell, thanks very much for your time. Good luck for the rest of the week. We'll let you get out of the ice and thanks very much again.
Hey guys, I'm just in the pits here, running at a third pace from uh, our men's F1 division, uh, Jack Coldrake. Tell us a bit about how your race went today. Are you happy? Um, what's are you going to improve on tomorrow, uh, on Monday? Sorry, and um, where, what's the aspirations for the future races? Oh, first thing I want to say is I hope Cooper Robbo's okay. Um, going down the first shoot, that first race, what I saw wasn't good, and I just hope he's okay. Um, restarted the race, 50 minutes plus a lap. Ran third to Gratz and Carter. Felt felt good the whole way. Um, Coming off selections, I was pretty underdone, so I wasn't too sure where I was at against everyone. It's been such a build-up, trying to know where everyone is and where we are, but I feel really good. We're off the front row Monday, so yeah, we'll, we'll try and go for the win on Monday and just see how we go. Yeah, look, front grid, you have a you know clean, some clean water ahead of you, you got your eye in now. Look, it takes some people a race or so to get their eye in and feel out a little bit of the competition. Were you surprised by anyone today, or was it sort of what you expected? Um, oh, everyone comes ready. I wasn't really surprised. I knew that everyone in front and behind was going to do a good job, but um, just really glad I got a great crew and great backing from my family and the Davis family. And yeah, Zig and Boyle did a great job. My trainers have prepped me as best as possible. And yeah, we've got three more races to try and get the job done. Yeah, cool. Do you want to talk a little bit about the water today? Was it, were you happy with the water? Was it your ideal water or were you looking for something slightly different? Uh, water was what I expected, pretty similar selections, obviously just some more big boats out there made it a bit rougher. Um, yeah, I liked it, I think it was good. Um, salt water is where most of our Sydney people train, so um, yeah, it's sort of softer if it makes sense. So yeah, it's pretty easy on your body, but it's good to just get out there and see what it's going to be like for the week. I can't see it changing too much, same amount of boats in each race. So. Yeah, we kind of know where we are now and um, we can sit down tonight and look at what we can do better and come back Monday. Yeah, cool. So how do you, look, we had a hectic day today with a couple couple incidents. How do you block that out and sort of stay in that sort of mentality that you're, you're out there to win, you've got to block out all the noise. What's, how, how do you do that without it affecting, you know, your skiing? Um, I guess um, most people that want to stand on a bit of timber and, and hang on pretty fast behind a boat have to be somewhat mentally strong um, so yeah it's not it's not the first time we've seen um, bad things happen like that and um, hopefully it's the last but at the end of the day it's a dangerous sport um, we all know the risks um, yeah I just just hope Cooper's okay and um, we have a safe week with no more incidents okay cool thank you Jack for talking to us and congratulations on your third place today um, I hope to see you for the rest of the week and improve that position Hey guys, I'm here with our second place um, F, uh, F1 men's today, uh, Daniel Graziano. Tell us a bit about your race today. Was it what you expected and um, how do you feel you went out there today? Yeah, mate, it's, oh, mate, it's never as you expect. You'd always like it to be different and a bit easier, but mate, we're out of the second grid. Um, mate, young boys up front there, they're, they're always going to be hard to catch. I'm not, not exactly young myself and I just used every bit of experience I had and did my best. Mate, and uh, mate, the conditions were good. They were fast, rough at the top. Mate, they got a bit of a lead on us and we come pretty hard towards the end to, to try and chase them. But, mate, they, they knew what we were doing and they did what they had to do to make sure they stayed in front and kept themselves some points. But, mate, we're really happy with the way we've gone. For the first race, it's really important to, to get a good finish in, mate. We're really happy with the finish there. Yeah, important to set a good precedent for the rest of the week. Um, but, yeah, how do you feel that your experience sort of uh, keeps up with all the young guns? A lot of them are early 20s, sort of sitting around that mid-20s. Are you... Yeah, I wouldn't say you're getting on, but but you've won a few bridges, I'm just saying. <laughs> mate, I'm definitely getting on, trust me. It's not getting any easier, but, uh, mate, to be perfectly honest, it's the experience does help, mate. You understand a lot more. You, you've been here before. The, the, the whole excitement of the world titles doesn't affect you, I don't think, as much. Yeah. Um, you've got a lot more going in life, so you just you learn how to, I believe, just handle experiences at least a bit easier now, and you've done it a few times, so you just stay calm and know how to breathe and just... In, you, you just got to know yourself, and I've been doing it that long, mate. I'm pretty well know myself, and how to how to push when not to push, and how hard to not push. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, also, was there anything that um, anything? I know you said it's something like you were surprised today, but was there anything particular, different to selections that you didn't think was going to happen, or was it really what sort of around that situation? We were, were you surprised about some of the other competitors, or was it the water that you sort of wasn't expecting? Mate, nah, it was, um, mate, everything was much what I, I expected, mate. I probably superseded myself considering I wasn't even supposed to be skiing in the first place. We did the selections for some fun and then a boy driver and a few people said it would be a good idea. They should maybe put some effort in. So for the time I've had and how hard I've trained and tried to get myself ready in the time frames I've had, mate, I'm really excited about where we finished. 
Um, mate, I expected them all to do well, and mate, particularly Cardamo. I was really disappointed to see what happened to Cooper in the first race because I knew he was going to be very tough as well. Um, so I'm really disappointed to see that he's injured. And, and he's I wish him the best and I hope he makes a good recovery. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see him for the rest of the world, which really upsets me. But, mate, um, no, nah, mate, you expect most things when you've been doing it this long. And, mate, I was just excited to be where I am, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I know. It's having your heart sort of in two places, observing for Zach Armstrong and um, the junior boys and also skiing yourself. It's something that you don't see very often because a lot of people like to dedicate themselves to one, you know, one class, one race. But how do you find that split for you? Mate, I wasn't supposed to be skiing, so <laughs> that's, that sort of got thrown in there. But I, as I said in the beginning, mate, my main commitment was to Zach, and it still is. Um, obviously, mate, that's my first commitment. Unfortunately, we got really unlucky with him this morning, which it really upset me because he's put the effort in, mate. He did a lot of hard work in that race to get to where we got to and doesn't deserve the place he's got. But, mate, that's racing, unfortunately. So we'll turn around for the next one in him. And, mate, you just got to separate the two races. And I said, I guess, been doing it as long as I have, it's... Um, you just learn how to do that, you know. Like we had a pretty bad disappointment at the first race, and with him, and he had to come back and calm yourself, and, and then set yourself apart from what just happened, and separate the two, um, and get yourself ready as best you could. Yeah, look, uh, really disappointing with uh, Zach this morning, but look, he's going to bounce back hard on Monday. There's still three races left. There's a lot, lot of time to gain. Like, you can still win three races, still three thousand points up for grabs, but you know, doesn't set a good thing, but. I, I've got, I got, I've got confidence in Zach. I'm sure you do too. But mate, full confidence in Zach, mate. I've trained with him side by side with him for the last 12 weeks, and mate, I know he's ready. I know he's strong. I know he's committed. I know he's headstrong, mate. He's as ready as any of them is going to be. And but no doubt he'll bounce back. He, he's good to go, mate. But we just got to do it the hard way again from the second grid and the outside from uh, from juniors. But mate, hey, it's never meant to be easy. So bring it on. Well. Uh, congratulations on your second place today. I will ask you one question. Shoot. What's the secret diet for a second place F1 men's? It's all the good food, you know, all the healthy stuff. Uh, donuts? <laughs> mate, I have been known to eat a few donuts. I did ask for one when I got back, but no one had one handy. So, no, mate, it is. I, mate, I'll be honest, the last um, last 12 weeks, I've been pretty disappointed in myself and my diet, which is I've had to lose a fair bit of weight to try and make it as easy as myself. So I've been pretty good. And... Um, I um, can't wait for the week to be over so I can really let loose, to be honest. <laughs> I just about starved myself and luckily I've got a wife who eats like a rabbit, so it really helps me out. couple cookies, couple donuts, but that's it from us. Thank you, Grouts, again. Thanks, Back to you guys. Hi, guys. I'm here at the ramp with our winner of F1 Men's today, Carter Robertson. How are you feeling after such a dominant win today? Yeah, good. Um, it's pretty good. Tough water. You know, Superman come home strong at the end, so it's always nice to get the win. Look... Tough water, you say, but is that sort of your type of water or would you like it slightly different? I know you probably excel in that sort of rough rough situation. Are you a fan of sloppy water or...? Yeah, uh, a little bit rougher would have been nice. This wind sort of died off in the second half, but, you know, you can't always help that. So. Exactly. You can't have what we all want, but look, that was unreal. You just took off, l sort of left the, the rest of them in the dust, but what was your... What were you thinking out there? What was... Was there a point where you're like, all right, we're here, how am I gonna, how am I just gonna seal the deal in? Uh, yeah, sort of about 40 minutes in, looked at me watching, it was 10 to go, and I saw, saw Superman coming, they're always a good team, they're experienced, they finish strong, so I thought, you know, you just gotta stay up and stay in front and get the job done. Yeah, exactly, that, it was awesome to see, um, and especially after some, some tough circumstances to, you know, to begin with, but look, you come away with it strong, and look, we're all pretty, pretty proud of you here from Australia. Okay. About the, thank, thank you, you. cheers. Enjoy. Back to Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. from long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view to the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways to secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation.
create a story on the New South Wales Central Coast. to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast juice. Dear Problems, Can't Be Dones, Impossibles. You're invited to our place, where makers make, doers do, and problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff, we make possible. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
G'day, down here at Drifter's Wharf with Daniel Graziano. Second place in our first race on Saturday, mate. Obviously, very, very good result. Congratulations to you. This is about your fifth Worlds in a row, I think. How's today going to pan out? Mate, a um, bit, bit, bit different in conditions. I was just out there in juniors, mate. It's a little bit rough. About the same roughness, but just blowing a different angle. Flying from the south a bit, straight down the course. But uh, we'll slow things up a bit and probably a bit harder. But, um, mate, we'll just see. I don't know. They're young blokes. I keep saying the young blokes are fit. They're, they're young. They're full of energy, mate. That's, they're all going to be hard to beat now. And we just have to go out and do our best and hope for the best. Mate, you're a little bit different to some of the other schools out there in men's open in the fact that you also observe in juniors. Well, mate, yeah, unfortunately, I'd agreed to ski to observe for juniors and do that before I actually decided to ski the world. And the ski in the world sort of come up out of uh, a bit of just running and having a bit of fun and turned out we went all right, so we decided to do it. Yeah, well, mate, that's great news. From a, a long history of water ski races, you've got your sister, you used to compete in the world, your brother, now you. Uh, amazing, mate. Mate, yeah, it's been a family. I'm the youngest of the four of us, so I'm the last one in line, unfortunately, of our immediate family. But, um, yeah, mate, it's, I had a lot to learn off of with those two and, and learned a lot from them. Um, they were a big inspiration towards my racing and really helped me in, in, in mine and getting to where I've got to, that's for sure. And obviously your brother's great mates with Rollos and your sister married into the Robertson family. That's got an influence as well. Mate, I, I, I'm lucky enough to be around them for a couple of their campaigns as well. It, it, mate, it all has paid off and it's really made a big difference to my racing, to be honest. All right, mate, from me to you, congratulations, good luck. I'd have to say you're one of the crowd favourites out there, given the fact that you're in excess of footy and some of the only other blokes are about 22. Yeah, mate, it's, yeah, it's not getting easy, but you know what, I'm having a hell of a fun doing it, and that's why I do it, so. Congratulations, mate, and good luck. Thank you, Chris. Back to you guys in the studio. I'm down on the wharf with Mitch Horan from Team New Zealand, boat number 124, Bernico Racing. Welcome, Mitch. Yeah, thanks for having me. Mate, race two today, had a pretty good run the other day, got around the course with no mishaps. How'd you end up in the end? Uh, we come sixth in the end, and I think just consistency and, you know, as you said, no mishaps, it's, it's a key ingredient to doing well at a World Championships. It is. You've, uh, you, you've had plenty of experience. How many worlds is this for you? Uh, this is number three. Number three, and your boat driver, Tommy Anthony McAnally, one of our Mercury Marine dealers. So he, thanks to him for and Mercury Marine from Water Sports Marine for putting this together. And obviously he's very experienced. I remember he f campaigning in his first World Championships back in 2003. Yeah, he's a very experienced driver. Um, does a lot over here, and yeah, he's, as you said, done a few worlds. Uh, big thanks to him. He's a can pedal a boat. Uh, loves loves the boy lines. So yeah, we'll be looking to. Uh, do what we can out there today, a little bit of a southerly, uh, so hopefully uh, you know, it makes a bit more of an even playing field out there. You looking forward to the rough water, mate? I, I look back to this and it, the water conditions look very similar to Lake Rotorua back in, uh, back in New Zealand. Yeah, it can be a little bit of a breeze out there, um, so yeah, no, looking forward to it. Okay, mate, good luck, thanks for your time, and good luck for the rest of the week. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, we are inside the 15, 14 and a half minutes to the start. 
We'll run through the grids and polls, Connor. You want to start us off? Mitchell, I'm excited. I'm looking at this um, F1 men's um, class, and look, there's some. It's going to be close. There's uh, so many possible winners. First off, we got in grid one, pole one, Team 50 F1. Brett Wiseman will do the driving. Evan Woodridge doing the observing, and Carter Robbo from Australia, also known Carter Robinson from Australia, is doing the skiing. Grid one, pole two from Superman Racing. Darren Maguire is doing the driving. Stephen Robinson doing the observing. And Daniel Graziano is skiing from Australia. Grid one, pole three, Coldy's F1. Jason Wormsley doing the driving. Kevin Boyland, Kevin Boylan doing the observing. And Jack Coldrake is a wild card for Australia. Grid one, pole four, Sapphire. Tim Pickford doing the driving. Brian Griffin doing the observing. And Lachlan Nix from Australia. Strike F1. David McMillan is doing the driving. And Braden Jamison is doing the observing. And Brock McMillan is a wild card for Australia. Grid 2, pole 1. Strike Force. Jared Gully doing the driving. Mike King doing the observing. And Mason Goldsmith from the USA doing the skiing. Snappy 377 is in grid 2, pole 2. Carl Johnson doing the driving. Daniel Norman doing the observing. And Ray Norman didn't is from America doing the skiing. Grid 2, pole 3, Axian, Bart Smets doing the driving, Darren Dreisen doing the observing, and Tim Leeson is would be doing the skiing, but is out, sorry, from Belgium. Diamond Bulls, I believe I saw out there. Um, grid 2, pole 4, Frank Mersman doing the driving, Nico Destoop doing the observing, and Steven Van Gaveren for skiing for Belgium. Grid 2.5 is out. That is Supernova F1 with Cooper Robinson. We do, we do have an update on Cooper Robinson. He was involved in a fall uh, yesterday. He's up. He's walking around. He's in great spirits. Uh, he's getting an MRI scan today just to um, confirm a couple of things and, and fully clear him. But um, he, obviously he's a bit sore. But um, yeah, he's fine. He's walking around. We don't have any news up here uh, from Axion Skier, Tim Leesman's from Bel Belgium, but really sad to see him not be able to continue racing. Uh, one, one of my picks, actually, I was uh, excited to see both Tim Leesman's and Stephen Van Gaveren on Saturday, but look, Stephen's pumped and racing to ski today. I saw Diamond Bulls heading out there, so hopefully he can have a good run. In, the, uh, in F1 men, um, we've had a slight drama with Coldy's F1, and they have had a boat swap for Tempered. Okay. okay. So when we look for Jack Coldrake for the wild card for Australia, we'll look for Tempered there. You want to read us the F2 men's? Oh, Formula 2 men's. Grid 1, pole 1. Oh, sorry. Grid 3, pole 1. Revenge F2. Dylan Cuff, Jack Batyer, and Aiden Cuff. Grid 3, pole 2. The Dragon, Matt Smith, Ben Casey, and Brendan Tinswell. Grid 3, pole 3. Speed Lab, Darren Hitchcock, Russell Hitchcock, Samuel McKenzie. Grid 3, pole 4, Agent 86, Tony Rowe, Sam Perry, and Jake Clancy, a wild card. Uh, grid 3, pole 5, Cause and Glamour, Wayne Taylor, Shane Henderson, and Kyle Taylor from New Zealand. Grid 3, pole 6, Bernico Racing, Anthony McAnally, Gene Hollands, and Mitchell Horan from New Zealand. Grid 4, grid four pole 1, Boat 73, Stevie Davis, Daryl Weatherford, and Ty Kashir from the USA. Grid 4, pole 2, Snappy 177. Very busy boat this week. Kyle Lankin, Tom Kelm, and Jason Davison from the USA. Grid 4, pole 3, 1648 F2, Cameron Monaghan, Brett Williamson, and Liam Ford, who's a wild card from Australia. Grid 4, pole 4, the, pot, the Prodigy, Brad Canning, Simon Smith, and Nick Butler from Great Britain. Grid 4, pole 5, Ice Ice Baby, Guido DeVos, Christelle Spiersons, and Mike. I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce we'll that. Shot that. We'll shut that with the, from Belgium. Uh, grid 5, pole 1, enough said. Darren Kirkland, Jason Rockley, and Rory Kirkland. Grid 5, pole 2, boat 373, Mike Hedges, uh, Jeff Barras, and Sean Davison from the USA. Grid 5, pole 3, F2 Wild, Leonard, Leonard Frederick, Dwayne Grubbs, and Levi Frederick from the USA. Grid 4, Pole 5, Grow Up F2, Alex Hanley, Jason Cartledge, and Cameron Nix from Australia. Grid 5, Pole 5, Lucifer uh, with Stacey Mello, Paul Skipper, and Max Duckworth from New Zealand. 
Woo, that's a hot card. What can I say? Uh, I'm going to run over a couple of names that I that I want us to look up, uh, look out for. First and foremost, two. If we go up the list here, Cameron Next didn't have a great day yesterday, but look. He, it's something special out there, so we keep an eye out from here what he can do from the fifth grid. As I walk up the list here, I got Liam Ford, the speed rig. Let's see what he can do out there. Also, Jason Davison from USA. Um, I'm a big fan of him. I'll see, we'll see how he goes today. Mitchell Horan, um, almost Australian resident at this point, spends heaps of time over here. Um, he's from New Zealand. Uh, as we look at Big Sam McKenzie, my favourite F2 skier. That's just by looks, not by skiing ability. Samuel McKenzie skiing for the Redheads as well, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but look, this is a hot field. Cuffy be hard to beat. Um, Stump was right on his tail yesterday. So Stump being Brendan Tidswell, sorry for those who don't know, Brendan Tidswell was right on um, Aiden Cuff's tail yesterday. But we see, uh, excited to see what's happening there. Um, F1, what can I say, Carter Robertson? put on a performance yesterday that was, you know, exceptional to see. Daniel Graziano really keeping it up with the young with the young boy right there. Carter coming straight out of juniors and Grats on his, oh, can't tell you what world. I won't give you a number, but I, I, it's up there. Look, Grats is skiing awesome right now too. And Carter skiing out of his skin. I want to go down a little bit here. I am a massive fan of Stephen Van Gaveren. He, he did real well at Vichy. And I, I, I want to see how he goes today. Diamond Bulls had a little bit of mishap yesterday. Hopefully they've got that sort of zoned in. That's been with Frank Mesman and Nico Du Stoop. So I'm really um, excited to see how Stephen Van Gaveren can pull it out today. Look, I'm going to throw it out there. I think Lockie Nix, we've seen what this boy can do um, when he has a bad day. <sighs> Before the last Worlds in Vichy, he had uh, a leg injury and then came back and won F2. And then uh, just last year, had a very, very serious spinal injury, had surgery and come back in Australia and won Southern 80 outright for the second time in a row. Look, I think I, I think I may have glazed over him. Lachlan Nix, to come back from what he did to his back at Catalina last year is more than remarkable. To be skiing here and be not only just in the world, but a top contender is, is crazy. Yeah, so look... If you're asking me, it looks like it might have smoothed off a little bit. So, so for someone like Lachlan Nix or Daniel Graziano, who were, you know, one of the fastest men in the world, if we're talking smooth water, it'll be interesting to see what they can pull pull out. Carter Robson, very good rough, red, rough water skier. Stephen Van Gaveren, a diamond race, what can I say? Rough water is his territory. We look up the list, Ray Norman, uh, race in Normandy, like it's... We've got so many good, so much talent in this pool here, it'll be... It's, it's almost impossible to pick. I believe so too. Um, a couple of uh, grow up F2, a fall yesterday, same as his brother, you know, just has that fight in him to, to get back after a bad day, so to speak. How many broken bones in the last month? Between the two of them, <laughs> probably one of each. Gosh, we are six minutes away from the start, ladies and gentlemen. You can look on the ski here, you can see uh, on the screen, sorry, Daniel Graziano preparing, Samuel McKenzie also standing up, having a good stretch. Snappy 177, that's Jason Davison from the USA, big fan of his. Diamond Bull there, that's Stephen Van Gaveren. Tempered, that is Jack Coldrake, wildcard wild for Australia. Also had a great run yesterday. Um, we got Sam McKenzie, redhead and um, self pronounced sex symbol I was pretty sure he said um, but just you know pit talk what can I say um, di uh, didn't get to catch up with speed lab but um, hopefully nothing was wrong it happened they just got caught up in that juniors race but yeah, no boat dramas they're ready to go for this one um, game plans everything changes when uh, you're over an hour Connor um, it's it's a long time a lot can be achieved in 30 seconds, but a lot can also be achieved in an hour. Well, there's a, I tell you what, the distance is a lot, a lot harder to last for. I can tell you that an hour is not fun, well, except you're a, if you're a madman. Um, look, it's there's a lot of strategy here. It's not a 30-minute sprint like we were just sitting there before. It's an hour-long marathon, pretty much. You can play you can, you can play this very differently. We've 
it depends on who you're talking about here. So if we look at the couple of names, we know some are going to go out really hard at the start and just try to stay in front. We know a couple are going to try and jump in the wash and see what they can do from there, wait for it to rough up a little bit. But there are some that are just going to, you know, do whatever. But we're here. Day two. Exactly. It's going to be wild. We cannot thank our, enough our boy Chuck, who's been throwing a couple of tips across our way. Oh, Chucky. Chucky, the legend. Thanks, Chuck. But we cannot thank enough uh, Mercury Marine, Bay City Marine, Water Sports Marine, TR Marine, Race Marine, and Brisbane Marine, who have gone boldly and taken every opportunity to bring you the action you're seeing in front of you. We're getting great comments about how good the, uh, the quality of this live stream is and the footage that we're getting. We, we believe we may have some onboard cameras, hopefully, for this one, but we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes if it, if, it, if it works. Look, we also want to thank um, the likes of uh, Bendigo Bank Photo Competition. Support from Bendigo Bank and Central Coast Francis has just been phenomenal. Cash prizes for the best amateur photograph, photographs that are taken. Look, get in on it. Get, Get the camera out, get the phone out, zoom in, see what you can get. Maybe you might win a cash prize. Post so to social media with the hashtag World Water Ski, Cha World Water Ski Championships, hashtag Bendigo Bank, hashtag Better Big Bank, hashtag We're a Community. What's better than tax time, Connor? Getting money from the bank. Exactly, 500, 300, and 100 dollar account prizes. We also, three minutes away from the start, Connor. Three minutes and it's all on. Look, we want to thank one more, a Drifters Wharf. It's a home of our hospitality, where our corporate boxes are, you know, where the presentation are, and most importantly, Mitch, where the beers are. Look, taking vision line straight through the venue, you can sit on the balcony and watch the entire race. Shout out to all the guests and team at Drifters enjoying all the action. Look, I also want to touch on one thing, something that's cool that some of us in the, here in Australia don't see. Look, America, they get their big boats, but the Belgian boats, there is nothing better than a big Belgian boat. Look, I'm really sad not to see Axion in today. I, I just love the cutoff front. And the amount of water that these things fill, they could, you could fill a small spa. Exactly, a small spa, a small pool. Axion, is, is, um, is it a 25 or a 26? I'm pretty sure it's a 25 cut down so what they can fit the rules. What Whatever it is, they had to cut the nose off. Yeah, whatever it is, they had to cut their nose off. I don't know the exact, but how cool is that? I know Diamond Bulls have a big one, but they've got their, their normal 23 here, if I'm correct. Look, I, I like to think I know what's going on, but Stephen McGavran, I'll say his name again. I'm keen. Belgium for the win. It's still fast, too, for such a big boat. Oh, yeah. Powered by the big 1350 Mercury uh, machines. Big thank you to Mercury again, but you can't beat them for... The package, the speed, horsepower, and reliability, there's nothing better. Look, we're under a minute and a half now to our start here. Get excited, folks. This is a men's race, F1 and F2. Yesterday was mayhem, as we saw. The first the first lap is always the most intense. <laughs> it's definitely the most nerve-wracking, Mitch. Um, we're... We'll, uh, we'll keep track and see who gets the top turn first this time. Yeah, top turn, come around the first corner. It's that first bump that you've got to be worried about. Well, it's where I pick the most. So they come around the corner, and where our start area is situated, the waves sort of run straight through the corner. And if you've been on a ski, you know, going through waves while you're trying to lean over at 100 mile an hour, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not. not at it's all. Not. Quite often the question is, why am I doing this? Yeah, yeah, you'll be, you be out there and you'll say, this isn't safe, this isn't fun, and we're five seconds from the 30 seconds. They're about to jump in, Sapphire way in front, skis are in, Jack Coldrake in a little early there, but Daniel Graziano also in, Carter Robinson in, Lockie Nick's in, and Brock McMillan is in. Look, we're, we're going to wait to see who gets the jump on the start here. It's the first lap. It's, uh, mo it's I would say it's just second and most exciting from the last lap. Sapphire, huge lead, like huge start, right on the uh, on yeah, the right line. On the boy there. Perfect, and we've go, we go. F1 men's is away. Jack Holdrake hard out of the gate. Lockie Nick's slow to step on it. Daniel Graziano halfway down the rope. Carter Robinson doesn't seem to be picking up pace. Slowly going back. Same with Strike F1. Tempered and Sapphire. That is Lachlan Nix and Jack Coldrake absolutely hauling in front. 
I can see Jack Coldrake's got the inside line. Carter Robinson is coming up on him a little bit there. Carter Robinson is going to have a massive advantage through the, the first turn. He's gonna, probably going to come out in front as he pulls up a little bit there on can, Tempered, which is Jack Coldrake. I think we can say that, Car uh, that Jack Coldrake is going to be a clear winner to the top turn here. Carter Robinson inside line. Let's watch them when they come out here. Carter Robinson will be a little bit further than Jack, but on the exit, Carter will be well in front. Depending on who you ask, first of the top turn is the winner. So, <laughs> look, we just had a start from our second grid, which is Mason Goldsmith, Ray and Norman, and Tim Liss. Oh, Tim Liss is not there, sorry. And Stephen Van Gaveren. Stephen Van Gaveren, your favourite. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the Belgians. And our F2 has gone away. Grid 3 has taken off Aiden Cuff, Brandon Tiswell, Samuel McKenzie, Jake Clancy, and Kyle Taylor, oh, and sorry, and Mitchell Horan. Wow. Aiden Cuff hugging, hugging pole one. They're going to stick to pole one, I believe, and try and get the shorter run for these first couple of smooth laps. Look, these men are the top of the game. They're going to hold these boats pretty much flat the whole way. So any advantage possible is an advantage that is worth doing. Holding that inside line is almost as important. As we can see, Carter Robertson has come out of the top turn in the lead, just like suspected. Big ups from Evan Wildridge observing for Carter Robinson. Team 50 in front, that is Carter Robinson. Co um, tempered slowly behind, that is Jack Coldrake. Every observer giving up, pumping them up, let's go. And I'm pretty sure that is everyone away now. All right, here we go, just past the finish line. Carter Robinson is in front. Carter Robinson in the lead. Jack Coldrake, close second. Lachlan Nix in third. How will that turn out after the corner? Gratz is, uh, Daniel Graziano holding in them all tight. The, uh, Experience shining through. Here comes Brock McMillan also into the bottom corner. Slight drop back from Brock McMillan at the end of the first lap. He did have the outside pole there. Look how rough it is from the start area on this first thing. That is um, Lachlan Nix, I believe, on screen. We're just having a look at Carter Robertson out in Superman front. Superman jumping into Carter's wash, picking the smart line. Playing the strategic play. Right, here we go. That is good footage from Graziano. Um, we can see there, Superman, veteran. Here we go, we've got some boats coming. Oh, one is pulled off to the side. There is a problem with, that looks like grow up. Is that grow up? Oh, I think it is. There's an issue with grow up. That is an issue for Cameron Nix. I repeat, Cameron Nix is off the, the course. They're pulling in, something must be wrong. I repeat, ca something wrong is with Cameron Nix. Not a skier fallen, possibly a boat problem. As you see here, they'll go back and get them. We'll see if they're going to sort this out. That is a slow pull, and there must be. It could be. This could be. This would be detrimental for Con for Cameron Nix because there's only four races. You drop your worst race, and he's he can't drop two. Can't drop two. He needs to finish today to get some points on the board. All right, we're having some good vision of Snappy 377, which is racing Norman, and he's coming right next to Speed Lab, which is Samuel McKenzie. Hottest ski racer out. Might be a little bit biased there. But, however, we've also got Jake Clancy on the inside as well as... Agent 86. You can see them just stuck on the inside pole there. I spoke to Tony Rowe before the race. He actually built and made that boat himself, the hull. Yeah. Sonic boats, absolutely unreal. Look, we're looking at some of the top F2 contenders right here. Aiden Cuff. Aiden Cuff. That... Stump. We had a great battle from these two yesterday. I think we're going to see an, a whole hour-long battle again. Folks, you've got to tune in for this race because it will be there. they will be next to each other from start to finish. It is remarkable what these two men can do. We just had some good image there of the speed rig himself, Liam Ford, representing speed rigs everywhere. He's having a look over the left, see him? Looking at the neighbour. Here we go, we've got Lucifer coming, which is um, Mac du Max Duxworth, Dux Duxworth, sorry. Had a really good run yesterday until some dramas, but we're looking at awesome footage here of Sapphire, that is Lachlan Nix. Sapphire, Lachlan Nix is having some awesome run out there. Bit of speed, right off Jack Coldrake behind Tempered. It's going to be a great chase between them two. Lockie Nix is, a, I'd say, a faster skier. Oh no, catastrophic for the team of Grow Up and Cameron Nix. That is, that, it seems like they're pulling out of the race, they're taking helmets off. Absolutely gut-wrenching for that Cameron Nix, crushing. coming in as a top favourite from Australia. Well, truly the favourite. And not even finishing a race. Unfortunately, that will 
That will do Cameron Nix for the whole series. Heart goes out to Cameron Nix and the rest of them. That is just that's horrible. The poor guy, he fell yesterday towards the end and then now he's, fought, he, he's, he's had to exit the race at the start. Stephen McGavin having an absolute crack out there as long as, as, as well as Team USA. Hands out in front. Uh, what a legend. I could not do that. Levi Frederick, you are a freak. Well, I honestly do not know how one can do that for an hour. That is a true credit to some of the Americans out there. We're looking, having a bit of pull up, trying to take some weight off the arms. If, anyone, if anyone watched the New Zealand Bridge to Bridge, I believe this is now called the Harry Galea. <laughs> Harry Galea, take notes. You couldn't do it for a straight. This guy can do it for an hour. Levi Frederick, you are a champion. We're going to look at some splits here. We're going to look first at um, Men's F1. That's Team 50 in the lead. Superman, which is Team 50, sorry, is Carter Robertson. He's in the lead. Uh, Daniel Graziano, second place, five seconds behind. Jack Coldrake, nine seconds behind. That That is behind Team of Tempered. Sapphire, which is Lachlan Nix, is 11 seconds behind them. And then from then on, Brock McMillan, 34 seconds behind. Wow, and actually, if we look at the splits here, the Dragon, which is Brendan Tiswell, he's up in the mix with the F1 men's, even though he's in Formula 2 men. He's, um, for our F2 division, Brendan Tiswell is in the lead, and four seconds behind is Aiden Cuff, and then another six seconds behind that is the hottest man in ski racing, Samuel McKenzie. We maintain, it, maintain our one, two, and three, the same as yesterday for F2 men. Listen to the roar of the boats out there through the... Agent 86. Agent 86. That is Jake Clancy, Agent 86. We're the same as yesterday. One, two, three, and four, all from Australia, maintaining first, second, third, and fourth. Revenge F2 in first, the Dragon in second, Speed Lab in third, Agent 86 in boat number four. Awesome vision here from the drone. I believe that's Brock McMillan behind Strike F1. Taking the wide lane, looking for the better water. Also, we've got Ice Ice Baby. I had a chat to this Bel uh, to the to Belgians here. That is, no, wrong one. Mike Mushot. I'm going to put to that name. I'm sorry. I had a great chat to him at the opening ceremony. He was really keen to race today. Having a couple beers, which I thought was a little bit questionable a week before the um, World Championships. But look, they look like they're having a great time out here. Well, we've got a cluster of boats heading into the top turn here. That would be Carter Robinson, uh, Daniel Graziano, Liam Ford, to name a few. We'll have a, we'll have a better look when we get a little bit closer. This top in. turn is looking busy, Connor. Very busy. And look at that top turn. See, right on the apex is where oh, this washing machine of wash is just congregated in, just making it so difficult for you the boys see, out there. You can see how much movement just on the course boat in the middle is copping it. Once those waves work, they work their way to the outside, it's, it, it's, it's going to get tough. Uh, we've got some good vision of Jack Coldrake behind Tempered here. Absolutely sensational skiing out there today. I believe on the inside that is Daniel Graziano doing it tough down the middle. Trying to get some extra, um, cut the distance a little bit. We'll see if it pays off for him. Got Diamond Balls on the outside. Awesome boat um, driven by Frank. Frank's a heaps of boats. Massive contender back in the Belgian Sea. Diamond Ball race wins like you wouldn't believe. We've got a great battle here going on, Connor, between Snappy 377, Lucifer and the Prodigy, I believe. Lucifer, which is a Max Duthworth, had an awesome run yesterday, except Look at the movement he had, had a fall or something or other. I don't really know, but he's, he's someone to watch out for. All right, here we're about to get some more splits as they come through. Carter Robinson leading the field by a good distance here. Closely followed by Daniel Graziano. It must have paid off that inside line for a bit. Connor, we've currently got 11 seconds. 11 seconds between first and fourth place. There's not much to play with. Yeah, look, um, we've got Carter Robertson in the lead. Uh, we've got Daniel Graziano five seconds behind Carter Robertson and 12 seconds behind Carter Robertson is Lachlan Nix behind the team of Saf Sapphire. And then 13 seconds behind in fourth position is Coldy's F1. That is Jack Coldrake doing the skiing. 
currently um, Australian, all Australian skiers, but look, as it roughs up, the likes of the Belgian skiers are going to absolutely give them a run for their money. Look, the Diamond Race is one of the toughest races in the world. Definitely one of the roughest, I've got to tell you that. Your man, Stephen Van Garberen. My man. He's going to come through. Okay? My boy. He's got, you know, he's got a bit of an advantage. He gets to look at the guys in front of him and then the boats in front. It's up to them to, to, to track, you know, how how much room do we have? As long as he, if he can maintain a 30 second gap from first place and then to make a charge towards the end, he could just snap the wind. Look, we saw that from, um, we saw that yesterday in Junior Boys with Ryder. Absolutely. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, we saw that from Ryder just st sticking in the back, sticking in the back, and then bang, bang, out in front, win. Snaps the win. Snappy. Snappy. <laughs> snappy, snappy. Pun fully intended, ladies and gentlemen. Pun fully intended. All right, we're looking at the Steven top Gavin turn, Gavin drifter's Gavin. turn here. Seen Van Gavin behind Diamond Bulls. Having a great run out there, following a little bit of a wash there. Ice, ice, baby. Here comes Mike Munchert from Belgium. As we can see, the, the lovely Drifter's Wharf, awesome feed, great, actually fantastic bar, got to say. The bar there, sensational. As you can see down the Drifter's turn here now, Connor, it's just starting to rough up just as much as the top turn. As you see Dragon taking in pole one, Revenge Jeff two in pole two. And you'll, as you'll see, Dragon will come out again in front. That's, there's still an advantage in that inside line. We got My, uh, we got Mason Goldsmith from the USA doing real, uh, doing a, uh, Doing really well behind Strike Force. Jared Gully, Gully with a lot of experience with world races, um, being towing his son, um, Ben Gully, winning world titles. Multiple. Samuel McKenzie, Agent 86, is actually making room in third place. See, see speed lab's just dropping back slightly. Well, we have a boat off. I believe that is a. a, a uh, it appears to be Snappy 177, uh, Jason Davison, a guy I picked earlier. We can't really see very well in the live footage, but we will get you with anything that we can confirm. Awesome footage here from um, Sapphire Racing with Lachlan Nix behind on the back. Lachlan How Nix. good is this live stream? Lachlan Nix has got a lot to prove today, and that's, you know, just as we spoke before, you can see that he's not falling back too much. He's maintaining his pace behind Jack Coldrake. Look, we've got an awesome image here. That's, I believe that's enough set. One of our Great Britain skiers, that would be um, Rory Kirkland. Darren Kirkland doing the driving and observing would be uh, Jason Brockley. Uh, now we've, we've just switched over to position to Brock McMillan. Brand new boat, Strike F1. How good does it look? They seem to have packed the whole shot pro correctly this time in this race. Yeah, look, I think they've, they've clipped it on and put enough tape to hold the boat together just on the whole shot. We can confirm there is a 13 gap between Agent 86 and uh, Speed Lab for third and fourth. Some awesome footage we got here from the drone. Just we can see the way, you know, the different lines that the driver is choosing going around that outside. It's a long, lot longer going pole, maybe six or seven on the outside of these um, of these corners, but it's just so much smoother. You can you can see it on the screen. Look. It, it, it's really, it, it is about choosing that strategic play. Currently watching Diamond Bulls, um, Stephen Van Gaveren coming into the bottom, Drifter's corner here. Having a great run. Look how much water it's pushing. Here we go, a bit of F2 Look action. Look at the movement on these boats. The Gangelic's roughing up now. The Dragon with Brendan Tidswell, he looks comfortable compared to the boat, doesn't he? Yeah, it looks, he looks like he's having a great time. However, uh, Matthew Smith and Ben Casey probably not having the best time in that boat. <laughs> We've also got a little bit of action from Jake Clancy behind Agent 86, a good favourite young kid too. He's only 18. He's, he's skiing out of his skin right now. I, I couldn't be prouder. As we move back into fourth place, Samuel McKenzie, he's going to try and stick with Agent 86 as much as he can, but there is a fair, gra fair gap growing. Look, we've got some of the young boys out here. Samuel McKenzie and, both, and Jake Clancy are both only 18. Look, they've got so many more years ahead and it's so it's so good to see them so competitive so early on in their careers. Darren Hitchcock would have the nose of that boat filled with water, trimmed in, trying to give Samuel McKenzie the best ride that he can. A little look over from Samuel. Well, the biceps on that. <laughs> Menace. All right, cool. So we got... 
Uh, you can't actually see on the live stream now, but we have Grow Up. Um, Grow Up, the team of Grow Up with Cameron Nix from Australia slowly idling back again. Heart goes out to that team. I know how much preparation is involved in this in this um, campaign, and just to see it all go away in two races is, is gut wrenching. Well, this is this is the top of our sport. This is the world titles, the men's, and the amount of time and money and, and time off work and fitness, time in the gym, it's not forgiving. supplements and everything. That's uh, our heart goes out to those guys. We know we know how much these guys all put in. Well, we're looking now at Brock McMillan behind Strike F1. Push it, some water the big boy. Um, fit with a, what would, what would they say? If you wanna, I would say in another metric of um, measuring water, but I'd say a fair few tons of water is in that boat. Just pushing, pushing. <laughs> we're just past the 16 minute mark, guys. So that's um, a quarter of our race through. Can update you on a little bit of splits now after just watching Brock McMillan doing some superb skiing here. Um, Team 50 still in the lead, Carter Robinson dominating the sport right now. Superman Racing, that is Daniel Graziano doing a great job, five seconds behind, keeping, him on, keeping Carter honest. Look, what we've got to wait for is that last 15. I talk, I talk about the last 15, I tell you, Graz has got the stamina. Coldy's F1, which is now tempered, which is Jack Coldrake doing the skiing, is 13 per sec seconds behind Carter Robson. Absolutely having a great run right now. Top three are Australian skiers currently. Sapphire Racing, which is Lachlan Nix, is 13 seconds. You can see how close it is, Mitchell. It is just fantastic. Strike F1 is a, a minute and eight seconds behind the rest of the pack, but that's. A fair gap, and Diamond Bulls has just come in for a split two, a minute 30 for Stephen Van Gaveren, um, behind the leader of Carter Robinson. So we'll give you an update on F2 when they come through our split line. A minute gap between first and fifth. There's still 45 minutes roughly to go. A lot Anything can, can change. Look, a lot of people like to come out a lot harder than um, than others. Some people like to settle in. Look, it, 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 we'll know in about half an hour what's going to happen and how crazy this thing's going to get. So just coming through our splits, now we've got the Dragon has come through as our leader. That is Brendan Tiswell, stuntman, has come in winning. Closely followed by Revenge F2, that is Aiden Cuff doing the skiing. And the young gun, Agent 86, which is Jake Clancy, is in third. He is, there is um, quick mass here. There is only nine seconds between first and third. That is just crazy. These boys, the top three boys in F2 are actually beating Diamond Bulls, which is Steven Van Gaveren in our splits now, which is pretty phenomenal. Uh, we got Speed Lab is running in fourth. There, he's current, Samuel McKenzie is currently sitting behind the stump, which is Brenda Tiswell by about 30 seconds. Strike Force also coming through our our split times. He's two minutes and 17 seconds behind the leader of Carter Robinson. Strike Force is Mason Goldsmith from the USA. Give you an update on everyone else. Cause and Glamour. Cause and Glamour is Kyle Taylor from New Zealand. He is currently quick mass a minute behind um, Stump is sitting in fifth currently, so awesome from the New Zealander guys there. We've also got Bernico Racing, which are another New Zealand boat, which is Mitchell Horan, almost a resident at, uh, resident over here. He is a minute and 15 seconds behind the leader of Brendan Sidswell. Awesome racing we got come, going up here. I'll keep you updated with some of the, some of our our splits here, but look, there's a lot of boats in F2, a lot of potential winners, and I, I wouldn't count anybody out right now to not, to not be able to pull, it, pull, pull something out of the fire. <laughs> the course is splitting up, the boats are splitting up, Connor. We're just about to tick over the 20-minute the mark, which is one-third of the way through this hour-long race. <coughs> Look. Hands, it, hands out in front. Look at his back. Here we go. Levi... Frederick. Levi Frederick, sorry for the stunner there. Levi Frederick from the USA, absolute menace on the ski, hands in front. This boat here used to be called F, no, it still is called F2 Wild actually. They just wax, bought it over here, wax some America stickers over it. I think it could be a bit of an omen that's green and gold up the front. 
Look, my arms are hurting just watching Levi. And I don't know about yours. And my back uh, what, and my legs. What I can say is, look at the biceps on the bike. What? That is... <laughs> no need to go to the gym here when you just run and get hands in front for an hour. No thanks. He's a better man than I am. Now, look, we've got some awesome... Awesome footage here right now of the drone stuff. I believe we're looking at Carter Robinson coming out of the bottom corner. Absolute just... Superman, not just far behind. Not far behind. It's so close. Daniel Graziano is five seconds behind. Five seconds, I'm telling you, in this sport is not long at all. From what we can see, it looks like Superman's getting ready to take an inside line. I believe their game plan may be sit the first half an hour in there and then make a charge. Hopefully we'll get to see a battle between these two in a number of minutes. Look, when we talk experience, we, can, we can't talk past Gratz. Gratz has won. Now, I wish I knew how many bridges he's won, but he's won a lot. He's got records. He's got... In, in, in classic racing, river racing, there's not there's no one really better than Daniel Graziano. No, he's bleached our sport for a number of years. He's way older than me. <laughs> I told him yesterday, I don't want to say he's getting on, but he's won a few a few races in his time. Might be a tell that. Here we go, we've got some awesome footage of Snappy. I'd love to say which one it is so I can tell you which skier it is. Lucifer at the back with Max Duckworth. Alright, I got some more um, I got some more splits here. Bernico Racing is um, currently a minute and that's not good. A minute and 25 seconds behind the leader of Brendan Sub. Bernico Racing is look here. We Mitchell can see Warren. Carter Robertson way outside on the outside pole. Daniel Graziano right up his tail. He's not backing down. Making an absolute charge for him. Keeping Carter honest, he knows he's there. Carter knows that Gratz is right there. It's it's just that play of the game, going around the corner, having a quick glance back, seeing if he's there. Is he there? You can't see him. You don't know where he is. You're giving up. You tell you tell Evan, I need some more men. I, I need to go quicker. They do say age is just a number, but Daniel Graziano would be old enough to be Carter Robinson's dad. <laughs> Who's your daddy? <laughs> Poor Gratz. Giving it, giving it a bit to him, but look. I'd say, Connor, between the last two laps, the gap's closing between Superman and Carter Robertson. I think so, too. I'm going to have a look at the current split that we've got here. Uh, you're actually incorrect. The, um, Gratz is now six seconds behind Carter Robertson. Sorry, those for that, that don't know, Daniel Graziano is who we're, we're referring to as Gratz. He looks comfortable. He looks very comfortable, very used to this... This type of water, many Worlds campaigns he's done before. Seattle was a big Worlds game for himself. I will say though, the wetsuit's getting on old in, uh, on an age though. Looking at poor old Gratz's wetsuit. Some skiers do choose to wear um, rash vests go down to the wrists, cover their wrists all the way. Per I per per don't personally like that. It makes me a bit cold when I'm skiing. <laughs> Look, it's to protect them um, from, you know, a little bit of rub. Uh, we've got some good vision here of... <laughs> Sorry. Um, got some good vision there of Samuel McKenzie, the fastest redhead in ski racing. With um, Samuel McKenzie was uh, the skier of Mason Goldsmith from the USA. We're going to give you an update on the split so far. We've got here Team 50 F1. That is Carter Robinson is in the lead six seconds in front of Superman, which is Daniel Graziano. Luckily, Nix is holding on 18 seconds behind the, the leader of Carter Robinson. And then right on Lockie's tail, two seconds behind Lockie Nix's tail is Jack Coldrake, who is 20 seconds behind Carter Robinson. All very, very close. We've got a couple of battles going on here, Connor. We've got Team 50 and Superman. They're in their own battle. Coldy's F1 and Sapphire. They're in another battle. We've got Dragon and Revenge in another battle. There's two battles going on for F1 and one go one main one going on for the first places of F2. Look, it's, this is the pinnacle of racing right now. The World Championships 
we're here, we're excited, we've got a whole host of boats, we're just watching, we've got, we've got one of the best live streams that we've had, um, the footage is just unreal and now we're looking at big some pump ups from Brian Griffin observing for Lockie Nix, as we can see Jack Coldrake moving to the outside line now. Some tough, close racing we've got going on here. Changing poles, trying to find the good water. I'm sorry to say, I don't think there is any good water out there. It is just a washing machine. We've got one, two, three. As you can see, we've the, observer, the observer's pushing, pushing. You can see him wave saying, get out of our wash. We've seen a couple of pole changes just then from uh, Jack Coldrake's team. Inside pole, outside pole, now they're back sitting in the wash, following Lockie Nix. They're trying to get that smooth carpet ride, but without trying to, uh, but, Look, Team of Sapphire is not going to let it happen. It's bad. Big pump up from Brian Griffin there off the footage. Sometimes the observer will get you through. You think, I'm stuffed. And then you see their fist giving up pump. Like, yeah, you know what? I can do this. Let's go. Like, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wave down for the best bloke in that drive, in that observer seat. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it up. Yeah. We're going to go. We can see a pretty big gap forming between Lockie Nix and Jack Coldrake here. Awesome stuff. I'm going to give you some splits on F2 to update the F2, our F2 division here. The Dragon in the lead with um, Brandon Tisworth still. Um, he's currently four seconds ahead of Revenge, which is Aiden Cuff. Look closely followed by Jake Clancy. Jake Clancy, unreal job, wildcard for Australia. Agent 86 is Jake Clancy. He is. He's only he's only 11 seconds behind the leader. Only 18 years old as well. Speed lab in fourth currently. We're going to get the splits on that in a sec. Oh, here we go. Speed lab number number was a little weird there, but speed lab seems to be dropping back a bit. Could be an issue of recovery, maybe not the best yesterday. Trying to back up on the second day, not not second day soreness. They always say is the worst. Um, Could be red hair. I think it's probably the the red hair aspect of it all. <laughs> Pick on our friends like that. Yeah, probably not. But we did call him the hottest man in ski racing, so it, it evens out. Another boat I really want to watch out for is Lucifer, Max Duxworth, Max Duxworth from New Zealand. I, I've got a good feeling about this guy. I, I'm waiting for the splits to come back up, but we need to keep an eye on Max Duxworth, Lucifer. I, 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 he surprised me yesterday. Had a little, I think he had a step off yesterday, which not ideal, but hopefully he stays on top of the water, has a great run today. Again, what we saw in the last race, an advantage coming from the back, being able to see your competitors. You can mark a spot on the, on, the, on the track and you know you need to be 30 seconds or a minute away from that. They don't, you, the your competitors in front, they don't get to see that. They don't get that advantage of being able to look in front. Look, we're just looking at Daniel Graziano now. Masterclass here from um, Darren Maguire and uh, Stephen Robinson in the driving and observer seat, respectively. Look, just it's such an experienced team. So look, we've got some, we've got some um, more splits now. An update on Lucifer. Lucifer's currently sitting in fourth position now, right behind the Speed Lab. Bertico Racing following them. Um, Bertico Racing is Mitchell Horan, Cause and Glamour just be just behind them. Kyle Taylor, New Zealand, and 1648 so far. Liam Ford, the speed rig, the man, the myth, the legend. But if we're talking about man's myths and legends, we're talking about Stephen Van Gaveren, 09 F2 men's world champion. Uh, I'm pretty sure he run won uh, the diamond race this year. Menace. You on Google last night, Connor? <laughs> Friday afternoon. <laughs> Actually, no. The IWWF European um, little the video, the interview videos. I watched through them. Awesome videos to watch. If you haven't watched them, go give them a give them a watch. I thought they did very good. I think they were interviewing from Liverpool. We've just ticked over the halfway mark. We're 30 minutes in, ladies and gentlemen. We can see speed lab. There is a, a bigger and bigger gap forming. I think Samuel might be retired from yet yeah, from the uh, two, two days ago. Sorry, Brianna. <laughs> now we've got Levi Frederick, the man, the myth, the legend. I've said.
said that three times, you probably shouldn't say it again. It's game behind Team USA there. Hands out in front, menace, but just coming around him now, Brock McMillan, and part of our F1 men's, hit a wild card for um, Australia there. Brand new boat. Big Dad stretch. the driving. Braden Jamison doing the observing. Big stretch from Levi Frederick. That man's back. I wonder in America do they do black transplants over there because they might need a start for Levi Frederick. Look, better men than I. Now we're watching, I believe that's Aiden Cuff. No, Bernico Racing there, sorry. Bernico Racing is mm, Mitchell Horan from New Zealand. But here we go, here's our leaders. Lucifer keeping up with the big boys in F1. That's Max Duckworth. Menace on the ski. Um, we're, we're currently following Carter Robinson here behind Team 50. Smart call from Lucifer. We've just seen them jump inside Superman's wash. Who's <laughs> also getting the benefit of Team 50's wash. How good is that? He's close. Here we go. Look, Superman sitting right in the kill zone. So currently six seconds behind for Team 50 F1. Oh, seems, uh, sorry. Team 50 with Carter Robinson is in front by six seconds to Daniel Graziano. I'd say that's going to be a battle. I think Lockie Nix may have won the battle already between Jack Coldrake and um, Lockie Nix. Yeah, as we see here, Sapphire coming through first. There's quite a big gap forming between Tempered with Jack Coldrake. Agent 86 taking the very, very sharp pole one, trying to make some room on Bernico Racing. Look, we're going to go back and um, give you an update on some of the, the boats that we haven't got to talk about a lot. Some of them are get lapping a little slower than our lead boat, so our split time's a little off. So, uh, we're, first, we're going to... Just quickly, Connor, we've had a position change. The Dragon in first place for F2. Agent 86 with Jake Clancy has taken second place off Aiden Cuff. Wow. Jake Clancy, the young gun, 18, year, 18 years old, first... Um, World's campaign, I, be I believe, definitely first campaign in F2, has just pipped Aiden Cuff, our winner of Saturday's race. For um, for those looking for some of our uh, some of the the teams that we haven't said yet, we're going to give you a full update. So for F2, we've so far in the, well, as per a couple of laps ago, we have from Lucifer, which is in fourth position. Cause and Glamour is currently behind them. Bernico Racing following them. 1648 is then following them. 7373 is after that. The Prodigy, Ice Ice Baby, 373. Snappy, 377. Enough said. And then Levi Frederick with F2 Wild. The back man. All right, that was an update from lap six. We're currently on lap 12. Well, the lead boats are currently on lap 12. So we're gonna look, we're looking for the race between Carter Robinson and Daniel Graziano, Graziano currently. Our F1 men's, this is a pinnacle, all right? F1, F1 men's, we've covered F1 women's this morning. We saw the best of the best women. We're now about to see the best of the best men. I Who's going to pull through? I think Stephen Van Gabren may be still a little bit, a little bit rattled from what happened yet. What happened on, on Saturday? Not quite on the pace today, but we can still see that Carter Robertson holding out as much as he can. Daniel Graziano not budging an inch. Look, it's all about staying there. We're at the 34 minute mark. What we want to see, what we're looking for, is in about 10 minutes, what will Daniel Graziano do? Will he jump out? Will he make a, a hard charge for Cooper, uh, Carter Robertson? And the question is, how's Carter's fitness? Will he be able? To, will he be able to hold the hold Gratz off? Will he, you know, excel in this last 15 minutes? As you can see, there's 25 minutes left. Left. Lockie Nix is pumping big ups. He's got a lot to prove. I think he might. Aim for, he's going to try and chase down the pack, which will be a hard work. Absolutely. We're looking at some of the awesome footage here of the um, the full course. Now back to the drifters corner, and on the outside of the corner there we can see the dragon, which is Brendan Tiswell. 
we're also seeing Sapphire. Is that Cause and Glamour? Cause and Glamour is Kyle Taylor from New Zealand. Agent 86, that is Jake Clancy on the inside. Okay. Can't really make out what that boat is on pole two. We got Lucifer, Max Duckworth right on the edge. Pole two is Sapphire. We can see now that Lockie Nix has moved from the outside of the course into the inside course. That means he's ready to work. He wants to he wants to run around the shorter course. He wants to make some ground on the boys who are running on the outside. We have we actually haven't seen Lockie come from the back and and make a win. So it'll be inter interesting to see. Can he reel in the top two boys out in front and then come away with a win? We've seen what this kid can do when he's down. Uh, it'll be it's definitely going to be something to watch in the next 24 minutes. If we've learned anything, it's not to count out Lockie Nix. No way. All right, we've got some awesome images here. Both the strike buds. Strike F1, formerly owned by Jared Gully, now owned by the McMillan family. Jared Gully is towing behind strike for Mason Goldsmith from the USA. Um, we do have the rescue boat moving across the course. Hopefully this... Uh, we got some word from um, our producers here and nothing is wrong at all. It was just moving back to where the position was supposed to be. It's all good. I've reined myself in. Let's get back to the race. All right, I'll give you an update on some of the splits for the F1 men. Just before that, we can see the gap closing. Team 50, Carter Robinson and uh, Daniel Graziano, he's not budging. I don't know about you, Mitch, but that 100 metres looks pretty small to me. I'd say that's almost 99 metres. Well, Darren McGuire has been here before. He's holding it right against the rules. Also, we've seen Stephen McGavrin also coming past right now. That's unreal. For those watching at home, there is a rule we have. If you're chasing a boat behind you, you need 100 metres clearance between the boat and the skier to be able to move uh, outside pole, inside pole, and move behind them. And we're currently looking at 99.9 .9 metres, which is bang on. <laughs> All right, looking at some great image. I think that was Bernico Racing before. So. Bernico Racing was at Mitchell Horan, New Zealand. <laughs> Got a couple outboards here. I uh, wish I could pick, but my eyes aren't that good. That was at the top turn, but down at the bottom turn, we've got some... We've got some Glamour 373. Coldies F1. Lockie Nix has pulled a whole straight. Or half a straight, sorry, on... Uh, Coldy's F1. Uh, Jack Coldrey. Don't swap the boats on me again. Wow, so we're looking at awesome images here. That is the boat 373 Nordic Racing. Um, that's Sean Davison from the US of A. Having a great run there today. Awesome to see them circling. It's all about getting points on the board. Awesome footage of the um, Nordic Racing there, trimmed up. Sean having a good run out the back there, enjoying some of the Australian water out there, a little bit different to some of the waters out in California and Arizona. Sean Davison has caught Ty Shashir from uh, USA, the two USA boys. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, look, we're, having, we're looking at awesome footage here, Carter Robinson and Daniel Graziano. You're going to hear us talk about them a lot because they are our race leaders. Carter Robinson putting on a masterclass and I'm telling you guys, we're getting, we're getting close to that 45 minute mark, I'm telling you. 45 minutes is when the magic happens. Uh, I live for the 45 minute time. Hand up there from Everett Woodridge. Oh, Carter big Robinson. moment from Carter Robinson we could just see there. Observer had his hand up saying, are you ready to go? Carter throws himself to the side. A uh, big moment, big uh, moment. Up there, he seems to have collected with himself now. Maybe he has to dial in, dial in, go, all right, we're gonna concentrate now. It's, we're about to hit the big boy minutes. I'm gonna call them the last 15, the championship minutes. We're about to hit the championship minutes. It's moments like that that really wake you up. <laughs> awesome <laughs> that, wizard wetsuit there. That was close. All right, just an update on some of the splits here. Carter Robson in the lead, six seconds behind Daniel Graziano. 37 seconds behind um, is Lockie Nix. A minute and one second behind 
is Jack Holdrake with Coldies F1. Two minutes and 14 seconds. Two minutes and 14 seconds is Strike F1 with Brock McMillan. Two minutes and 27 seconds is Diamond Bulls with Stephen Van Gafford. Uh, most current split is six seconds for Superman Racing. It's been six seconds for a while now. Look, they can't. So if Carter can't get away and Grads can't make any room up. I guess you could say that six seconds is about 99.9 .9 metres, as we've worked out now. Yeah, I know maths. Awesome footage there, Lachlan Nix. The machine. Lockie's game plan today could be just get the points on the board. Look, he, I, it, I, correct me if I'm wrong, he didn't really seem too happy with his run yesterday, so maybe it's just a, just a, a, a matter of getting, scoring some good points. Maybe going for the last two races, going hell for leather, just getting today, getting some, num some good numbers on the boards. The two Nix boys. Um, trained together, played together. They came out of the same womb, so they do as much as they can together. Thank you for that um, description. <laughs> While we're at our 41 minute mark, before it starts to heat up a little bit, we're going to we're going to say a big thank you to all the bars around Central Co the Central Coast. Numerous venues around the Central Coast are taking the vision th throughout their four days of the event live. It's good to see anyone um, Anyone watching the live stream from your local pub, thanks for giving us a watch. Maybe come down, give us a give give today a browse, or maybe Saturday a browse. Make sun shines and stuff like that. But we do know the beers are at the pubs. Living it live, doing an awesome job with our live GPS tracking. It's how we're actually grabbing the splits today from our races. Um, so living it live is one of our newly brought in. Um, software and hardware stuff that we're using for all our racing in Australia now. Connor, I'm just I'm just tracking these boys up front, Connor and um, Daniel, uh, sorry, Carter and, and Daniel Graziano, maintaining a constant speed of 75 miles an hour to 80 miles per, per hour. That's some of these outboards flat out. Look, and we do have to realise this average speed also collects from the start area so a lot of the times you've got to go all right plus five plus whatever onto it so these these guys are just absolutely holy and remember it's not smooth out there it's rough water i think we have massive news here from the commentary back huge news i'm gonna say it so far agent 86 jake clancy the young garden the 18 year old wild card from australia is in front in F2 men's. What an achievement. Dragon is currently sitting four seconds behind Jake Clancy. That is insane. Aiden Cuff is sitting under about a neck and neck with Stump right there. So it's currently Agent 86. That is Jake Clancy. Brendan Tiswell is in second, four seconds behind. And then dead hit with him is Aiden Cuff, the winner of Saturday's event. This is mental. Jake Clancy absolutely skiing his heart out. Oh, I, I don't know what to say. All, all I can say is I'm glad we we uh, I'm glad we didn't put money on it. We can see first, second, and third within seconds of each other. We've got a battle. Wow. Inside line, inside line. We're watching Jake Clancy now. There was a down. He's on the inside of, of Dragon. He's trying to pip Dragon. I'm pretty sure though. Revenge F2 with Aiden Cuff is inside them. So it's all about these corners. Who's faster down the straight? Maybe it's stumped faster down the straights, but then Jake has the better the better the better corner. He pulls up all that room, has to do less work. And so when we hit the championship minutes, the last 15 minutes, does he have more does he have more left in the tank? Connor, we spoke about this earlier that people could come from the back. Persistence is key, fitness is key, and that's exactly what Jake Clancy has done. He sat back. Let the two boys pick each other apart, and now he's making his way up through, and he's threading the needle. Look, I'm, I just want to give a little bit of love to some of our great, Britain, great Britain guys, some of our English friends. Enough said. Just went past the bottom turn. Darren Kirkland, a legend of the sport, um, a royalty in England, and pretty much royalty for all worlds racing. Jason Rockley doing the observing, and out the back, Roy Kirkland having a great time. Had a couple of years off skiing, haven't seen him around the circuits, but it's awesome to hear that they were like, oh, we're gonna do selections, and then jump in for worlds. 
Here we go, guys. The race is on. We're hitting the championship minutes. Superman has made a move on Carla Robinson. Superman, if, which is Daniel Gratiano, is right next to Carla Robinson. Superman is next to Carla Robinson. There's, there's only, what, 240 foot before they are neck and neck. Daniel Gratiano just behind, only a couple seconds. Connor, we picked this earlier. The last 15 minutes will be where Grazia, Daniel Gratiano sits there, waits, makes his charge. Two seconds. Two seconds, Mitch. That is nothing. If we're looking at the ages, this is almost father versus son. <laughs> you love that, don't you? I could hear someone else. <laughs> wow, this is just awesome footage. What a push Daniel Graziano has made on Carter Robinson. He's all the way up his road. The, boat are, the boats are neck and neck. He's in front. Daniel Graziano is in front of Carter Robinson. Daniel Graziano is leading the F1 men's division. Great advantage for Carter Robinson, though. He does have the inside pole. Daniel Graziano is going to have to work much harder on the outside. There's a bit of traffic here. They've got to get around an outboard. I can't pick the outboard, but I can say Daniel Graziano is leading into the top turn. This is now buddy stuff, Mitch. Ah, oh, this... Connor, yeah, from yesterday, there is only four competition points between these two. So any, any win is so important when it comes down. If these two race neck and neck all week, it's only a matter of seconds. I'd say that every meter matters. <laughs> or inch. <laughs> All right, awesome vintage of, of Daniel Graziano here, right next to Carter Robinson. I'm sorry if we forgot about the rest of the race, but this is the most nail-biting race I've seen. Carter Robinson needs to stay in front if he wants to win today's race. Big pump up from Stephen Robinson. Bob, an absolute, Stephen Robinson, an absolute veteran. As we can see him pulling away, Stephen Robinson, this is where you could get inside your skier's head and say, hey, I've got you, let's go. Carter Robinson might be sore, might not have the energy to keep up with Gratz. Gratz was able to, Daniel Graziano was able to stay in Carter Robinson's wash pretty much for the entire race until just now. He's just pulled out and has, well, I'm not gonna say fresh legs, but fresher. As they come past the sailing club, a little, little water comes past them. As we can see here, Connor, Daniel Graziano looks at his watch. He uses the hot dog setup we were talking about earlier. He can move his hand forward or back, whichever suits him. He looks, he looks good. What can I say? He looks good as they round up the skiers of Jack Coldrake behind Tempton and, and also Ice Ice Baby, which is Mike Mushot from Belgium. I wouldn't rule, rule out Carter Robinson just yet. The inside lane, you can see now they're level. Daniel There's... Graziano has to work harder and harder down every straight to gain the metres, which you can see him getting now. Carter Robinson knows by the time he gets around the top turn, they're going to be level again. Well, I beforehand, Daniel Gratiano was pulling away from Carter Robinson a lot faster. Now it doesn't seem to be such mu that much of a difference. Maybe they're resting, want that last 10 minutes into the championship minutes, and they're gonna just go hell for leather. Or, on the other hand, maybe he doesn't have the Sanima. But Stamina. also, Stamina. also, as important, F2, we've had a change in F2, all right? Brandon Tiswell has got Jake Clancy. I repeat, there has been a switch in F2 leaders. The Dragon is leading with Brandon Tiswell. Jake Clancy in second. They're, they're on the same time. It, it, it could be anything. It could be anything. Samuel is a lap down. That is, um, Speed Lab is a lap down. Revenge F2, which is Aiden Cuff, is so, currently running in third. Awesome video footage there Big of Lucifer, from Max Daniel Duxworth. Gra Big ups from Daniel Graziano coming out of that corner. He wants the thousand points. He's hungry. It, he seems to have cleared. I don't know if we can't see very clearly on our footage right now. Oh, there we go. Carter, Carter Robinson, Brett Wiseman has decided to go right down the inside. Look at the difference in the water conditions here, Connor. You can see the, the, the waves that Carter Robinson's in. Daniel Graziano on the outside track. A lot, not a lot smooth, but definitely something uh, you know, smooth that's going to matter. They're putting, they're putting time on Carter Robinson. I repeat, Daniel Graziano is 
pulling out an absolute masterpiece. Can he hold on for the last this next 10 minutes as we've just ticked over the 50 minute mark? Big up from Daniel Graziano. Second up, he wants it. He looks fresh. He's been chasing this world championship glory. He wants a win today to bring that that dream one step closer. Great communication between the driver and observer there. So we've got an awesome race turning out here in F2. Um, the Dragon leading by two seconds now. That is Brandon Tiswell leading by two seconds with Agent 86. That is Jake Clancy um, behind, two seconds behind Brandon Tiswell. Awesome race. Brandon uh, has been, uh, you know, leading. Brendan has been leading pretty much the whole race. It switched really quickly for a couple laps and now it's back. Once again, our predictions way off. Way off. <laughs> Commentators obviously have no clue. Look, just past the, the Drifters Wharf, we've got um, Stephen Van Gaveren making another lap there. What if we can see here, I believe Dragon out in front. Ice Ice Baby has just lapped another lap, that's Mike Mushant. So we're currently looking at the bottom corner here. I'm pretty sure in order we've got 1648F2, Enough Said, which is our Brit team. Um, strike is our battle, Agent 86 and the Dragon. Wow, Agent 86 with inside line. A little bit more speed with the, the lab sport there, the Dragon lab sport. That is Brendan. Brendan Tetswell. Connor, look at the way these boats are moving differently. The Dragon is moving, but it's a little bit more stable. Agent 86 is a lighter boat. Homemade is best mate, Tony Rhodes said. But Dragon, you know, just able to punch her a little bit more. Well, there we go. We've also got a little bit of um, footage of Levi Frederick, the man out in front, hands out in front. Some awesome image of uh, Brendan Tetswell there. Look how rough it is on this corner. So from what we can see on uh, on Race Live, a Revenge F2 with Aiden Cuff has, has pulled out of this um, battle for first. Settle for third, I would say. Look, that's just an awesome battle we got going there between Jake Clancy and Brendan, Brendan Titswell. Samuel, Ken Samuel McKenzie with Speed Lab is still very consistent. If he can keep his pace up, he may snap third place off uh, Aiden Cuff. Well, so as we just saw the leaders go through the, the finish line, Bernico Racing also coming to make another lap. That's Mitchell Horan from New Zealand, as well as Lucifer. Uh, look, big fan of Lucifer, Max that's worked. Boat looks immaculate. Superman just come past us, pulled three, four length, length, length ropes, rope lengths on Carter Roberts in that race. Samuel McKenzie, as we said, he's been very consistent. Not as fast as the others, not up with the pack, but consistency is key. He may be able to catch revenge and take third place off Aiden Cuff. Right behind him is Mike Munchot from Belgium. Look, awesome, oh, pretty cool looking boat. Uh, something I haven't really seen before. They've also got the right hand ski pole, which is pretty cool. Whoa, out of the corner is our, our F2 race leaders, absolutely hauling it. As you can see, that inside line much rougher, much more, much more going on for Agent 86 and Dragon. Still rough, but not as rough. As you can see, I want to talk about the difference between Samuel McKenzie and Mark Moonshot, the Belgium skier. As it seems to get a little bit rough, rougher, Ice Ice Baby with Mike Moonshot has sort of, he's, he's been able to keep up with the rest of the pack. It's been awesome to see what happens when it gets a little bit rougher like those Belgian canals. Look at Agent 86 right out of Oh, the We've seen the prop just three times in a row there. Agent 86 flying high and dry, not giving much for Jake Clancy out the back looks stable he still looks comfortable regardless how much that boat ran, uh, moves around he is stable guys we are just about to hit the 55 minute mark there's five minutes left of this race i repeat now there is five minutes less of this race
Awesome stuff here. Dragon slightly ahead with Brenda Tiswell and Sonic. Um, Agent 80, 86, the Sonic, with Jake Clancy just behind. But I repeat, on the inside line, this will make a big difference when we're talking about the last, the last bit, all right? Here we go. Here's the battle. Daniel Graziano is way out in front now. And he is not slowing down. Carter Robinson is 400 metres behind on the high orbiter. Daniel Graziano is eight seconds in front of... Of Daniel Grazi uh, Daniel Graziano is eight seconds in front of Carter Robinson. Actually, sorry, I read that. I read the split from before. And this could be even longer. Seventeen seconds. Gra Daniel Graziano is seventeen seconds in front of Car Carter Robinson. That means that's a massive gain if we're talking about points, if we're talking about confidence, everything. That's about, it's about the same distance as before. If Daniel Graziano can extend that lead a little bit more, he'll be in the lead for the total point score. Connor, we have just over three and a half minutes left. Um, we should see a, a blue flag in one or two laps. Get excited, guys. This is it. This is a pinnacle. This is the best of the best racing out there from all different countries of the world. We're from New Zealand, Belgium, the USA, England, Australia, it, it, it does not get better than this. And the redheads. And we do have redheads out there, so unfortunately. Maximum flight. Well, hey. awesome footage here of Agent 86 like Dragon, and the stump. Looks like Dragon may have nabbed, nabbed first place. From We've got a we've got a boat in the water. 177, Snappy 177. That is Jason Davison, USA, is in the water. There isn't an observer in the boat. As we can see, down from in, down from Jake Clancy on the inside line, it looks like uh, Brendan Tidswell is just slightly in front. They're coming up to um, Samuel McKenzie now, to, uh, I believe, to big moment another from, lap. from Agent 86 on the inside, left, right, keep it together. Uh, you can see the observer trying to throw the hand out to know to let Jake know that they got they got his signals, but I think he might fall out if he doesn't. <laughs> The lads fought a lot down more stable again. there. I think Jake Clancy's about to pull out of the battle. A um, couple downs from him, but what a, what an effort to get to where he is. Look, a close second is just as good. Got some image here we're trying to make out. That's okay. As Superman comes in for another lap. Superman has just made another lap where... Two, two and a half minutes from the blue flag lap. Possibly next, possibly next lap. Maybe not. Might have to do two more laps, might be three. Awesome drone footage here. We've got Carter Robinson coming through the bottom. As we see Lucifer, Max Duckworth, Max Duckworth doing the scheme from New Zealand coming out there. There's also, I believe that is um, Bernico Racing with Mitchell Horan from New Zealand. Out there, Levi Frederick, Team USA, Jack Holdy behind Tempered, Brock McMillan behind Strike F1, and then over in the corner there, we can see the the, the, the guys from England, Rory Kirkland doing the scan by not enough set. Awesome there, that is a 73 Ty Chesna from the USA, as well as. Looking at awesome footage here of Lockie Nix behind Sapphire. Big pumps from Brian Griffin. Trying to get him across that finish line. He's current. There's a big gap forming here. We've got 28 seconds. Carter Robinson has fallen behind Daniel Graziano. It'll be interesting to see where Lockie Nix slots himself there. Currently a minute and 37 seconds behind. I don't know if that, that lead has been extended, but we will find out very shortly. Connor. Lockie Nix a minute 37 seconds behind the pack is possibly. It, that's a lot that can pan out over this hour. 
But look, if we talk about if we talk about dominance, we've got to talk about Gratz. He's extended his lead from 17 seconds in front of Carter Robinson to 28 seconds. That's 11 second gain in one lap. Connor, we have just ticked over the hour, I believe. The next time these boats come around, we will see the last lap flag. We've also we're also just looking at um, Snappy 377 just getting passed by the race leader Carter Robinson. Snappy 377 has a race in Normandy. He's still uh, ticking some laps off. Look, anyone who can finish this hour race, and especially in this calibre of racing, deserves the title of Connor, a Connor, here we racer. go. Blue flag for Superman. Last lap for the F1 men. Here we go, folks. Daniel Graziano is so far in front. He needs to stay on top of the water, and he will secure himself a win in the F1 men's division. At the same time here, Connor, we've got the last lap flag for the F2 men's winner. Dragon, Brendan Tidswell, one more lap to go. The split flag is out. He has sort of cleared himself from Agent 86, which is Jake Clancy. He pulled a massive lead in that lap there. we just seen on the footage a couple of time, uh, a couple of minutes ago, Connor, a couple of downs from uh, Jake Clancy. You know, an hour, he's probably not quite up to the battle with his, with his fitness, but he definitely, he's going to nab himself a second from that late charge just before. What we're looking at here currently is we've got the Dragon in first. This is for the F2 men's official. Dragon first, Jake Clancy second, Aiden Cuff third, and then I believe Samuel McKenzie is in fourth. That is from our current split of lap 20. We're currently, our leader is on lap 23. However, the F1 men are lapping at a quite a substantial rate compared to the F2 men. Now, here we go. We're watching Daniel Graziano go down the back straight, past one of the snappy boats who were stopped in the water there. As I said yesterday, uh, sorry, as I said about um, on Saturday, Connor, that there was only four competition points between Daniel Graziano and Carter Robinson after. I believe with the gap that, that Daniel Graziano has at the moment, he will get more than he will he will close this gap. Yeah, I believe so too. Here comes here comes Mason Goldsmith from the USA coming around the bottom corner, as well as Ma Max Duckworth behind L Lucifer and Aiden Cuff. Superman just around the last last corner, down heading down the last straight in first place. Get excited, guys. It won't be long before we can say that Ma Daniel Graziano is the winner of today's race. We have Brock McMillan in for his last lap now. Also, as well as Bernico Racing, Mitchell Horan from the New Zealand team there. Water at the back. Here we go. Stephen Van Gaveren out there. Here we go. Here it is. Daniel Graziano is coming in for a free. Oh, he's still far away. <laughs> Jump the gun. I thought that was Daniel Graziano, but it is Jack Coldrake. Jack Coldrake coming around for his last lap. But here we go. Daniel Graziano is coming for a win in F1, man. He's seen the thing. Darren Maguire has come in for a win. They've gone past the checkered flag in for a win. Daniel Graziano is the winner for the second race of the men's F1 division. Hats off, strategic masterpiece, stayed out the back, then said, Carter, you reckon you can keep up with me? Ran it in him up and threw for a win. Who's your daddy? <laughs> Grants is my daddy. Let's go. No. Uh, now we're looking for Dragon for a win of F1. We've also got a finish for Cause and Glamour. Cause and Glamour is Kyle Taylor from New Zealand as well as the Dragon. There's a finish in F2 man I didn't see. Go, Brandon Tedswell. That is a win. One win. One for Cuffy. One for Brandon the Stump. It is neck and neck here, guys. Both men's F2 and F1 division. Another finish. Rory Kirkland, enough said. Great Britain representative. Carter Robinson just coming across the line. There is quite a substantial lead uh, between Daniel Graziano and Carter Robinson. 52 seconds. Daniel Graziano was able to take off from Carter Robinson. We just had both seconds finish then. We had Jake Clancy behind 88, Aiden, Agent 86. Fantastic run, couldn't be prouder. Only 18 years old, given a, a smashing crack. That was also Carter Robinson, and I believe that was 373. Sean seven, Davison for a finish there. No, sorry, my apologies. 73 with Ty Chester from the USA. Connor, Daniel Graziano, second place on Saturday. 
first place today. We've got another couple finishes here. Mike Munchuk from Belgium on Ice Ice Baby. <coughs> as well as here is 1648F2 with Liam Ford, the Speed Rig. Speed Rig represent KSC sponsored. Love that guy. Also, Aiden Cuff comes to a finish. I'm pretty sure that's in a third place. Lucifer closely followed. I'd like to see where that ends up for Lucifer and Aiden Cuff. Lucifer's Max Ducksworth. Also, massive finish there for Le Levi Frederick. Someone give, I don't know, give him new arms. Give him a rest. I don't know that. What a legend out there, Levi Frederick from the USA. Brock McMillan, big finish there for him behind Strike F1, just in front of Mason Goldsmith from the USA. We just saw Gage Goldsmith get a, um, a third. Mason is his older brother. There is Stephen Van Gaveren, maybe a little shaken up from yesterday, but great finish nonetheless from Belgium. And I miss one snappy 377. That is Race and Norman for the F1 division from the US of A. Bertico Racing with a finish there too. Mitchell Horan from the New Zealand Australian resident, but well, almost still lives in New Zealand, but is over here for all the races. Now we're waiting for a couple finishes here. Jack Coldrake, incredible start for Jack Coldrake here. Sort of seemed to wave it a little bit as the, the day went along, but. Even so, tempered Jack, Col uh, Jack Coldrake for wildcard. Now we're just waiting for a couple finishes here. We've got three roads straggling along. The Prodigy, Cause and Glamour. Um, and 373. Three. Here comes 373, that is a, a USA team. Sean Davison, great run from those boys out there. Congratulations on the finish. Don't talk about the voice crack. And we've also got a, a, a finish here from Prodigy 200, Prodigy 200, or the Prodigy, sorry. Nick Butler from Great Britain, awesome run from them. Didn't get to cover much of them, but look, great run from the Brits out there. We'll have, we'll come back with some more um, finish orders just because our splits have all gone a mess with the amount of laps that we've had to keep track. Some people have done 23 laps, some people have only done like 17. So it's been pretty tough for us to keep track of everything, but we will come back with some more definitive results. Don't turn your live streams off just yet. We've got two novelty races. We've got uh, the... Interstate, Interstate Challenge. Interstate oh, Challenge. International Challenge, sorry. Under or over 40, under or over 50, and 60 plus men. So you could be 99 years old and come and have a ski this afternoon. Absolutely mental. I, I don't actually think we've got anyone 99 years old. The way you were talking about Gratz, he could have been 99 years old. However, he's not. He's only a young fella. Um, but yes, that was a great, great race we had today. Mitch, is there anyone you're surprised about? Anyone you want to shed some light on to finish for all the teams there? Mate, we cannot go past Daniel Graziano's strategy and execution and time management. Darren Maguire, Stephen Robertson, the brains of the operation, have done an absolutely cracker job here today. Timing it perfectly, coming out at just enough time that maybe Carter was possibly a little bit too tired to keep up with him. So now they're one, one and one. We will see on Wednesday who is going to get that, 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 that leg up, you know? And then for F2, we cannot go past Jake Clancy fourth. I don't think either of us tipped him. No. And he pulled through a second. Threaded the needle. Battled Brendan, Brendan Tidswell for the last half an hour. Unfortunately couldn't hold out Brendan Tidswell but still nabbed a second. Look, yeah. Brendan Tidswell obviously showing his experience there. Look, come up. Saw, saw the young gun come up and then said, nah man, I'm winning. We're going to leave this with you guys for a minute. Um, but we'll see you once the international challenge starts. Thank you. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply.
This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. From long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view. To the pulse of the Pacific. through ancient pathways to secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. Building a new way of life. Create the story. There's more to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast Juice. Dear Problems, Can't Be Dones, Impossibles, you're invited to our place, where makers make, doers do, and problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff, we make possible. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
Um, no, I think it was the conditions were pretty pretty well the same as they were at the last election. Uh, we had a had a good race. We get, had a side by side battle with our stump and the dragon boat. You know, we've been tangled up with them nearly every race we've done this season, so that's good racing them boys. And um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, Camo had a bit of a fall, but you know that's racing, and yeah, happy to come out on top. Uh, I was just down on the water side. We saw him before the race and we said that he was going to have a good run today. Congratulations, Daniel Graziano. First place for Team Australia. Well done. Mate, thanks, Troy. It was, um, yeah, mate, it was a great day for us. Mate, two from two, juniors and men's. I'm mate, really happy with that one. Really good, mate. I'll tell you what, your tactics out there, you seem to just sit there, sit there, sit there. And at the, uh, at the time when some may have questioned the youngsters may have stepped it up, you really stepped it up. Mate, I've just learned over the time, mate, that just you got to use your strengths where they are. And, mate, I for 45 minutes, I watched where they ran and knew where I would like to be and knew where we were strong and knew when I could go. And I've just always known, mate, when it's time to go, you just got to go. And, mate, if they come with you, they come with you. If they don't, they don't. Simple as that. And your boat crew, obviously, big Darren Maguire and the Bubs, the Rob Robbo and the big Superman boat, obviously doing a great job out there as well. Mate, they were flawless today, mate, apart from the fact they didn't even come. From about 10 minutes in, they lost that. But, mate, as Darren would say, mate, we followed him for a long time. Then we did a bit of shake and bake and off we went. As you say, without the intercom, that's that's interesting, without the intercom. But those guys have been around long enough. You don't necessarily always get the intercom, do you? Mate, not always. And, mate, they can barely hear in our boat at the best of times because it's too bloody loud. But it is what it is. Mate, is that running a Mercury package as well? Mate, definitely is not. That's a Darren Maguire special, I think they call that. <laughs> well, that, that's interesting. One of, one of the only boats out there without the Mercury packages. But, mate... Congratulations, one from two. The points would be very, very close now and then we're looking for a very, very interesting race coming Wednesday. Mate, it's only going to get more interesting the week goes on. I'm sure those young blokes will come back bigger and better, mate. They are, they're young, mate. They'll heal, they'll come back and Carter and, and the rest of them, I don't know, they've got something left and we can't wait to see what we've all got for the last one. Or last two, sorry. As I said before the race, obviously I said a crowd favourite. You can just see the crowd walking past here. Very, very big crowd favourite, mate. Congratulations from everyone. Fully, fully well deserved and very good luck for Wednesday, mate. Mate, really appreciate it, Troy. Thank you. No worries. Thanks for your time. We know it's busy and good luck for the rest of the week. Thanks, mate. Over to you in the, pit, uh, the tower. Yeah, he's beautiful. Just down on the water with Brendan Tidswell, a.k.a. Stumpy. Congratulations, mate. Very ironic. I, I interviewed the Grats, Daniel Graziano, before the race. He just come off a win in Men's Open, and I offered you an interview. He knocked me back, but you've gone out there. You've won. Congratulations, mate. Formula 2 gold medal in the second round. Great run. Yeah, thanks, Trey. Um, bit unbelievable, really, to be honest. Um, such a great race. Hats off to to Jake and Cuffy, they really pushed me there towards the end. We got a nice little lead there and then they come up on us and had a bit of a charge, but we were, um, crew were good. They done what we needed to do. We had a game plan stuck to it. And um, the other boys made it a bit harder for us, but we were lucky enough to come away with the win and yeah, couldn't be happy, mate. Well, it's actually great to see two different results, very different results in F2, but two different results in both open men and F2 men. So pushing forward to Wednesday, the races are gonna be very, very open right now. Oh, 100%. I'm, I'm not looking forward to Wednesday because if we're going to do that again, well, it's going to be tough. So get some recovery in. We'll see how we go. But, um, yeah, hats off to the other blokes. They've done really well. T tr tricky conditions out there. And um, I'm sorry that I knocked you back earlier on, mate. I 
Just had to get myself ready. <laughs> That's all right. Maybe maybe it was just I was just good at predicting this earlier today. Mate, don't worry about hats off to the other blokes. Hats off to you and your crew. Fully well deserved, mate. Congratulations. Enjoy the rest of the week and we really hope you go really well. Thanks, mate. And the boys from the bush are back in town, eh? Well done, mate. Congratulations. Back to you over in the bus.
take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. From long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view. To the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways. To secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. And building a new way of life. Create your story on the New South Wales Central Coast. to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast juice. Dear Problems, Can't Be Dones, Impossibles, you're invited to our place, where makers make, doers do, and problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff, we make possible. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on.
the Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Yeah, the first race was good. Um, obviously, this was our first Worlds that we've done. Um, Emma, that was her first Worlds. So for us, it's um, look, it was just about getting the, the nervy jitters out, um, circulate, make up the, the numbers today, just to um, get ready for the, the next three races, which I think will be um, important and we should grow as the event goes on. The boat's great. Um, this is our, our river boat that we use predominantly. Um, and, you know, it's, it's great, it handles these conditions well. Um, the Mercury package in it is, it's just easy, reliable. So yeah, no, the boat went awesome. The world titles are something that, you know, for me, I've been, I came to these when I was six or seven, it was the first time I came. Been following, you know, world-class racing all my life. And to be in a position where, you know, we're actually here competing, it's pretty cool. Uh, something that, I'll be honest, I didn't think I'd ever do. So um, yeah, it's a childhood dream, I suppose, to be here and competing and the competition's fierce. Uh, the Australians are, are, are strong. They showed that in the first race. Emma's just going to keep growing and, you know, it's going to be, yeah, we'll go good. Yeah, well, our sponsors is our business, Bay City Marine. So we, we basically, uh, we funded this. Mercury have contributed a bit of money towards it as well. Um, Malcolm Priest and PFM, um, you know, he's always there, he's always got my back. Um, you know, Ian Kilpatrick's been there, he's someone we need to mention, he's been great. So, um, yeah, look, we, we're surrounded by a, a, a group of guys and, and a very strong team. We've just found our way down to the rope testing area with Jake Clancy, who unofficially, somewhere we think second. Congratulations, mate. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. And tell us about the boat you skied behind today and, and how you went out there. Uh, so I was behind Agent 86 today. It's um, 
it's been sort of newly set up for this rough water stuff and it's going great. Uh, Tony Rowe, he's an amazing driver. I couldn't ask for any better and today was really good. I felt quite good out there. I'm starting to feel better and better on the ski. So I really enjoyed it and I gave it everything I had and we ended up getting a good result. So That's a great result. Congratulations. And how are you finding the week so far? Yeah, it's been good. It's uh, getting into the swing. It's my first world title, so I'm sort of just, I'm all learning, but it's, uh, yeah, it's been good so far and I'm, I'm loving it, loving the experience. Is that representing Australia, obviously? Uh, Australian wildcards, actually. So yeah, the Federation team. So it's been interesting, the Federation team's had some really good results so far. Yeah, there's some good skiers there that have just, uh, the selections over here are really tough and it's a very even playing field, so the wild cards, they've got just as much of a, a shot as the Aussies do, so it's, it's great racing. That's right, congratulations Jake, thanks for your time. We'll let you go and get in the ice bath or whatever you got to do. Good luck for the rest of the week. Thanks mate, appreciate it. Cheers. Just over in the rope testing section again with Max Duckworth from New Zealand. Mate, very, very good run today. Third or fourth, congratulations. No, cheers mate, it was good. Uh, had a bit of issues yesterday, so we got to the end today, so that's, that's a bonus. And tell us about the boat you're skiing behind, a New Zealand made boat, I believe. Yeah, so it's a New Zealand Phantom built by uh, Nick DeMay, so brought it over here to see how she goes. And I noticed some of those New Zealand guys that are supporting you are wearing another brand other than Mercury hat, but I notice your boat's definitely got a Mercury on it. Oh, it's the only thing to have, isn't it? I would think so, yes. Obviously, thanks to Mercury Marine, our major sponsors. But you having a good week over here? Yeah, no, it's been good. Um, today was definitely better than Saturday, so hopefully we go better again. And obviously, Duckworth, very, very synonymous with New, New Zealand ski racing. Um, Mum, Emma, been around for a long time and uh, a lot of worlds. Uh, yeah, so Emma's my auntie. Oh, yeah. Okay, and auntie, mum, sort of similar. No, nah, they've all done it, so got bought up in it, so didn't really have a choice, eh? How long you been doing it? Oh, uh, skiing probably 11, 12 years. And did you, so did, as a boy, did you go to the Worlds in 07 or 15 over in New Zealand? Yeah, so I did the 15 Worlds as a junior and then the 17 Worlds as a junior as well. Okay, congratulations mate, good result today and hopefully you'll go better during the week. Cheers mate, thank you. Okay, thanks for your time. Uh, Lockie Nix, the ski behind Sapphire in F1 men's. So far we've had one little run out here yesterday just to warm up and you know make sure everything's all good to go for today and um, it's the, the weather's turned it on, it's pretty hot and the, hopefully the wind's going to pick up a little bit more so it's not so smooth but either way I think we're looking forward to a good first race and hopefully a, a good successful first race as well to set us up well for the rest of the week. I got into ski racing Oh, it's pretty much just through my dad. Um, watched the racing out in a true car, and dad decided to get into it, and then he's dragged us along, and then we've been dragging him for the next pretty much 10 years. With this particular boat, we haven't done a super great deal of racing. Um, we raced four years ago with a different crew in F2 men's, and uh, we were successful in that. We won that world title, so hopefully we'll go back to back and then um, pick up the F1. 
But as for the rivers, we race with a bit of a different boat, a bit of a, a faster and corners a lot better. Um, and yeah, we're doing pretty good. I race with um, the kids, get, the blokes getting behind Revenge F2, Aiden Cuff, and we've had a pretty successful couple of seasons and we're looking to have a few more successful seasons outside of world racing as well. You get people from around the world that come and race that do the same sport as you and, you know, are as passionate as what you are and it's cool, you know. It's not often, you don't get to race, you know, the Yanks or, or the people from Belgium and, and whatnot. So for them to come over and to race and put on, on, on the world title, it's, it's good. I'd just like to thank, thank the crew, you know, Timmy and Griffo. They've put in a lot of time and effort into getting here. And then the extended crew. So I've got, me, you know, my best mate, Alex Hanley, who drives, drives for me little brother, uh, Camo. Again, thank Camo, thank mum and dad and, and Ridgie. I could keep going on with names and I'm still going to leave people out. So yeah, just, just like to thank everyone that's helped us out into getting to this point. Hi guys, we're just over here at Drif Drifter's Wharf with Stuart Smith, the event organiser. Mate, we're going pretty good so far this weekend. We had a good event Saturday. Today's going exceptionally well. Congratulations to you and your team. How do you think we're travelling? Oh, look, it's been fantastic. We've been working on this for nine months. And, you know, to be here and actually doing it and be halfway through has been fantastic. And, you know, you have those little hiccups on the first day, but then you, uh, you roll into it. So it's been going very well. And you say nine months, normally you've got two to four years to plan these events. You had nine months obviously because of COVID. We didn't know what was going on with IWWF. It's obviously been a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so we took it on in, uh, in January. And to be here now, you know, it's a bit of a, uh, a massive effort by a lot of people that um, has been able to put on a world championship here in Australia. And obviously thanks to Mercury Marina who have been massive helpers and also Drifters, Gosford City Council, the local area. That's amazing, and also the athletes. Yeah, absolutely. We had a lot of partners that are not only local here in Gosford, 
but also in part of the community of, of ski racing and then a lot of the Mercury dealers as well. Bay City Marine right up there in, in uh, Harvey Bay right down to Race Marine in Melbourne. It's been fantastic to see their support. But this is what it's all about is that we kind of surround our, our community with really good partners that hopefully we, you know, will work with us in the future as well. And obviously Bendigo Bank, the local branch up here in Gosford, thanks to those guys. But for me, having been around the sport for quite some time, it's really exciting to see all the old competitors and all, all the previous world champions as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a reunion on Thursday night, and that really was born out of, I suppose, the last event we had up here in August. You know, a lot of people, you know, old ski racers came on board to actually come out and watch. So here we have it, an event on Thursday night for them. Yeah, and it's great to see. I think we have five or six countries, Belgium, New Zealand, US of A, obviously Australia. Great representation from all around the world. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we always think about Australia as great ski racers, but the US guys have come and they're competitive. Love seeing the Belgians here. And even this afternoon in the, uh, in the International Challenge, you know, the Netherlands are represented in Austria as well. Okay, that's great. I did notice in, there's some of the Austrians inside, so we'll go and catch them soon, Jace. But also, just looking behind me over there, or behind you, I noticed Norm Lee, world champion dri driver and observer back in the 70s and 80s. I've noticed we've had Mike Avila, many world championships. Dr P Peter Gwazdecki, who we spoke to. It's just amazing to see. Yeah, absolutely. And as I say, we're a real community that goes, you know, across the, across the world. And it's fantastic to see everybody out here supporting us. It is. It's also been great to see the Americans get some good results and let's hope we'll see some of the other, other countries get some good results for the rest of the week. Oh, I think it's just great that we're able to actually be able to perform at a World Championship. You know, you talk about the fact we weren't going to have a World Championship this year. So these kids that are actually wanting to be dreaming to be World Champions are actually physically getting the chance. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's right. So thanks very much for your time. You're a very busy man this week, I know. Congratulations to you and your team, and we'll catch you again later in the week. Cheers, thank you. Thanks. Over to you in the studio. G'day, guys. I'm here with Wayne Moore, five-time world champion, three water ski racing, two wakeboarding world championships as well. Just recently inducted into the uh, World Water Ski Racing Hall of Fame. Congratulations, mate. Lovely to see you here at Gosford. Mate, what do you think of the racing so far? Great, great venue, really good. Good um, viewing, it's been some good racing. Um, I got here, I watched the men's, uh, I got to see the men's on the first day and just watching the women's now, it's, it's close, it's good. Whoever, whoever gets the win's gonna earn it. Mate, let's go back to the first World Championship you won back a long, long time ago, 1997, if I'm correct. Um, how have the boats changed since you started? Oh, um, yeah, a lot. You know, if I had to sort of pick one thing, it's the technology, the reliability, um, the horsepower. Like, we, we were running similar horsepowers, but just the reliability these days is, is just, uh, it's, yeah, that's the main thing I'm seeing, um, you know, and uh, the crews and the, and the intercoms they're using now, yeah, it's just, oh, there's everything involved in the sport, like when you're in the boat, like the intercoms to the engines to the, the visibilities and even to the, um, the way they handle, it's, yeah, it's all been, it's all improved uh, out of sight. And the advent of the Mercury Marine race engines, obviously that's, that's made a lot of difference. Back when you first started, they were twin turbo building a, a, fa a factory workshop, not a Mercury Marine that's got millions of dollars to put, put into development. That's obviously got a fair bit to do with it. Oh, correct. You know, it, it's um, even just, they run on pump fuel. You know, I remember having to, you have to organise all your fuel and get your av gas and do all that kind of thing. And, and now you just pull up a service station, you fill her up and you go racing. It's, yeah, it's changed it a lot. It's changed it a lot. What are your predictions for the week, mate? Women's open, men's open, first of all? Um, oh, I think, geez, you, first of all, you've got to go and finish. You've got to be consistent. But from what I'm seeing over the first two races, Maddie Boyer, she's, she's going to be hard to beat. You know, it, no one's unbeatable out there. But, um, you know, she's, you've you got to you got to go and put it out there for a start, you know. And, and for men, well, I saw that that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a yucky first men's race there for the first first lap there and there's a few people that you know in the restart that doesn't make you good so I think today I'll show the true colours of, of the boys out there of the men um, Lockie Nix I think is a dark horse you know I think he's definitely 
he's definitely one to beat. He's been performing all year, um, you know, but, you know, you got Carter, Robinson, Daniel Graziano, good luck. You know, it's, you got you got to race for the hour, put it up. Which is really good to see, and that's what we're here for, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, mate. Absolutely, it wouldn't be world titles if you weren't, you know, if you if you didn't have a few competitors out there pushing each other. And what about the other classes, juniors, boys, and girls, and also the Formula Two men's and women's? Are you familiar with any of the, any of those guys? Yeah, yeah. F two. Um, uh, look, the junior boys and girls. Not. Uh, I'm a little bit out of touch there, really. Um, I do know. I've. I've had the chance to meet um, Cody Cartwright, which is Jace Cartwright's um, boy and, and his daughter. Um, I know they're skiing really well. I got to see him do a Catalina, and he's he's an incredible skier. Um, you know, uh, Cameron Nix, Camo Nix, he went over there and won Catalina, and I've got to spend a bit of time with Camo, and he's just a, he's an a absolute talent. So, you know, once again, they got to they got to put it together. You know, it's it's not just one race this time. There's four of them. Well, now. Now three, one down, three to go. So, uh, I, you know, and I think uh, once again, F2 is really, it, I'm pretty sure you'll see it uh, should be some tight racing, but, you know, if um, if the conditions are rough, I think I think Camo, if he can put it together on the day, should, should shine. And um, you mentioned the four races, and the th we'll touch on the thousand point system, I guess. You can de definitely not l win a world championship in the first race, but you can lose one, isn't that right? Oh, 100%. You know, even if you're having a, a crappy day, you, you need to still put in, you need to you need to finish as close as you can behind whoever's leading that day. And um, because I know, you know, they'll only include, I, I still believe it might only be three races out of the four, um, but still, you just never know when you might be having a shit race, but you sh you <laughs> there could be more shit to come and you've got to really work through it and you've got to keep pushing and no matter where you're coming, you've got to push hard. Yeah, you're dead right. It is only three out of the four, but like you say, you don't know what shit's to come. No, no, and it's, you know, a lap at a time, and you don't know what the next boat in front of you is going to do, and yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot of variables out there, so you just got to keep pushing. And I'll just touch on the talent of the man that I'm talking to. I remember going around the racetrack with him in 2009 in Belgium, and he actually let go of the rope. The rope was gone. And somehow he caught it as it was going past by the by the back handle. Is that true? Uh, it could be true. Um, and don't ask me to do it again. <laughs> but that's the talent of the man at the time. Absolutely fit, supreme athlete, and therefore that's the reason he's won three of our world championships. Thanks for your time, Wayne. Ha have a good week, and hopefully we might be able to catch up for a water or two. Absolutely, mate. Bit of lemon in there, it'll be fine. Cheers. Guys, I found myself attracted to the bar at Drifters Wharf, and I just happened to find. Danny Cropper, a.k.a. DC, the founder, proprietor of DC Race Skis and Race Boots. Welcome, mate. How you going, buddy? Good. I'd, I'd say what brings you along, but obviously uh, very, very renowned heritage in water ski racing all over the world. Um, but obviously you're tied in with a few crews here this week as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, uh, we've got our little boat down here. We've got a junior boy running with Patrick Valancourt. And um, uh, my two boys are driving and observing for another another bunch behind 1350 with the girls. So yeah, we've got a we've got a pretty good pretty big crew down here. So obviously a fair bit of money in making skis and, and boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish it was. Nah, mate, I've, I I haven't done it for a little while, but I'm I've started back again. You know, it's uh, it's been a, a a long break, unfortunately, but that's what happens. Yeah. Only joking, mate. So we'll we'll go. How did you come about to, uh, to decide to make your own skis and then boots? Um, mate, it all started at school. You know, we used to muck around and chop skis up and try and make them. I grew up on the Hawkesbury River, so every afternoon we had tinnies and boats and we were out skiing and, you know, trying to figure out how we could make stuff better. And, uh, yeah, we did all right. And when he refers to tinnies, he doesn't mean beer in a tin can. He means little tin boats that had outboard motors on the back that could, you, you could actually ski behind then because I'm tipping a tinny wouldn't pull me or you out now. No, no, no. We get in them for ballast. That's all we do now. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. A tinny with a 25 on it, but a bit of a racing 25, so it was good for mucking around with and, and doing all that. It was actually quite funny because we used to go to school in the tinny, in the same tinny. So from our place down to Wiseman's and you know, it was awesome. Great place to grow up. Yeah, naturally mate. But, uh, so the technology behind the boots, obviously it's changed over the years, but then it seems to have sort of reached a peak. And um, although there are some different ones out there and, and they're still basically the same as 
I've known for the last 10 or 15 or maybe even 20 years. Yeah, no, well, a guy by the name of Dick Murdoch in America made bindings a long, long time ago that were race bindings. They used to call them lock-in bindings. And um, they haven't changed a lot, but your, your technology, like you said, with your rubber and your different compounds and stuff like that, um, arch supports, you know, foam that you're putting inside, you can either have it soft or hard. And, mate, the soft ones are so much better because you're actually feeling it. And if your bindings aren't connected to your foot properly, your ski can move an inch and you won't even know about it. It can move, you know, a couple of inches maybe. But if your feet, uh, if your feet are tight in your bindings, mate, you stay straight on that ski the whole time. So we try and make them like that. Well, that must have been my problem. My bindings must have been the right fit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've got to be careful with that, mate. <laughs> so, no, but th that's the thing, you know. We, Like I said, we used to muck around with skis, um, started manufacturing, you know, our own stuff a long time ago. And the bindings, you know, uh, that was a thing that we, we were trying to make them so that they fit people. So it's not a stock size. You can make a stock size, but you know what? If you're going to spend that money and do what these blokes are doing out here, you want something that fits properly. You know, you, you want to start, you know, with the best stuff. Yeah, you do. And I know that over the years you've custom made, as you said, you used to do for yourself, but you've, you've custom made for many world champions. We won't bother to name, name names or you know, or, them, or count them yeah we, we saw her running around earlier today <laughs> but um um yeah you just you custom fit to what they want they come to you here's an idea can you make it and then you go away and make it and they go oh can we do this can we do that yeah. and it's kind of like i guess tailor-made golf clubs to an extent where you can say oh, i need a little bit of weight here i need this i need that it's very interesting when you get into it. Oh, absolutely. Not being a, a golfer by any means myself, but you know what? I'm assuming that that's all that custom made stuff, you know, is, is personal, you know, you, you need it. Because everyone's different. Everyone's feet are different. Everyone's weights are different, heights, skis they use, everything else like that. So we just try and keep everyone, you know, sort of on the same page you know when you're when you're making the bindings or when you're making the ski we used to custom make skis and everything else with people you know as well you know the proctor family we used to do a lot of stuff with them and especially bindings and you know they both did pretty good yeah they did and also it's, it's like interesting to hear you talk about the arch support and that now i guess a few years ago that wasn't something that people thought of no, not at all, mate. We, we were doing um, custom-made arches, but the problem is that when you're pulling your bindings down pretty tight, if you've got something fairly hard underneath your foot, it was hurting your arch more than anything else. So then we had to soften it up and it all came down to manufacturing differently again, you know? Yeah, well, that's right. And, and I guess it's the same as the ski and the bindings are the athlete's tools as the boats and the engines are the driver's tools. And I know yeah. from being around for a little bit that... There's boats running around out there that drivers have actually said, I want weight here, I want weight there. So it's, it's very interesting to see that it's very similar. And all the performance is different, you know. Again, you know, you just got guys that want special things. And you know what, I've made um, bindings and skis for people and I've said to them, you know, why do you want it like that? And they go, oh, because it's going to work. And when it doesn't work, you know, you just go, okay, well, that's another test, you know, sort of we can give that to the dog. So, but yeah, mate, there's, uh, again, with, with your skis, you can buy standard skis these days off, off the guys in America uh, with Maha and stuff like that. Um, again with mine, you know, we've made them a little bit longer. Todd Haig, skier, legend from America. We did a lot of stuff with Todd and you know what, the guy still uses our skis and has done his whole life. Yeah, well that's it and I know that obviously materials have been a question over time, whether it's composite, whether it's wood and graphite, whether it's just wood, but it's very interesting to see I'm pretty confident in saying that most of the skis going around out there are still pretty much timber. Yeah, oh look, probably 90% of them, you know, there was always, there was bushies, there's, uh, you know, uh, um, 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 CS6s, you know, there's there's quite a few guys that have mucked around with different ones and, and done, you know, and done things to skis to try and make them better, make them faster, make them easier. But you know what, it's just, you know, just not getting too excited about it, you know. It, it works good. The old kiss theory, keep it simple. Well, you know what? It's, that's what you've got to try and do. There is a few things you can squeak on them and do that sort of stuff to, to make them a little fancy when you get the standard ones. doesn't take much. But they're your secrets. You're not giving them away, right? Mate, absolutely, you know. 
That's why you're on the big bucks. Danny Cropper, DC, thanks very much for your time. Enjoy your week here at Gosford, and good luck to your skiers out on the water that you're using your gear. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Over to you guys in the studio. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. from long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view to the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways to secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. building a new way of life. Create your story on the New South Wales Central Coast. There's more to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast Juice. Dear problems. Can't be dones. Impossibles. You're invited to our place. Where makers make. Doers do. And problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff. We make possible. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply. Anything, any shots from the other end? Yeah? 
Say hi to my friends <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> Sounds cute. I don't know. He's probably not watching it now. You're not going to shoot these guys? Uh, the exhibition stuff? Uh, well, Arizona would be seven hours different. He called a friend called me yesterday. He said he said, no, seven. Seven. And I'm just scoring. Hey, I'm watching the live feed. Are you the, uh, this camera person? I've heard good things so far. They say you do a good job. I, didn't have, I have, we, we can't hear anything though. You know? Can't hear any of the commentation. Sorry ladies and gentlemen, uh, the skiers are in the water and going, this one's been dumped on us, so we're going to get straight to it. Right there we see Top Gun Maverick, that's Angelo Mesmomo doing the driving, observing is Mark Johnson and skiing is Nicholas Patterson. Right next to him, I believe, is Infinity Racing. I'm going to say Infinity Racing with James Kennedy, Jamie Allen and Indiana Kennedy. Behind that, cause an F2, Jason Carlton's driving, Shane Henderson doing the observing and skiing is Maddie Kennedy. Snappy 177, it was also, but oh, we're looking at the contractor currently. Neil Donald doing the driving, Jamie Clancy the observing, and Corin Donald do, is the skier. This is for the 70 mile an hour class, that is. Right next to it, Axion. Um, that is not on my list. They're on the screen. That's the problem when things get dumped on us and no one tells us anything. Well, actually, in one of my favourite Belgian boats is currently driving. I would love to know who the skier is, but we do not have a sheet. Uh, we do know who's skier my Top Gun Maverick. That's the 80 mile hour class. That's Nicholas Patterson doing the skiing there. Nick Pato, also known as Tick Pato, comes through the top turn comes out of the top ten, sorry, in first place. Snappy 177 right next to him, Carl Johnson doing the driving, uh, Luke Wycombe doing the observing, and Lee Lau Mao is the skier. Now this class, Connor, is a little bit different to what we've seen over the last couple of days. It's capped at 80 mile an hour. The inboards definitely have an advantage because they're able to hold this 80 mile an hour speed, um, you know, through the corners where the outboards tend to drop a little bit of speed. Also, there is a fine line, though, with these big boats uh, trying to spool over, keeping that pace without um, coming, going too far. Something we uh, just spotted, Cause and F2 having some dramas in the start line. They haven't got out of the start line just yet. We forgot to mention Team Paradise with Darren Osmond Lee's driving, Craig Laylor observing, and Corey Laylor, stretchy boy, 
Scan at the back is on the outside in pole five. They don't cause a Corey Laylor stretch because of his height, everybody. But there goes a Top Gun Maverick around the bottom corner here in the lead. Snappy 177 with uh, Li Lao Mao closely following. We just had a look at Nick Pato there doing the skiing on our live view image. Big ups from him. Give me some more, Angelo. Buddy, you're an 80 mile an hour, as you're probably already on 80. Connor, we've seen this throughout the weekend. Snappy 177 is a fast boat. It's keeping up with uh, Top Gun Maverick. I'd like to see these two swap poles and see, like to see what happens. These guys from America are absolutely crazy with their speed and, <laughs> in, and these snappy boats. Coming into the bottom corner here is also what looks like 1648 F2. Infinity. You can see Maverick. Top Gun Maverick charging up the back, uh, definitely making a, getting away from Snap, Snappy 377, but Snappy 377 is not dropping off. Team Paradise also a fast boat, but these guys are uh, capped at 80 mile an hour, as we said earlier. Just had a look at the contractor there with Corrine Donald at the back. Got some view of our, um, I'd say our under 14s, junior 10 to under 14s. That is. Dragon there on the inside. Matthew Smith doing the driving, Ben Casey doing the observing, and Tom Casey doing the scan. They're doing an awesome job. Awesome scan there from Tom Casey. Causing glamour on the outside of Dragon. Wayne Taylor doing the driving, Adam Wilson doing the observing, and Billy Elliott. Um, doing the skiing. Billy Elliot, he's a character of a kid. I wonder if he's from England. What's more impressive than his skiing is his mullet. Have you seen that one? No, I haven't. I was going to make a Billy Elliot joke about ballet. Snappy 377. Anyone see that movie? Snappy 377, I believe. Got two, two different things saying 177 or 377, but one of the snappy boats absolutely having a run down there on the outside. Carl Johnson doing the driving, Luke Wycombe doing the observing, and Lee Lao Mao. Having a, great, having a great run there. These guys may use uh, shorter ropes from what we've seen earlier today. Um, only getting to 80 mile an hour, you don't need to be back quite as far. Also, come out of the corners quicker with shorter ropes, they're able to step back on it. If they are slowing down for corners, a lot of them will not. Lee Lam out on the charge. Right, we've got a big cluster of boats. Um, Axion being the biggest one there out the back. Out in front, I believe that is 1648F2. Closely followed by Infinity Racing, Axion, The Contractor, and The Dragon. Got a close up here of, I believe, Infinity Racing. Great job from these guys here. Video you racing is Indiana Kennedy. Indiana Kennedy's been doing a fair bit of skiing in the last 12 months. She's right down from Victoria. I actually skied with her dad, uh, Jared Kennedy. Oh. Jared Kennedy. Connections. Yeah, the Kennedy having a great run there, as we can see a good, a good footage of her on the live stream right now. Snappy in the lead currently um, with Top Gun Maverick, uh, pretty much on their tail. Uh, we've got a zero, zero second split here. 
Um, Team Barris, Paradise, three seconds behind. The Dragon, 24 seconds behind. Axian, 26 seconds behind. Causing Glamour, 29 seconds behind. The Contractor, F2, 30 seconds behind. Infinity, 36 seconds behind. The Kids Boat, two minutes behind. And 17.48. Connor, as always today, we have a race on our hands between Snappy 377 and Top Gun Maverick. Outboard, out, outboard versus inboard, what better battle? Currently enjoying good beverages here. Red Bull gives, gives us our commentators wings and our skiers out there wings to go as fast as they can. Without Red Bull, uh, they would be a lot slower than what we're seeing right now. Lilo Mo, up from uh, Northern Victoria and Nicholas Patterson battling it out here in front of us. Snappy 377 and Top Gun Maverick. Have you seen the movie? Of course, man. Maverick it's one wins. of my favorite movies. Maverick wins. Good image of Nick, Nick Patterson. Patterson right there. Doing it pretty easy. Fairly really good skier, Nick Patterson. I'm better. Oh, well, Mitchell claims he's better, but is <laughs> currently sitting here drinking Red Bull, not doing the skiing. What's going on, Mitch? I just finished a burger, too. I don't know if that's athlete quality. Nick has quite an advantage here being on the inside uh, in pole one. Does have the inboard. Whoever's driving Snappy 377, Carl that, Johnson, you're a weapon, mate. Deserves a medal, really. Comes all the way from the USA and is absolutely toweling up the Australians. I think he will get a medal. He's in second. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams really do come true at the World's Water Ski Racing Championships here. And look at this. We've got a nice... I'm going to say that's cause an F2 out the front there, closely followed by Infinity Racing. The kids boats, look, the kids boats pretty cool. That's got Abby Kate Evans scan behind it. Abby's um, been running around in our 60 mile an hour class, absolutely causing havoc. Kids boat really is the kids boat. This boat gets around only tows the kids. They also get around with a pretty cool um, bus they've got kitted out and fitted it out. Uh, something cool though we are seeing here is Axian coming across one of the massive big Belgian boats absolutely having a blast we haven't seen much of this boat in the last couple of days um, it's great to see them out there I think they might have thrown a late entry in just to get them going here we can see Nick Patterson still maintaining the lead about to see another split from them Nick Patterson hoping to take out the 80 mile an hour crown, if you would say so. These international challenges are pretty cool, a little light hearted, takes the pressure off, pressure off compared to the, the intense nature of the last three races. As we can see, just like the big boys, Top Gun Maverick moving out into a, a further outside pod, say they're in about pole six or seven, you know, where three to four laps in now, that's where the better water's gonna be. We've got some splits going on here. We've got Top Gun Maverick in the lead. Closely followed by um, a gaggle of boats. Snappy 377 for the win for the second place, currently 11 seconds behind Nick Pato. Indiana Kennedy absolutely putting off, sorry. Lee Lao Mao putting the burners on. Awesome footage from the guys here at Blendline TV, providing the best um, live production we've had so far. I'd also like to take a chance to um, thank some of our sponsors here today. Mercury Marine Australia New Zealand. Mercury Marine Australia New Zealand is a live stream present head, presenting partner. They're doing in association with dealers. Um, we want to thank 
Marie, Mercury Marine Australia for their support of our live stream in conjunction with Bay City Marine, Water Sports Marine, TR Marine, Race Marine and Brisbane Marine who have gone, bo go wow, gone boldly and taken the opportunity to bring you all the action from the IWWF World Water Ski Racing Championships. If you can't be with us here, we'll be there with you. Oh yeah. yeah very good, off the top of the head, Connor. Yes, I didn't read a single thing. MySportsTape.com, enter Waterski 10 for a 10% discount. Sports tape an important thing for all ski racers out there who need to tape up their ankles, knees, arms, back, head, eyes, all in that order. As you can see, Connor, we've got Infinity Racing here chasing F2, sitting in their wash. They're going to creep on that hunt, up on that 100 metre marker soon and jump out the wash. You can see they're already starting to head over. We're watching that on the live stream now, the legs are just absolutely taking a toll on this rough water. Pretty, oh wow, here's the big accent machine. Listen to that. The roar of the Belgian masterpiece. Absolutely battling out with Not infinity. Not giving them much room on there. Look at the exit of that corner there, Connor. That's mental. You can see that water that's coming out of the front, front means their ballast is full. <laughs> and I tell you what, there's a lot of ballast in that bad boy. Scary day if you got to cross with that wash. We're looking at the legend Lilau Mao right now, coming around behind Snappy377. Absolute machine from all the way over in the US of A. Come, come down under for a bit of world water ski racing here. I just want to be clear because I was talking about uh, the snappy machine, not Lee Lao Mao, who comes from Queensland. Young Billy Elliot, I believe. If we get the right angle here, we might be able to see the mullet. There's the mullet flicking Whoa, out the back seat. Oh, <laughs> holy moly! Young Billy Elliot. Does that add five flat. mile an hour? Does that add five mile an hour? It's getting faster. It's getting it's getting tangled. He probably needs to br brush and condition that out. Make love to it later on. Billy Elliot, a machine, a mullet. A champion, Australian. Not from the movie. Doesn't do ballet. Won't comment on anything else from Billy Elliot. Off into the distance, the mighty mullet goes. As you can see, most of the boats here are powered by the big Mercury 300R machines. New, uh, not I would say new, but fairly new V8 um, four-stroke engines we've got here. 300Rs have absolutely dominated the last couple of years. When they come in, we saw a massive influx. Uh, you can't really get them here at the moment because there's so many, um, so many people want one. Um, but yeah, awesome piece of machinery that they are. Even in America, you see all the photos of the big. Um, Boats with four of them on the back, five of them on the back. Wish I had that much money. Good alive split here. Top Gun Maverick currently in front. Snappy 377, 16 seconds behind. Team Paradise, 30 seconds behind. Currently looking at uh, Infinity on the live stream. Yeah. That would be Indiana Kennedy doing the scan there. A little steady out there.
Right, we've got some awesome fit footage of the contractor all the way up from Victoria. Corinne Donald's been looking forward to this one. They didn't get to race because we were running late on Saturday, so I'm sure she'll be happy to be out there. We want to say a big thank you to all our um, IWWF officials, volunteers, and anyone who really put this event together, made this event happen, because without them, we can't race. I want to thank the, the girls on the finish boat. They just sent me a text message. They said they could hear us all the way out on the big yacht that is the finish boat. Hello, ladies, and I think there's a couple gentlemen on there, but really without these people sticking it out for hours on end today and putting months and months of preparation to get this event going, we wouldn't be here currently sitting in the beautiful Gosford um, in Brisbane waters watching our, the best of the best compete today. Bit of, a, bit of a moment there from Corinne Donald. Got a pretty flash wetsuit she's got there. Looks pr pretty new from Shyside. Awesome footage there, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, Nick Pato doing an absolute crack and run there. Top Gun Maverick leading currently, Snappy following very closely with Lee Lao Mao. Corey Layla with Team Paradise um, out the back there. Stretchy Boy is currently fading away. Stretchy's boy. Stretchy Boy's name is. Or are they low? There we go. No more nicknames, otherwise Chuck's gonna get the shits again. We love Chuck. Blue flag for Nick Patterson. Here we go, it's time to ramp up. Blue flag, Nick pato has gone, oh yeah. Only one more lap to go, brother. And so he's on his way. Top Gun Maverick, it used to be formerly known as Stinger, that's a pretty internationally na known boat, has just hit the bang, gone, 80 mile an hour, flat out, Nick Pato, hold on buddy, because they're not slowing down. Angelo Mezzamomo, absolutely on the send button. It is unfortunate for Axion, they are one lap down, but they're not quite falling behind uh, Top Gun Maverick too much. See that beautiful blue, blue flag. Some of the greatest things that a ski will ever see that blue flag. As with Snappy comes through the finish line with Lila Mao. Oh, that, that that would be a Kelly Linsel on on the on the blue flag. Uh, also known as Mum. I tend to call her Babe a couple times. Whoa, hello. I call her Mother. You call her Mrs. Linsel. Here comes Contractor. Coming down with the contractor, Corinne Donald. Corinne Donald. Causing glamour also at the back there, coming through in the under 10th division. Oh, boat down, I repeat, boat is down. Ski looks okay in the water. Causing maybe. Causing F2. Don't quote me. 16.48 F2, unfortunately, has stopped just up the back on the home stretch. Zooming in on the Dragon with Tom Casey doing an unreal run. Does heaps of skiing out in the country of New South Wales. That sort of ski racing out in Wagga, a bit in Wagga, a bit in, um, what's that place called? Far away. Far Tom, away. Tom Casey's quite a strong st uh, skier, trying to take after his brother who skied in, uh, Jock Casey skied in Junior Boys earlier today. He's our wild cards for, one of our wild cards for Australia here. Whoa, here comes Top Maverick charging down the front straight. These cameras are very deceiving. He's a while away, do not worry just yet. Someone who is coming past for their blue flag lad, the contractor. Whoa, 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 
here comes our boats. Here we go. Top Gun Maverick coming in for a finish in the end of an hour. Class. Kelly Linzer will go to look for the checkered flag. Angelo is like, give me the checkered flag. Quick swap from mum, Kelly, quick, I mean. Quick swap from mother and into a finish for 80 mile an hour. Nick Pato gives it the berries. Angelo Mezzamomo, Mark Johnson and Nicholas Patterson for a win in 80 mile an hour. Uh, mile an hour also known as 142 class kilometers for those who don't understand the mile an hour. That is a sore Nick Patterson, we can see in the live stream. Hand down, buddy, you only did 25 minutes plus a lap, but we won't go too far into that. We're looking for Snappy. We're looking for Paradise. Big up from, from Axion right there, we can see Axion for the finish. Pumping, pumping the, the fist bump. I would love to know who it is. It's just not on my sheet currently right here. Pretty cool wetsuit we've got going on there. Snappy coming in for a, a cool finish with Lee Lao Mao as well as I believe, is that Infinity Racing? I think Team Paradise has just taken second place over the line over Snappy. Wow, Corey Laylor, what a menace of, of ski racing. Team pa Paradise has just stolen the, the second place of Snappy by one second over the line. One whole second, that is incredible stuff here. Riveting, riveting stuff. Anyone told you men's was a main race, <laughs> you, they'd be wrong. <laughs> this one is. 80 mile an hour is the sum, is crazy. And here comes the kids' boat. Wow, I think Kate Evans absolutely hammering it down. She put the foot down. She's gone, Dad, I want it. Give me the finish. Go, 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 go. Ian Payne doing the observing here. Kids boat on fire right now. All the way from Wagga Wagga, otherwise known as Wagga. <laughs> I don't think some places in Australia you can half the name, but some places you can't. Sounds, it's so nice they name Woi Woi can never be called Woi. However, here comes the dragon, Tom Casey. Slightly behind them, the contractor and cause and glamour just behind them too. Tom Casey coming in for a strong finish here. Just in front is Abby Kate Evans. Battling it out for the junior 10 under under 14 class. Well, do you know, uh, Mitch, how we've, how we've been able to keep up with our splits and tracking? Living it live, Race Live has been our GPS provider for this racing here as a new uh, system that we've been enforcing in our Australian racing here, and they've been doing an awesome job. They've got an awesome tracking system. If you search up livingitlive.com SRA, you will find... Oh, I, I sort of messed up that, but don't worry. Search up something along those lines and you will find Race Live and you'll be able to track the whole race just off your phone, computer, or any device that you'd like to use. Great finish here from Tom Casey. I'm sure his brother, Jock Casey, is cheering, cheering him along on the side. He's managed to just hold out the contractor. So, uh, Mitch, while we're waiting... Oh. Actually, no, causing glamour, far too close. We've got to keep on the race here. Causing glamour, accident, absolutely having a great run. Billy Elliott, the mullet to not be messed with, is flying in the back. It's, it's curly, it's blonde, it's hot. Go, you good thing, Billy Elliott, for a finish here. Pass the maritime boat. He's got his eyes set on the finish line. He's given, he's looked, oh, bit of bumps. It, 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 still on the water. Would be cool if he gave it up now, but he doesn't, so he comes in for a finish there. That's, that ski's almost bigger than him, Connor. Yeah, his feet look fairly far apart. Must be borrowing his dad's ski. Yeah, it looks like it. Well, Mitch, while we're still here, what are we sitting in today? We're sitting in a lovely tiny home um, made by the guys at XL um, Building. They do tiny homes now. That's our good friend Zach Burns has lended us um, 
this tiny home to use today as our commentary box. How, how good is it? Well, the aircon works and that all that matters. Yeah, there's just it's just sensational here today. Um, look, that is our first of our international um, challenge races. We had fun, didn't we, Mitch? Yeah, yeah, I had fun. I mean, this was probably the most intense race we've seen all day. Look. Don't go away yet, we do have one more. One more, and it's going to be just as good as this one, if not better. There's a couple of crowd favourites in this next one. Nash Robertson, he's a local from Running Riot. Are quite, you serious? Quite a loose driver, though. Nash Robertson, the best outboard driver in Australia? No, in Gosford. In Gosford, just in best, Gosford. best outboard driver in Gosford. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but he had the fastest um, return leg at um, Wentworth 100. Yep, you, you would be correct. Also, Ben Hackett is borrowing his uncle's boat. Ooh. Ben Hackett in the driver's seat. Yeah, these next races, they're not capped. Uh, I can see Hell's Arsenal out there. Um, I think we might, if Mark Boyer is the one skiing, I think we're going to get up around that 100 mile an hour mark. Mark Boyer is absolute menace on the ski. It's always cool to see some of those veterans out there give it a good crack. Some would say the fathers of ski racing are faster when they've, you know, had an axiom. Had some heartburn tablets. <laughs> Might be faster than the young kids, man. Has That's what I've been told. Has your dad beaten you yet? I've never been to dad's time, as he tells me every time. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe when I start taking Nexium. I don't even know what that is. I'm not old enough yet. Really? Yep. All right, well, we're going to let these guys finish. Um, Catch ya. Hell's Arsenal, formerly known as Hellbent. Oh, not Hellbent, sorry. Hell's Arsenal. Hell, Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Um, a massive record winning boat um, with Mark Cranny driving, Zig Wolfley skiing, and um, Pete Proctor. Cool. Well, we'll catch you guys soon. Uh, there's one more race left of the day. Don't go anywhere. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. from long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view to the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways to secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. building a new way of life. Create your story on the New South Wales Central Coast. to East Coast Juice than you might realise. 
The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yogurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast Juice. Dear problems. Can't be dones. Impossibles. You're invited to our place. Where makers make, doers do. And problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff. We make possible. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.
Hi guys, we're back here at Drifters Wharf. I'm with uh, Jack Simmons here. How are you feeling today? How's your your experience today so far? Been a good day, mate. It's the first sort of rest we've had. Um, we had this morning women's helping out Rachel Stapleton with the Coldies F1. Uh, Demi Simmons in juniors with the Team 65 Temper F2 outboard, and then back again now with Jack with the Iron Coldies F1. So. Mate's been flat out, gone boat to boat, GoPro to GoPro, and just, yeah, trying to maximise their results. So you've been heavily involved with, I mean, the whole Team 65. If you were talking Coldies F1, Temper F2, look, all the Temper boats sort of, you're all around there, and the brand new boat, 1350. Jack, proud new skier of that one. Um, how has the, um, how has the lead up to Worlds, uh, like, what is your experience with the lead up to Worlds? How has it affected you? I know your sister's involved. How was the, how, how was the lead up for you? Tell me about training, that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's been a bit different for me this year. It's, it's our first Worlds for our family. Um, obviously, Jack and the Cold Jakes had a bit of pre prerequisite as well as Rachel Stapleton, but a bit different for us. Also, and me not skiing, so that changed things up a little bit. I, I was able to help out a bit more with the boats. Uh, just so much goes into it the, behind the scenes that nobody would understand unless you're you know, heavily involved in it. It's awesome to come up here to Gosford. It's a spectacle and really showcase our sport. Yeah, awesome. So tell us a bit, a little bit about the new boat. Uh, you had a great run last weekend at um, Wentworth. How has it been? It looked amazing this morning. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, was the, what was the process there? Dave said, we want a bigger boat, and you said, hoorah. Well, pretty much. That's exactly how it felt. And, Watched an island out there this morning, looking at the, pr the princess, and think, God, it doesn't deserve to be in this salt water. But um, yeah, shout out to, to Mark Siemens who done the build with the boat. The thing's immaculate, mate. There's nothing, you know, nothing else. No money you could have spared on that. And let's go. Um, let's go a bit of world racing here. Who's your pick for today? I'm, I'm going to say leave out Coldy because we know you're going to say Coldy's your pick. Give us, give us your opinion. Who's who's got one and two? We'll say we'll, we'll give Coldy one because I know you put him first. But who's got second and third? I got uh, Coldy one, Carter two, and I reckon Gratz three. Oh yeah, stick with the Gratz here, yeah, the old gun. Um, but yeah, that's really good to see. Um, Drifters, how great is it? Awesome, beers flowing, food is awesome by the way. Sensational, salt and pepper squid, would recommend. What do you reckon? Yeah, I walked down along the pavilion there and I was wondering where everyone had gone and I walked up into Drifters and it's packed up here. So, no, it's good to support the local hospitality industry and, um, you know, support Gosford because they're helping us showcase our sport to the, you know, the wider community. And look, you can't get better than that view. So, we'll leave you with a, with a picture of Strike Force coming around the corner along with Mojo and um, a couple of other boats there. I can't really tell right now, but that's all from us. Back to you guys.
fight. You were on the camera. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are not far away. First class veterans, 40 to 50 men, Team Paradise, Darren Osmotherly, Craig Layla, and Barton Dahl, all the way from South Australia. Grid one, pole two, Cosmos, Cameron McKenzie, Adam William, Adam Adam Wilson. Adam Wilson likes to think of himself as a bit of a famous character, but he's, he's fairly unknown. Scheme is uh, Shane Henderson. Group one, poll three, Ice Ice Beatty, Guido DeVos, Mike, the guy whose last name I can't pronounce, what was his name? Oh, I can do it, hold on, which one? Mike, oh, he told me, Mush, Mush Hot. We'll try that again later. I, I did ask him how to pronounce his name, but have forgotten how to do it now that I'm in the commentary box. Skiing is Christelle Spiens. Hell's Arsenal, Brandon McGlynn driving his father-in-law's boat, Sam Perry observing and Mark Boyer, the father-in-law skiing. The contractor out of one, Grip 1, Pole 5, F2, uh, Neil Donald, Corinne Donald has jumped off the ski. She's observing now for Christoph Wondrasek from Austria. Buddy, do you need me to do the pronunciations? Watch this. Wondrasek. Perfect pronunciation. Veteran 60 plus. This class is probably one of the biggest we've seen all day. Six Someone break out the 140s. 60 plus. Grid 2, pole 1, kids boat. Ian Payne, Ricky Evans and Chris Rydell from, from uh, Belgium. Oh. Grid 2, pole 2, Temper F2, Jack Coldrake. Uh, they've got a TBA for the Observer. Uh, Randy Lewis from the USA skiing. Oh. Grid 2, pole 3, Revolution Racing, De David McMillan, Lee Lau Mao and Linda Ritchie. Grid two, pole four. Uh, boats three, seven, three. Uh, we originally had Zorro there, but they've been scratched. But uh, not sure who the driver and observer there, but Ron Ross is skiing that one. Grid two, pole five. Thunderbolt, my man, Benny Hackett, Brad Brannigan, and Ernst Ortlieb from Austria. Grid two, pole six. F2 Wild, Leonard Frederick. Uh, Dwayne Grubbs and John Stewart skiing from the US of A. Grid 3, pole 1, Top Gun Maverick, Angelo Mazomo, Mark Johnston and Darren Isaac skiing. This next one, he's, this is the loose driver. This is the one we've been talking about. The, uh, the, the Prince of Gosford. Prince of Gosford. Grid 3, pole 2, running right, Nash Robertson, Prince Ooh. of Gosford. Josh Moxon observing and Colin Mark skiing. Grid 3, Pole 3, Harakari, Rod Senior, Brendan Fogarty, and Wayne Duggan. Grid 3, Pole 4, Infinity Racing, James Kennedy, Madison Kennedy, and Glenn Ford. Grid 3, Pole 5, Causen F2, Jason Cartledge, Ben Gully, and Noel Cartledge. I, I, I look, honestly, Mitch, I can't look past the greatness of Nash Robinson. He does have an in, in inboard uh, on the inside of him. He, so if he's smart enough, he'll jump straight in their wash. Look. I don't know if we can put Smart and Nash Robinson together. However, he's going to give it a good crack anyway. I don't. I don't think he has an orange crown, so he just maybe he maybe having to take the crown off for the day and put the helmet on. Look, it's 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 a hard life. It's it's tough at the top, really. That that's what all I've got to say. having a look through um, some of our entries here. Ice Ice Baby, um, one of our Belgian guys. Um, big fan of this. Mike Mahunt, Mahunt. I think that's how you said it. I talked to him for about 15 minutes before trying to pronounce his name. Messed up every time, but we've had a, we've shared a beer together. Christelle Spizzens. Excited to see how she goes in the veterans 50 under 60s. So really this is just a veterans race, you know. Menace of the world, um, veteran worlds, really. That's a big 60s class. I didn't know we had that many old blokes. Where are your 40s and 50s? I'm surprised Daniel Graziano didn't back up. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he's, he's decided he just wants to win some men's F1 race. Mm. Did he not think about... He'd make the 60 plus, wouldn't he? Oh, gee. Who's your daddy? <laughs> right, says my daddy.
Oh, well, look, <laughs> you know that's um, something that uh, Nash Robinson probably should have used to keep his um, hand stuck to the wheel at Wentworth 100 was our um, mysportstape.com enter water ski 10 for a 10% discount to keep your hands on the wheel and don't get you caught with a photo with both your hands off the wheel. Oh, trouble. Trouble in paradise, they say. We're currently looking at Ice Ice Baby and the kids' boat. Definitely the kids' boat, but for now, it's for the veterans, it's for the old blokes and the, um, the vintage ladies. I won't say old ladies. Wow, we're just looking at a boat just below. It believes to be Nash Robertson, a key driver and a, a driver, formerly an observer, but has stepped into the driver's seat. I can't believe greatness when I see it. Best, Gosford, best driver in Gosford. We're having a zoom in on the live stream. The Prince of Gosford, has he got his crown on this is afternoon? He, is he, is Mitch, is he picking his nose? Don't put it there. No, no, Nash, don't put it in your mouth. Oh, we've just seen absolute scenes here from the commentary box. Nash Robinson, I repeat, has picked his nose and eaten it. <laughs> this boat might look calm now, but I think these things are about to loosen up. The Prince of Gosford will put on a show. Beautiful 300R on the back of it. Mercury Marine absolutely dominating the scene when it when we're talking engines around here. Nash has actually just had the privilege to take this boat over from the ownership from his dad. His dad's gifted it to him. Um, Nash has had a good season learning uh, learning the ropes. Um, he's done pretty well, but Lucy Goosey. Lucy Goosey doesn't Lucy's hold on. Loose is fast. That is definitely co correct. Win or swim is pretty much Nash's motto. <laughs> I actually was talking to Nash and he says do, rules don't apply. It. It's only if you get caught that's when it's a problem. Look, these guys are just just down the road from Drifter's Wharf. We're having a current look. We're having a look at it on the live streams right now. Home of our hospitality here at the World Water Ski Racing Championship. Um, I t I'll tell you what, Mitch. I'm a good fan of Stone and Wood on tap, and they've got it on tap, so I'm pretty happy there. Um, heaps of functions there. Always something to do on a Saturday night. Heaps of bands come around there. It's, it's always good, good fun, and. Um, Good fun over there. <laughs> Look, guys, if you're looking to buy merchandise from the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Chances Championships ceremoniative gear, including T-shirts and hoodies and cool coolers and caps. We, um, and they're available at the merchandise test near the paddock entrance or online at the tr at www.trybooking.com forward slash capital C M A Z S. I just got word we've just hit the 10 minutes to start guys not too long before we'll be up and racing 10 minutes it can go very quickly especially for nervous skiers on the deck of the boat there Mitch as we take a look at the the lineup we've got who have we got who have we picked to win well, let's first have a look at uh, Varen's 40 to under 50s Team Paradise or Cosmos Darren Bart, Barton Dahl or Shane Henderson? Who's your pick? I'm going to go BJ Dahl. Look, I'm going to have to go the, swing the other way. Go Shane Henderson. Now we're looking at veterans 50 under 60s. Look, we've got a little bit more here. I, I've got a clear winner right now. What are you thinking? Christoph Spence, Mark Boyer or Christoph Wondrek? Look, I'm going to back Austria on this one. 
going to back Austria. Christoph. Christoph, the man, the myth, the legend. I, I do have uh, the team of Hell's Arsenal to win with Matt, Mark Boyer. I just think it will be too, quite, too quick for the rest of the squad. Now, here's veteran 60 plus. Big class here. We've got a total of over 10 boats. This is just absolute madness here. Two Austrians in this thing. Who are you giving a good red hot crack here? I can't go past the Prince of Gosford. Nashi Robinson out of out of grid. Colin Marks, absolute uh, a menace look, but I'm have to go somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna have to go across the pond. Across the pond, Randy Lewis is my pick today. Temper F2, David Coltrane doing the driving. Don't know who's observing, but Randy Lewis is my pick to win from all the way from the US of A. On the live stream, we got some good footage of our some of our volunteers today sitting out of boat all day. They've, They've really put the hard yards in, putting the effort so that we can all have fun out there today. Awesome drone footage here from guys at Blendline TV. It's awesome to see um, our live streaming upgrading every time we do a, one of these big events here, making it better for all you guys at home to be part of the event without actually ha having to be here. But me and Mitch wouldn't be in the comfort that we are in if it wasn't for XL um, Building, who have put together this tiny home that we're currently sitting in. Awesome, air-conditioned, fully furnished. These tiny homes can go anywhere you want. You hook them up, take them to where you are. They fit in the back, um, the backyard. They can ha they can house, house grandma or grandpa or both. We've got a nice little bedroom area, kitchen with dining, and also a lovely bathroom this here. This one we're in, actually. This one, Connor, is actually for sale. Wow. wow, really? Really? So what you're saying is people should get around this and maybe pick it up. They can go straight from Gosford here to home. I know what I'd be doing. Exactly, I'd be dialing that number here. Come along to the tiny home, have a look for the number on the side and give it a ring and you'll talk to Zach Burns about buying yourself a tiny home. Tiny home doesn't necessarily for, mean for tiny people. Can have big people in there. I want to shout out all the bars around the Central Coast putting on our live stream for all the guys there to watch. If you're at the bar currently and you're watching our live stream, cheers to you. And I hope you're enjoying a cold one while we're here watching the, the races. If you can, get down and have a watch. If not, stay at your pub, enjoy, get some food, get some. Um, you know, whatever you like to drink, water, alcohol, you know, depends, and enjoy the racing. Currently, just under six minutes till start. Remember, guys, there is a Bendigo, Bendigo Bank photo competition. Support from Bendigo Bank Central Coast branches. Cash prizes for the best amateur photographs taken. So that means if you aren't a full-time photographer, if you aren't the legend that is Russell Chown taking photos here today, get your phone out. Even break out the camera that you used to use back in the day. Get someone with a good vantage point and get some photos of these boats coming past. Just post it to social media with the hashtags. Hashtag World Water Ski Championships. Hashtag Bendigo Bank. Hashtag Better Big Bank. Hashtag We Are Community and you can win $500, $300 and $100 account prizes. So make sure you get onto that, take some photos, get some, get some, you know, some posts, get some likes. Happy snaps, selfies. We're inside five minutes, Connor. Um, these races aren't capped. The grid one, pole four, Hell's Arsenal. Mark Boyer is quite a sender. Look, it's gonna be hard to beat Mark Boyer. Dude is a menace on, on a ski. Um, I, I really don't see anyone anyone beating him. Both flags are up there, as we can see, Connor, not long now. Four and a half minutes until the skiers uh, get to shoot up the up the, the thing, the water. It's, it's the final countdown. Do -do -do -do. Do -do 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 -do. Um, as you can tell, I'm not one for singing, but I am one for commentating, apparently. So. 
Mitch, how's your day been so far? You've enjoyed you've enjoyed the races? It's a long day, mate. It's been a wild ride, but yeah, look, I'm still trying to get over what we saw in men's, women's, and our junior boys and girls um, classes today. Daniel Graziano absolutely had a great run. Just from this bird's eye view, Connor, something I will point out is only one week ago, this water was riddled with jellyfish. Oh, yeah. And they seem to have parted. Maybe the noise is a bit too much for them. How good is this drone footage we've got going on here, Mick? 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 Mitch? Sorry, Michelle. Talking about photos, Connor, I reckon we should get the man Russell Chown in before the, the end of the week. I, I don't actually think I've seen better photo photos from anyone. Look, Russell Chown is always there for all our races. He's taken some great photos during the selection campaign, but also some awesome photos from Saturday that we saw come out yesterday. Look. There's just nothing better, really. We have a look in the top right-hand corner, so you can see, you can see the water coming off running right, shaking. That's Nash's nerves shaking through the steel whip steering wheel. Poor bloke. Look, it's hard being the greatest outboard driver in Gosford. We've got two minutes until our ski is in the water. Two minutes till we see Nash Robinson absolutely dominate the field. One minute till skiers are in the water. Minute to start, guys. Minute to start. That's the 30 seconds there. We should see some skiers in the water. Skiers are in the water, Connor. We should see Hell's Arsenal blitz this first shoot. Our veterans 40 and under 50 and our veterans 50 and under 60 class are the first two classes away. Um, just run out the ropes there. Hell's Arsenal, definitely the favorite to come around here is smoking. Flag is down and we're off. That is a start, slow start from the team of Ice Ice Baby and Hell's Arsenal, but absolutely hauling out in front would be the team of Cosmos with Shane Hedison out there. Awesome to see the boat. Um, Mark Boy is a little slow on the thing, but he will soon wind out. Cosmos is out of there. Dawn on the send button. Bang, bang, bang. Ice Ice Baby in their wash currently. Second grid away. Got some good images of Paradise there. 
ready for the kids boat to get get out of the water, then that would be grid two. Oh, we've had a missed start or some sort of complication. Two missed starts, it looks like how unfortunate. I think Cosmos might beat Cosmos might beat uh, Hell's Arsenal top turn here, Connor. Unreal um, professional driving from Cameron McKenzie. And skiing, Shane Henderson, which was my pick for that for that win of veterans 40 under 50s. We will see in Awesome footage there from the, Top Gun Maverick and the Prince Holy of Gosford Moly. just on the outside. Nash Robertson with running riot. Absolutely sending it. As this day's gone on, Connor, the wind has got less and less. I'm sure the women are screaming that they didn't get the clear water like this. Yeah, look, I think all those world all the all our world races today were pretty rough. Women's definitely probably the roughest to begin with, and then um, went from there. But the, our international challenge races have been pretty calm. As we can see here, Cosmos just Cosmos just on screen with Shane Henderson, definitely in pole. Adam Wilson sitting right up, trying to get on the camera. How good's that? Perp sitting there perfectly. Cameron McKenzie doing an awesome job driving right there. Trimmed up. Awesome image of Mark Boyer here with um, Hell's Arsenal. Brandon McGlynn doing the driving and Sam Perry observing. The speed rig himself, the original. We did talk about speed rigs with Liam Ford here today, but as they go around the bottom turn in front of Drifters here. Hell's Arsenal across the line first. Slowly, uh, not not far behind is Cosmos. A bit bumpy as they come through the start rollers as they then line up for that back straight. He'll jump straight into it. Connor, I cannot see Thunderbolt. I think Thunderbolt has not made it to the start line. Such a, such a shame to see um, Benny Hackett and Brad, uh, Bradley McBranigan, good English for me, and the Austrian Erst Ortlip. Ortlip. Not, ice, ice baby across the line. The only... Oh, there's Thunderbolt there, sorry. Not up on, on our race live. Thunderbolt, driven by Benny Hackett, Brand, Brandon... Brad Brannigan and Ernest Olive, all the way from Austria. See some awesome fit, um, footage of uh, Team USA, formerly known as F2 Wild here. We've got um, John Stewart on the back. John Stewart's a main organiser for the Catalina Ski Race, one of the biggest ski races in the world. So go, go see him if you're looking for a run. If you want to have a chance to a big 40-footer, um, next year for the next Catalina. As we can see in the background here, the Prince of Gosford, Nash Robertson. The boat looks fairly steady for now. I think this may change once it roughs up. Poor old Nash. is getting picked on a little bit here, but that's okay. He can cop it being the best outboard driver in Gosford. John Stewart using the hot dog setup. He looks fairly comfortable. We can probably dive into that a little bit, Mitch, here. See, some of these gears will run two different setups. You see a lot of hot dog setups in the world racing. As the world's finished, I think we'll see the hot dogs almost completely disappear next week. However, everyone likes to get a little bit of hot dog action about this time of year. Every two years, they're like, oh yeah, I'll run a hot dog. The bonus of the hot dog is that you can move your hand backwards, you can move your hand forwards, wherever you'd like to hold on to. Uh, majority of our skiers use a bar, front bar setup, which is a, a stronger hold, I believe. But it is stationary, so when the, through those rough water, you want to pull up at different spots. You can see Mark Boyer here absolutely blitzing the field. Look, so, some of the best watch uh, races at some of our classic events are the veterans, seeing them. Um, Jamie Oliver is one of them. He's not racing here today, but he's one of the great has a great um it's always interesting to see how they all go super fast super quick great times
Brandon McGlynn driving Hell's Arsenal. Quite a skilled driver, very experienced. You can see he's moved straight to the outside to give Mark Boyer a better run. Bit of a family affair there, Mitchell, isn't it? All right, we've currently got some vision of Temper F2 just coming across the line. Pretty cool setup, both there. Formerly known as Temper 2.6, but now Temper F2. With uh, Randy Lewis from the US of A, my pick for today. Down there from the observer from the boat, a kid's kids boat, um, Ricky Evans looking after Chris Rydell from Belgium. All the way from Belgium. All the way from Belgium. Our Europeans. Benny Hackett tipping it in, sticking to pole one. He wants the shortest track possible. The Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. Angelo recently bought this boat, now, formerly known as Stinger, a very well-renowned boat. Won many a bridge to bridge. The Connolly won many a bridge to bridge. This was the, the force that um, good old Greater Houston had perfected, and then Angelo um, recently bought it off and has been enjoying his time behind the, the big rig. Got some image there of Nash Robertson, the great uh, outboard driver from Gosford. Having a great run out there. Towing Colin Marks. Josh Moxo in the observer seat. Oh, sorry. I actually think that's Team USA. F2 Wild, it is. That was Arsenal here, down there from the guys at the back. Hell's Getting a little Arsenal bit rough. He's lapping everyone up. Look, the big boat just pushes some water, gives it a little bit easier ride for Mark out there, but definitely the, the, the skill is showing from Mark Boyer out there today. Definitely an awesome looking boat, Mitchell. Formerly known as, um, can't even think. Hellraiser, now Hell's Arsenal. Love the rap on it. As he, um, as he rounds up F2 Wild, also known as Team USA, around the bottom drifter's corner. We're almost 10 minutes into this race, ladies and gentlemen. Stick around. It's got a little bit longer to go, but it should get excited. It, it's going to get more exciting here on out as Mark Boy seems to round up the field and we see some little battles amongst the crowd. We've got a little battle going on in front of us right here now between Infinity, Infinity Racing and Causen F2. Oh, we got awesome vision here with the with our drone footage. Seeing two outboards, I can't really pick up. This would be Causen F2 and Infinity Racing. Side by side, completely side by side. Both skis can almost touch each other. Down this back straight towards the um, the top turn here. These guys are tracking around about 75 kilometers an hour each. Just under 50 mile an hour for our Americans over there. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, on the inside, which would be... Oh, around the outside, Mark Boyer, I think it is. Rounding everyone up. Just absolutely rounding the field up, reeling them in. Lap after lap. Wow, so look, it, sometimes it can be pretty hard to pick from here in the commentary booth, but what is giving us an awesome helping hand, living it live, race live, and GPS tracking through the Living It Live app, livingitlive.com.au forward slash SRA is absolutely helping us tremendously here, be able to pick boats, get, get splits, and um, take times off there to help you guys back at home figure out where your favourite skiers are and what's going on in the race. Connor, I'd like to mention that these International Challenge races, they have their own presentation. The presentation is on uh, Thursday, 6.30pm at the Gosford Sailing Club. It's fixed $65 per ticket. Um, Bargain, actually. Yeah, there's also a competitor reunion. We, when we put these races on, there's a lot of people that come from overseas, um, like the Americans, the Belgians, the Great Britain. Some Austrians. Austrians, well, you know, everyone gets around it. New Zealand as well. Um, this way everyone, you know, you probably raced with some of these people 10, 15 or so years ago, maybe even more, if you're 60 plus and you're out there. Now. You might be walking through the pits and go, whoa, I didn't know you were coming and then you end up having a 15 minute chat. Look, it's, it's an awesome way to catch up with everyone you haven't seen in so many years. Yeah, and the Gosford Sailing Club has great food, $65 per ticket. Bargain. Bargain. But do you know what you should go and wear when you go to that dinner? Our merchandise is available down at the merchandise tent near the paddock, en paddock entrance or online at www.trybooking.com forward slash C-M-A-Z-S. Look, get, get your merchandise and then everyone will know you went to the 2023 IWWF World Water Ski Racing Champions. We have t-shirts, hoodies, coolers and caps. Great aerial footage so you can just see how much room these boats have inside them. Everyone likes to run it tight. We're racing, we're racing for the international challenge, international challenge here, so we're racing for something big. We're not giving anyone room. You don't want to give them any little advantage. You're gonna keep it tight and go around these quarters pretty hard for that win. This is this battle we've got been going on between Cause and F2 and Infinity Racing. Absolutely sensational. We love to see these little battles, give something to talk about, and look, it's what racing's about, Mitch. It's what we like to see. It's what gets us pumped up. Just like when we saw Carter Robertson and Daniel Graziano. Look, that was probably the biggest one of today, but look, we can talk about Nellie McMillan, Rachel Stapleton, Zach Armstrong versus Cody Cartledge, and um, some of our Gage Goldsmith as well. Look, all these guys, awesome racing. Oh, I forgot about Jake, Jake Clancy and um, Brendan Tiswell. Look, this is what makes racing exciting. I've just listed a few, but there's just there's been so many today. It's been such good viewing and watching. So, all of us back at all of you back at home. I hope you've enjoyed so far. But look, we're we're heating up for a massive vet, vet, veterans race today. Here we're about 15 minutes in here. Starting to shape up. Starting to get a little bit rough out there. We've got Ice Ice Baby, the contractor. I can't really pick it with all the water behind him at the back, but look, it's just, this is great quality racing here. Contracted behind the contractor is one of our Austrians, Christoph Wander, Wanderreck. Hope I said that right. Same with Ice Ice Baby, Baby is one of our Belgians, Christel Spezens, Spez, Spezens from Belgium. It's awesome to see, even if you don't want to have to cart a boat over to the World Championships, you can organise someone, organise a one run where you're going to go so you don't have to cut out that extra cash. So remember that for the next Worlds, if you're thinking, oh, I might want to go over and do some of the International Challenge stuff, get on to whoever the coordinator is over there. We can find you a boat 
and we can support ski racing internationally. But you know what's one of the most important things when you're skiing out there? Having the right gear. And some, a lot of skiers out there make sure they've, they're have they taping up their feet to protect their ankles from the harsh conditions. I tape my feet. MySportsTape.com is where I get my water ski tape, or my strapping tape. Enter water ski 10 for a 10% discount. Over there, the guys over there will help you out. I, I don't want to forget our main one of our biggest sponsors or our live streaming presenting partner here today. We thank Mercury Marine for their support of our live stream in conjunction with Bay City Marine, Water Sports Marine, Terra Marine, Race Marine and Bris Brisbane Marine who have gone boldly and taken the opportunity to bring you all the action from the IWWF War World Water Ski Racing Championships. If you can't be with us here, we'll, we're right there with you. Woo. Looking at the great Nash Robinson here on the live stream here, Mitch, you want to give us a, you know, a backstory to Nash Robinson's greatness as the Gosford's fastest outboard driver. I believe Nash's dad started racing that boat in front of us there um, in 2004, maybe. That's when he purchased. I could be wrong. Um, his dad's raced for 20 years or so, and then Nash is finally. At uh, an adult, an able, I'd say, and taken over the boat from his dad. Nash has just put a brand new V8 on it. Um, Thank you, Mercury, for that 300R package there. And I believe Nash came over with his first win with the boat only two weeks ago, a week ago. Fastest um, return leg by an outboard, I believe. Yeah, well done, Nash. It's a little bit sloppy out there, guys. Conditions have sort of brightened up. We started very overcast this morning, but the sun is shining. At Drifters Wharf, do, do not forget that is our home of has hospitality. Drinks are flowing, food is awesome there. I would recommend the salt and pepper squid. I'm a big fan, I think it's really good. I also got told the pork bow buns today were sensational. So if you're thinking about going over there and giving, need some food, the pork bow buns are sensational. Thank you, Ke Kelsey Burns, for letting me know. We're just getting footage of Cause and F2 and Infinity. They have been lapping around together side by side for 18 and a half minutes now. Not one of them is giving him an inch. Look, it's going to be the, it's going to be the, the fittest, uh, the fittest will win. Who will be able to, you know, pin that win? Will it just be because they've got the inside line? Will they have to just send it across the finish line? Do you know how we were able to, to know that, Mitch? By the good guys at Living It Live we were able to help us with Race Live here today so we can give you all the information as fast as possible. I'm a company man. Got three boats in the distance here. I believe that would be, is that F2 Wild? That's our man, Nash. Um, our boy, Nash, over there. Ooh, Big couple boats here. One. Snappy there. Cosmos. That looks like Top Gun. Top Gun Maverick right out of the water just there. And, and Thunderbolt all the way up the back. Benny Hackett, he's going to chase. Uh, you'll see him slowly move. I reckon he's going to jump in Top Gun Maverick's wash to try and get a better run. Twenty minutes have just ticked over here, Mitch. Um, so look, we it shouldn't be too long. I think it's five minutes before we'll see a blue flag out here today.
we've got some awesome lines there Mitch around this corner but can you explain why there's no one sort of cornering on the apex they're sort of holding their poles well as you can see just before then the inside gets churned up the, the course boat sitting in the middle there the guys on there are probably seasick just from being thrown around all day you know one, or about five poles out is where it starts to get better and even you know the further out you get the better the water but it's going to cost you more time so yeah longer longer to go all the way out as there as we can see here great example paradise afloat um sticking to the outside much more calmer than the boat on the inside pole there so some footage footage of bars there Dog. is our mummy holding our last lap flag. The blue flag is up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Woo! One more lap to go for our race leader, Hell's Arsenal, and boats following behind it. As he powers around that bottom drifter's corner there. We've got a good couple, five boats coming up for their blue flag lap here. So guys, for you listening back at home, they might be a little bit confused about all the placings in men's because we'll talk that later. Good vision of the Snappy boat there. That is Snappy 377. All the way from America, USA. USA. Some images there of the kids' boat. Its name's in description. It is for the kids, but they've put it in the veteran in the veterans here. Give them a go. Take Top. it away from the kids for a second, but look, they're having good fun out there, and Top. that's what it's all about. Top Gun Maverick with with uh, Darren Isaacs takes the last last lap flag. Mark Boyer, our race leader, has just gone around the top turn. He'll be heading back in no time. In just a minute, I'd say just under a minute, we will have Mark here for a finish. As we can see at the live stream, um, we can see Paradise Afloat coming back down to the finish boy. Next to that, looks maybe like Cosmos. Here we go, we got images of Mark Boyer coming about halfway down the, the front straight here for a, looking to come in for a strong finish here. Here we go, for, for the winner of the under 50, 50s veteran or under 60s veteran, Mark Boyer with the team of Hell's Arsenal coming in for a strong finish, followed closely by, oh they just come. There we go, there's Mark Boy, the champion man he is, coming in for a strong finish. Jersey rounds the corner for drifters. That is a 20, just on 26 minutes there. Absolutely dominating the field. Absolutely, absolutely dominating is uh, spot on.
Well, guys, they let us out of the, out of the booth here. We're in the sun against the water. We're just wrapping up here today. We saw some awesome racing here today, Mitch. Um, like, where do we start? We start with women's. Maddie Boyer, dominant performance here. Won that race. Nelly coming back. Nelly McMillan coming back from a rope mishap. You know, Emma Barnes, what a race. Uh, but also, Sofia Riviera, awesome second place. Ran the whole time there with women's F1. What can you ask for better? You have some... She did very well, Sophia, but we were still way off our picks all through the day. Um, we can't go past Gage Goldsmith. Third place. Juniors. Come from the back of the field. He came last yesterday, had some dramas, and he dramas, just fought all his way through. It was unreal to see, you know. Um, Zach Armstrong, super dominant performance today. Was able to just get in front and stay out in front. Leilani Carlidge, what can we say? She's 2, points incredible. points in the Incredible. Um, and into the men's. We're going to talk Daniel Graziano. Sensational, perfect strategic play on Carter Robinson. Carter Robinson with a close, with a second place there. Now they're one for one. It'll be interesting to see what happens on Wednesday. And for the F2 guys, we can't look past Jake Clancy. Young gun, absolutely gave it to um, Brandon Tidswell. Uh, but it was too good. Team of Dragon with Brandon Tidswell um, collecting the win there today. Yeah, we can't go past uh, Daniel Graziano, who just had a plan and executed it perfectly it was unreal really it was really good to see today but look organize your sick days today wednesday <laughs> we're gonna go to drifters we'll be there all day um we got a great day of racing as you saw today it's only getting better for here as tensions rise points get a little bit thinner and the beers get colder at drifters <laughs> like look it's gonna get be a great day organize your seat day, seat day get down here at least put the live stream on we hope to see you then. Anything for you, Mitch? Oh, that's about it. You covered everything. But yeah, head in tomorrow to work. Say headache. Um, headache, feeling sick. Sore tummy. Yeah, all of the above. Yeah, we'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks, guys. Take your adventure further and faster with the Mercury Power Up Your Savings Sale. Discover great deals on the 40 to 150 horsepower range of four strokes. Visit your nearest participating Mercury dealer today so you don't miss out on these offers. Terms and conditions apply. This is our home. A seaside wonderland, sparking creativity. And this is us. From long dirt tracks that bring you a brand new view. To the pulse of the Pacific. Through ancient pathways. To secret sunsets. Creating new opportunities. Inspiring the next generation. And building a new way of life. Create your story on the New South Wales Central Coast. to East Coast juice than you might realise. The peel is sent to farmers struggling with drought as cattle feed. The excess water and juice from the processing plant goes back out into the orchard to replenish the trees. And the pulp is blended into yoghurt and other products. Nothing is wasted. It's all part of our mission to be 100% recyclable and 100% committed to the environment and the people in it. Return, regrow, reduce. East Coast juice. Dear Problems 
can't be done's. Impossibles. You're invited to our place. Where makers make, doers do, and problems become opportunities. So if you can dream it, we can do it. Because here at Quick Copy, we don't just make printed stuff. We make possible. For families of Australian veterans, the battle goes on. The Mercury Power Up with a Portable Sale. Power up your summer with exceptional deals on 2.5 to 30 horsepower portables for a limited time only. Head to your nearest participating Mercury dealer today. Terms and conditions apply.